So hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto is a full-blooded Acha. Part 1. If you guys enjoy this, what if? And if you want to part 2. Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Chapter 1, October 10th was a special day for Minato Namikas and Kashina Yuzumaki. Today was the day that their daughter was expected to be born. Kashina was excited since this was her first child, but was nervous thanks to the nine tails that would try to force its way out of her, since her seal will weaken while she's giving birth. She witnessed firsthand how hard childbirth is when she heard her friend Sayuri Achiha giving birth two months ago to a baby boy that Kashina instantly fell in love with. Sayuri had the typical Achiha look. Her hair and eyes were obsidian black, and she has pale skin. She always wears gold and dangling pearl earrings no matter where she is, and it's become part of her signature look. Her hair stopped just below her waist, but she would tie a portion of it into a high, short ponytail. She was very developed and it made all the men try to get in her bed, but she always declined. When she was off duty, she would wear a simple dark purple kimono robe or a dark blue short sleeve dress that reached her above her knees, a black obi wrapped around her waist that had a thin white line in the middle. Minato on the other hand was happy his family was expanding. While well, he was happy he was having a daughter, this was not his first child. You see, about two months before Kashina got pregnant, Minato, Sayuri and Kashina had a threesome after celebrating a successful mission one day. It was a fun night for all of them, mainly Minato since he was with two of the most beautiful women in the village at the same time. They never talked about it again, but Kashina would joke around and say that if Sayuri was ever bored that she could join them again. Two months after the threesome, Sayori told Minato she was pregnant and Kashina got a good laugh out of it. The reason she laughed was because she said Minato was the fastest shinobi alive, but he wasn't fast enough to pull out during sex. Kashina wasn't upset about Minato and Sayori having a child, simply because she always wanted a family and their son was part of her family. Coincidentally the next day is when Kashina found out she was pregnant and Minato gave her a big hug. Minato and Sayori decided to name their son Naruto Ichiha, since it was sort of illegal to have a child with somebody outside of the Ichiha clan, since they wanted to keep their pure. Sayori would keep it a secret that Minato was the father of her child, but she knew Naruto's features would bear a striking resemblance to Minato as he got older. Naruto had the Ichiha black hair, but instead of the coal black eyes, Naruto's eyes were a dark blue color, his hair was spiky just like his father's, along with Minato's facial structure, and his skin was darker than Sayuri, but lighter than Minato who had tan skin. Naruto's chakra network was also already growing, and they guessed he'd have mid to high level reserves by the time he graduated from the academy. The only people who knew about Naruto being Minato and Sayori's son other than Kashina was the third no as Hiruzen Suratobi, Kakashi Haddock, since Minato personally trusted him to guard both of them during their pregnancy, as Sayori stayed at their house quite a bit, Mikoto Ichiha who was Kashina's best friend and Bawako Suratobi. She was the wife of the third and helped deliver Naruto. She was also responsible for helping Kashina give birth to her daughter, which she decided to name Natsumi Yuzumaki Namikas. Since Kashina was about to give birth, Minato had set up a secret area for her to give birth, since there was the risk of the Nine Tails escaping. Kashina jokingly called him paranoid, but Minato was always prepared for the worst. The location was secure to the point that only Minato, Kashina, Tu, Bawako and Hiruzen knew about it. The location was protected by many suppression seals for the Nine Tails, as well as multiple barrier seals to keep anyone from entering. As everything was going on, Sayori was sitting at her house with Makoto and Naruto when she just finished breastfeeding. I can't believe that he eats so much. It's like I have to feed him every five minutes. Sayori said, well, his father does have quite the appetite. Maybe that's where he gets it from. Makoto said and then Naruto let out a huge burp, yup. He gets that from his father. Sayori said and kissed Naruto's nose, I'd never thought I would see this. Sayori Achiha, who didn't want kids at all, is sitting here holding her own child. Makoto said, ha ha ha. I guess you're right, but I wouldn't trade this for anything. Nine months of carrying him and then nearly two days of labor, I just loved him since I first heard him cry and finally held him. That and I was there with Minato who was a huge help when things started to get difficult for me once my stomach grew. Sayori said, I know. Two pregnant women stayed at his house and people wondered why he was always in the office. I still don't understand how you never fell for his charm. Mikoto said, don't get me wrong, Minato is a wonderful man, but I think we both knew it would never work between us. Yeah what happened between us was a mistake, but that mistake gave me the greatest gift I could ever ask for. We'll never be together, but he and I will always be connected through Naruto. Sayori said, you should try to find a boyfriend. You can't stay single forever. Mikoto said, please. 
The only reason men look at me is because of my breasts. I swear they might be as big as Lady Tsunade's thanks to them growing. Sayuri said, nope. She's still got you beat. I was with you the last time you had to buy some bras. You're 99 centimeters and according to what Master Jiraiya told Minato and Kashina, Lady Tsunade is 106 centimeters. Mikoto said, remind me to keep that perv away from my son. Sayuri said, duly noted. Mikoto said and then Naruto started to cry as an ominous feeling came over the entire leaf village, it's okay baby. Mommy's got you. Sayuri said, and then a loud roar was heard, Kashina. Sayuri and Mikoto said at the same time as Naruto cried even louder, Lady Mikoto. Get to the bunker now. You as well, Lady Sayuri. An Ichiha clan member said, what's going on? Sayuri asked, the Nine Tails are attacking the village. The fourth is on the battlefield as we speak, but the Nine Tails is on a rampage. Hurry. The Ichiha member said, Sayuri, get to that bunker. I'm going to find my kids. Mikoto said and vanished, Kashina, Minato. Please be okay. Sayuri thought and grabbed a few scrolls with food and water before going to the bunker with Naruto. Bunker. While in the bunker, Sayuri was still able to hear the Nine Tails going on a rampage. The Nine Tails was extremely powerful because the seals Minato added into the bunker to keep the vibrations or sounds of battle from causing damage weren't really working. Sayuri felt a huge amount of chakra being gathered before it was launched in the direction of the bunker which was located in the monument and this caused her to hold Naruto even tighter. However, the attack that was launched was suddenly gone and teleported far away. Minato must have done something. Sayuri thought, um. Excuse me, Lady Sayuri. A voice asked and she looked down, um. What is it, Kurinai? Sayuri asked, see can I hold your baby? Kurinai asked, sure. If he starts to fuss he might be hungry, so just give him back. Sayuri said and carefully placed Naruto in the arms of Kurinai, he's so cute. Kurinai said and Naruto opened his eyes to look at her. Other than me, Mikoto, Kishina and Minato, you're the first person that got him to open his eyes. Sayuri said, does that mean he likes me? Kurinai asked, it would seem so. Sayuri said, Lady Sayuri. A childlike voice said, hello Itachi. How are you? Sayuri said, I'm fine. I finally got Sasuke to stop crying. Itachi said and showed her Sasuke in his arms, he's just afraid. Naruto cried for a short while as well, but he calmed down. Where's your mother and father? Sayuri asked. I'm right here. Fugaku is out helping get the rest of the civilians to safety. Lord Third is handling the Nine Tails right now, and Minato is making sure Kashina and Natsumi are safe. Mikoto said. Maybe I should go help. I'm not retired. Sayuri said. You just gave birth two months ago and you haven't trained in nine months. Your skills are rusty right now and you have Naruto to think about. Minato and Lord Third can handle this. Mikoto said. I hope you're right. Kurinai, can you watch Naruto for me while I hand out food and water? Sayuri asked. I don't think I have a choice. He fell asleep and I don't think waking him up is a good thing. Kurinai said. It's not. He can be a handful if he is woken up too early. Sayuri said. Sounds like somebody I know. Mikoto said and Sayuri glared at her. Shut up. Sayuri said and Mikoto just laughed at her. Anyway, I think I should hand out the food and water. You know medical ninjutsu so you can help with the wounded. Mikoto said. Sure. Here you go. Sayuri said and gave a large ceiling scroll, what's this? Mikoto asked, food and water for everyone. Sayuri said and Mikoto sweat dropped, isn't this a bit much? Mikoto asked, no. I'm always prepared just in case an Akamichi is with me. In this case we have more than one. Sayuri said, I guess you're right. Mikoto said, here, Kurinai. Sayuri said and gave her a small scroll, what's in here? Kurinai asked, bottles of milk, diapers and everything else for Naruto. Sayuri said, okay. Kurinai said, I'll be back as soon as possible. Sayuri said and walked away to tend to the wounded, next day funeral, after the events of the Nine Tails attack, everyone was gathered for the funeral of everyone who had fallen during the Nine Tails attack. Amongst those people were Minato Namikas and Kashina Yuzumaki who sacrificed their lives to save Natsumi from dying. Minato split the Nine Tails and sealed half of it inside of his daughter, while he took the other half with him. He had to use the Reaper Death Seal, and as the Nine Tails was being sealed away, it lashed out in one last effort to kill Natsumi, but Minato and Kashina jumped in the way. Kashina could have survived, but once she was impaled by the Nine Tails nail, she knew she was a goner. While all the adults were silent, Natsumi and Naruto were placed in front of a picture of Minato. Natsumi was crying her heart out, but Naruto was just looking at the picture of Minato, as if he was expecting Minato to say something back or pick him up. Minato and Kashina. Both of you have your lives to protect the Hidden Leaf Village and to safeguard its future as well. The sacrifices you two have made will never be forgotten. Hiruzen said. Sayuri meanwhile was crying the most out of everyone there. It was no secret that she was the closest to Kashina and Minato out of everyone gathered at the funeral. 
As she was crying, her eyes started to burn really badly, and when she wiped her eyes, she saw she was crying blood. She looked up and was thankful nobody saw her. Hiruzen went to grab Natsumi, and she took that as a signal for her to grab Naruto. Once they were up there, Hiruzen spoke quietly to her so only she could hear him. I know you would like to take Natsumi in, but due to her status, being Minato's daughter, I don't think that would be wise. Word would spread quickly if somebody was to figure it out, and I can't take that risk. Hiruzen said, where will she be placed? Sayuri asked, I'll place her in the orphanage. I'm keeping her status as an S-rank secret, and hopefully she gets adopted into a nice family. Hiruzen said, have you told Nakodo? Sayuri asked, yes. I ran into her earlier and informed her. Hiruzen said, I'll tell Naruto about his father, but I won't tell him about Natsumi. Sayuri said, be sure to tell him he can't mention it to anybody. The war just recently ended and tensions are still high. If word gets out that he has the blood of an Achiha and Minato, he'll undoubtedly be sought after. Hiruzen said and chuckled, what's so funny? Sayuri asked, if Naruto is anything like his father then I have a feeling he'll figure everything out before we can tell him. Hiruzen said, if he does then I'll explain her situation and why he can't say anything to her. When exactly do you plan on telling her about her heritage? Sayuri asked, either when she is mature enough to handle it or not until she becomes a. I'll keep a letter for the next, shall I pass away before I can tell her? Hiruzen said, oh come on. You've still got plenty of life left in you. Sayuri said, that is true, but I am still old and anything can happen at any moment. Anyway, I must bid you farewell. I have to drop Natsumi off at the hospital and then attend a meeting with the council. Hiruzen said, I understand. By the way, I'm sorry about the wacko. I heard this morning. Sayuri said, thank you. I know she's waiting for me, but she'll have to wait a bit longer for me. Hiruzen said and walked away. I guess he told you what's going on. Nakoto said, yeah. I hope she can find a family to raise her. Sayuri said, don't worry. I'm sure once they get a good look at her face they won't be able to resist. Nakoto said, I guess you're right. Do you mind taking Naruto to Kurenai for me? She said she'd watch him while I helped out at the hospital and I'm running late. Sayuri said, not at all. Seems Kurenai has taken a liking to Naruto. Nakoto said as she took Naruto from Sayuri, seems so. She had him all day yesterday. I even let her stay at my place since she lost her father yesterday. It was the least I could do. Sayuri said and walked away. Makoto, whose child is this? Figaku asked. This is Sayuri's son. Makoto said. I see. I was unaware of her having a child. Figaku said. She found out she was pregnant and decided to stay with Kishina and Minato. Makoto said. I see. What is the status of Minato and Kishina's child? Figaku asked. Hiruzen told me earlier that she's going into the orphanage and hopefully a family will adopt her. Makoto said. I see. Did you offer to take her in? Jigaku asked, yes, but Hiruzen doesn't want anyone to know she's related to Minato or Kishina. It would raise suspicion if we were to suddenly adopt a red-haired baby with blue eyes like Minato right after they died. There's that and the war just ended. Tensions are still high between us Iwa and Kumo. If word got out that Minato and Kishina had a baby, then they'd surely act on it, since I'm sure word of the Nine Tails attacking will spread across the nation. Iwa would try to kill her, and Kumo would use her as a baby factory to try and get their hands on the Yuzumaki. Mikoto said, which is why she should be under the protection of the Ichiha clan. Figaku said, no. What's best for her is to grow up out of the spotlight, and if she was to be adopted into our family, then the focus of our clan. Mikoto said and walked away. Where are you going? I'm not finished talking to you yet. Figaku said, I'm taking Naruto to his babysitter. I'll be home after that. Mikoto said, meeting, we managed to stop the nine tails, but the sacrifice was too great. Hamura said, however, there is no time to lament. The seat is now empty and we must decide who will take the position. Kaharu said, perhaps someone from the generation after Minato can take over. Shikaku said, we have nurtured fine without a doubt, but none of them possess the experience to rule over a whole village. Kaharu said, well, is there anyone else? Shikaku asked and Danzo was about to speak up, but Hiruzen stood up, it can't be helped. This is a critical time, so I shall take over and become. Hiruzen said, you'd really consider doing that? Hamura asked, well, if you're still willing. You quit once. Do you really believe that you're up to it? Can you actually handle it? Truth be told. Even though you did go after the Nine Tails, you still failed to save the fourth from his fate. Danzo asked as he interrupted Kaharu. Such a remark is uncalled for. Hamura said, where were you during the battle against the Nine Tails? Kaharu asked and Danzo grit his teeth, but Hiruzen just laughed. Please indulge this old man. Allow me to fill in as. Just for the time being. Until we can groom the next one. Hiruzen said and Danzo was even more pissed. Very well. Hiruzen will become one again. Kaharu said. Since that is over with, what will happen to them? Danzo asked. Ginchuriki. What does he mean, Lord Third? 
Inoichi asked, as you all know Kashina was pregnant and gave birth. Her daughter is one of the Nine Tails. Minato sacrificed his life to seal the beast away and save the village. Hiruzen said, will you allow me to adopt her into my clan? I was pretty good friends with Minato. Shikaku said, that cannot happen. The reason being is that she'd become a target for both Iwa and Kumo if she's adopted by a clan. Hiruzen said, then I propose you place her in my care. I will make sure she has it properly. Conditioning to live in the village and protect it like a shoulder. Danzo said, no. She will go into the orphanage and hopefully a nice family will adopt her. Also, news of her status and heritage will be an S-rank secret with a punishment of death. No harm is to come to her that goes for civilians and clan members. Hiruzen said, what? All the clan heads yelled, you heard me. No harm is coming to Natsumi. Do not test me. Now, if any clan has an available medic, please send them to the hospital. Sayori Ichiha is already there helping out, and she could use the extra hand. Hiruzen said, Sayori? Didn't she just give birth? Joza asked, yes, but she isn't doing any physical training as of yet. Hiruzen said, hospital next day. Sayori was finished with her shift at the hospital, and that's when she came across Natsumi sleeping in the room with other babies. She just looked at Natsumi who was unaware of the situation she was put in. The more she looked at Natsumi, the more she saw Kashina and it made her cry. She was unaware that Makoto walked up to her until she placed a hand on her shoulder. The more I look at her, the more I see Kashina. Sayori said, me too. I'm only here because after this I don't know when I'll see her again. Makoto said, what do you mean? I'm sure if she gets adopted then whoever adopts her will allow us to see her. Sayori said, it's not that. The Achiha clan is being relocated to the outskirts of the village. Makoto said, what? Why? Sayori asked, Yugaku said that it was decided by the council that it's necessary for Kanoha's reconstruction. Makoto said, this just screams Danzo is behind it. Sayori said, I know, but with the way the village is right now we can't afford to seem selfish. Hopefully this will all go over smoothly for us and it won't escalate into anything further. Makoto said, hopefully it doesn't. Well, I need to go and pick up Naruto. Sayori said, he's with Kurinai again? Makoto asked, yeah. She said she won't be on missions again for another month and didn't mind watching him. Apparently she's going to the orphanage and wants to take Naruto with her to see if she can get him started early on making friends. Sayori said, I see. I'd do the same, but Fugaku doesn't want Sasuke hanging around people he feels won't make him become strong. Mikoto said, I understand. Hell I bet he's probably taking arranged marriages now for Sasuke within the clan. Sayori said and Mikoto laughed, please don't say that. Mikoto said, I'm just saying. I'll stop by later with Naruto. Sayori said and gave one last look at Natsumi before leaving. Five years later, as time passed in the village, not everything was happy-go-lucky as it seemed from the outside and to people who weren't good at analyzing certain situations. There was a lot of tension in the village between the Ichiha clan and the higher-ups of the village. There was also tension between Kumo and Kanoha after a failed attempt to kidnap the Hyuga heiress when she was three years old, which resulted in the death of the Kumo shinobi. Over the five years Naruto has grown up both physically and mentally. He was quite smart for his age, and Sayori knew that came from Minato. It became painfully obvious that Naruto wasn't a full-blooded Ichiha as he got older, since his hair started to spike out unlike all Ichiha members who had straight hair. His dark blue eyes also gave it away, and the clan minus the people didn't like him, but they never attacked him, since they didn't want to deal with Sayori, who was very protective of Naruto, and could possibly go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the legends. Over the years Naruto started to wear a mask since he would go out in public and girls would stare at him, then quickly look away as when he caught them. The mask reminded his mother of a certain silver-haired shinobi that hasn't met Naruto for some reason. Kurinai still came around when she could, but she would bring her friend Anko with her. Naruto thought Anko was weird but cool whenever she wasn't obsessed with taking off his mask. Naruto looked at them as older sisters with Kurinai being the mature one. Since he was five years old, he also began his training since he wanted to become a ninja like his mother and sisters. Sayori taught him some basic tojutsu skills and chakra control skills. Naruto's chakra reserves were quite large for him, and Sayori knew that there was only one person his age with higher reserves. He wanted to learn some ninjutsu, but Sayori wouldn't teach him any until he was finished with his chakra control training. He was finished training for the day, and his mom let him go to the Nine Tails Festival. He was always asking to go, but his mom always said no to him, but something told her to let him go this year. She gave him some money to spend which he thought was a lot, but he didn't mind at all. He was walking around and of course he was mesmerized by everything that was going on, but something caught his attention. He saw a group of six civilians chase something into an alley followed by screams. His curiosity got the best of him, so he followed them into the alley, only to get angry at what he saw. They were kicking, punching, stabbing and throwing whatever they could at a girl who looked no older than he did. 
Something told him he should stop them and he did. He found two small pipes on the ground and jumped into action. He hit one of them in the back of his head as hard as he could and knocked him out. When the other civilians heard the man yell in pain before falling to the ground, they turned around and saw Naruto. What are you doing? She's just a little girl. Naruto said, this thing is no girl. A male civilian said, she's a demon in human skin. She killed the fourth. We're finishing what Lord Fourth started. The day is the day we get rid of this demon. The civilians turned back to start beating the girl again, but Naruto ran and stood in front of him, and then they started to back away with a scared look on their face. Naruto was standing there glaring at them, but his eyes were no longer dark blue. They were red with one tomo in each eye, and the civilians started to leave until one of them recognized Naruto's hair. Hey, it's just the half-breed Acha. You're right. We can kill the demon and take out the half-breed for the Acha clan. Let's get him. The civilians went on to attack, but then a kunai landed in front of them. I hope you weren't about to lay a finger on my little brother. Kurunai said, as she appeared. It looks like they were, Kurunai. Maybe we should teach them a lesson. I mean picking on two kids and one of them just so happens to be our little brother. Anko said, as she appeared and pulled out a kunai. It's the snake whore and mistress. Let's get out of here. You all won't be going anywhere. A voice said from behind them and the civilians grew scared. Or third. What are you doing here? Kurunai asked. I was looking for the little girl behind you. She's been missing from the orphanage for about a year now, and I've been looking for her ever since. Hiruzen said, as a group of appeared. Do I get to play with these civilians? Anko asked and had a creepy looking grin on her face. Yes. Anbu. Escort all these civilians to T and I Anko and Ibiki have free reign to get whatever they can out of them before killing them. Hiruzen said. Yes, sir. The said and took the civilians away. Well, looks like I'm having fun tonight. Anko said and vanished. I honestly can't be with her sometimes. Kurunai said. What's this on her stomach? Naruto thought as he saw something appear on her stomach before it went away. Hey, wake up. Naruto said and shook the girl who groaned a bit before waking up. W who are you? She asked. Naruto Uchiha. Who are you? Naruto asked. Mitsumi Uzumaki. Mitsumi said. What did you do to make them beat you like that? Naruto asked. I didn't do anything. I was walking around and they started chasing me. It's been like this since I was kicked out of the orphanage. Mitsumi said. Mitsumi, the orphanage told me you ran away a year ago. Hiruzen said as he walked over to them. Old man. Mitsumi exclaimed as she ran and gave him a hug. Her wounds are already healed. What's going on? Naruto thought. Mitsumi, why did the orphanage kick you out? Kurunai asked. They said that I was old enough to live on my own. I tried to find the old man, but the stupid old lady at the desk kept kicking me out. So, I've just been living on the streets and eating free ramen. The Ichiraka said that I don't have to pay, and I tell you that stuff is food for the gods. Mitsumi said and had drool coming out of her mouth. She looks almost exactly like Lady Kashina. Wait a second. Red hair, violet eyes and a Raymond addiction. This is Lord Forth's daughter. Kurin I thought. What happened to your parents? Naruto asked. Let's not get carried away with questions. Mitsumi, I'd like for you to come with me. I'll find you a place to live before the night is over. Hiruzen said. Thanks old man. Bye Naruto. Cool eyes by the way. Mitsumi said, causing Hiruzen and Kurunai to look at Naruto. No way. He's so young. Kurunai thought. A Sharingan at his age. No one has unlocked the Sharingan at such a young age. Hiruzen thought. Thank you. Before you go, old man. I have a question for you. Naruto said. Oh and what would that be? Hiruzen asked. Why were the civilians saying she was a demon and killed the fourth Naruto asked. I do not know, Naruto. Hopefully Anko and Ibiki can get the answers from them. Come along, Mitsumi. Hiruzen said and the two of them left. Naruto, would you like to come with me for the festival? Kurunai asked. Sure. Naruto said. Maybe you can make some friends. Kurunai said. Why do you always try to have me make friends? Naruto asked. So you won't be lonely your entire life. Kurunai said. I guess you're right, but I have you, Anko, Mom and Aunt Makoto. I'm good with that for now. Naruto said. True, but you need friends your age. You can't always hang out with the adults. Kurunai said. Then I'll just hang out with Anko. Naruto said and Kurunai laughed. I see your point, but Anko likes to go out and do adult things as well. Kurunai said. You mean stalk that guy with the scar over his nose? Naruto asked. How do you know about that? Kurunai asked. She's extremely open when she's drunk. Last time we were together she told me about him. I forgot his name though. Naruto said and then looked at the top of a building. You need to stop hanging with her when she's drunk. Who knows what she'll tell you next and it's certain things you shouldn't know about at your age. Kurunai said and Naruto didn't respond so she looked at him. What's wrong? Kurunai asked. Somebody was watching us. Naruto said. He's a censor. Kurunai thought. Are they still there? Kurunai asked and pulled out a kunai. No. Whoever it was left. Naruto said. I see. Let's get out of here. 
We can still get to some of the good food stands if we hurry. Kurunai said. I already ate though. Naruto said. Then what do you want to do? Kurunai asked. Can you show me where the library is? Naruto asked. Uh, sure. Kurunai said. Underground base. Lord Danzo, I have news. An agent said. What is it? Danzo asked. While I was unable to capture the due to interference from the Anko Midatashi and Kurunai Yuhi, I found something else that might interest you. The said. It better be important since you failed to get me my weapon. Danzo said. It is. The Achiha known as Naruto has awakened his Sharingan during the event and appears to be a sensor as well since he was able to detect me, but I quickly left. The said. Is Sharingan? Are you sure? Danzo asked. Yes, sir. I wouldn't have reported it if it was not true. The said. Interesting. A five-year-old with his Sharingan awakened is simply unheard of. I don't think Madara Achiha unlocked his Sharingan at such an age. Keep an eye on them. I'll send another squad to watch the Achiha. Capture them if possible. If she gets into the academy then I'll have no choice but to declare the mission a failure. The squad I'll send after the Achiha will have the same orders. Danzo said. Yes, Lord Danzo. The said and vanished. Having the end an Achiha who may have the most powerful Sharingan in Achiha clan history will certainly make my future plans easier. Danzo thought. Next day Hokage office. Naruto, why did you want me to bring you to the Sayuri asked. Because I have some questions and whoever is in charge may have the answers. Naruto said. Why didn't you just ask me? Sayuri asked. Because it's something that I don't think you can answer. Naruto said and knocked on the door. Come in. A familiar voice said and they entered the office. Here the Naruto asked with wide eyes and Hiruzen chuckled. Indeed I am. What can I do for you today? Hiruzen asked. He said he wanted some questions answered and he thinks you can answer them. Sayuri said. Okay then. Let's hear them. Hiruzen said. Do you know we're not alone in this office? Naruto asked. Of course. I have my three guards here. Hiruzen said. But there's a total of eight people in the room. Naruto said and Hiruzen signaled for his to capture the spies, revealing them to be blank masked. Root. Sayuri asked. Danzo. Take them to Ibiki. I want him to get everything out of them. Hiruzen said and the vanished. Cool. Naruto said and Hiruzen chuckled. This has been an interesting couple of hours for you, Naruto. You unlocked your Sharingan last night protecting Natsumi and you're a sensor. Hiruzen said. He unlocked his Sharingan. Sayuri asked. He didn't tell you. Hiruzen asked. No. Why didn't you tell me? Sayuri asked. I kind of forgot. Naruto said and scratched the back of his head. We'll talk about it later. What are your questions? Sayuri asked. So, I went to the library last night after the whole thing with Natsumi and I found something that I think has to do with the way she's treated. Naruto said. What would that be? Hiruzen asked. Is she what's known as a tailed beast that I read about last night? Naruto asked and both adults froze. What makes you ask that? Hiruzen asked. Well, last night the people that were attacking Natsumi called her a demon. I went to the hospital and looked around until I found an old book about the tailed beasts. It said that there were nine total and they were also known as demons to us. It said that Hashirama Senju captured all of the tailed beasts and gave them a way to form peace during the Warring States period. Humo has two, the eight and two tails. Suna has one, the one-tailed beast. Taki has one, the seven tails. Kiri has two, the three and six tails, and Iwa has two, the four and five tails. It says nothing about the nine tails or Konoha having a tailed beast. I know you can't kill them since in the book it says they can only be sealed away. That's why I asked if Natsumi was the same nine-tailed fox that attacked five years ago. Naruto said. No. She is not the nine tails, Naruto. Hiruzen said. Then why do they call her a demon? Does it have anything to do with this that I saw on her stomach? Naruto said and pulled out a painting of what he saw on her stomach. You painted this? Hiruzen asked. Yes. It's only multicolored because I kept running out of paint. Naruto said. Aside from a few parts this is nearly perfect. Hiruzen thought. Is Natsumi somehow connected to the Nine Tails? Naruto asked. You might as well tell him. He's so close to figuring it out. Sayuri said. Figuring out what? Naruto asked and Hiruzen sighed before sealing the room. Listen, Naruto. What I'm about to tell you is an S-rank secret. Do you know what that means? Hiruzen asked. Yes. Naruto answered and Hiruzen nodded. Good. Now, Natsumi is connected to the Nine Tails, but she's not the Nine Tails itself. She is what's known as a Hiruzen said. What's that? Naruto asked. In Churiki are humans that have tailed beasts sealed within them. They exhibit extraordinary powers due to the immense chakra reserves they possess. Natsumi was born the day of the Nine Tails attack in the fourth, and he gave up his life to seal the Nine Tails inside of her in order to save the village from being destroyed. She is what keeps the Nine Tails from going on another rampage and keeps it locked away. Hiruzen said. So she's like a container, and the Nine Tails is like water inside of the container. Naruto said. In layman's terms, yes. Hiruzen said. If you crack a container of water the water leaks out until it leaks all the way out. 
Don't they know that if they keep treating her like that they risk the Nine Tails escaping? Naruto asked, people fear what they do not understand. Her being is an s rank secret to protect her, but somebody leaked the information out to the public. Hiruzen said, so what is that? Naruto asked and pointed at his painting, this is truly a masterpiece. It's the seal that keeps the Nine Tails from escaping Mitsumi. The fourth placed this on her as his final act before dying. It's what's known as an eight tetragram seal and is powerful enough to contain the Nine Tails. This type of skill is known as, and the fourth was a master of the art. You seem to have skill in that department as well if you were able to paint a near replica of this and you've only seen the seal once. Hiruzen said, can somebody teach me? Naruto asked, I can't. I'm not good at it. Sayuri said, I have a book from the fourth that I think he'd want you to have. It's all of his notes on how to become a sealing master. However, I must warn you to be careful with this. Fuinjutsu is extremely hard and one wrong move can be very dangerous. Hiruzen said and gave Naruto a book, but then a picture fell out. Mom? Naruto said, what is it, Naruto? Sayuri asked, is he my dad? Naruto asked and showed her the picture, so she nodded, yes. The fourth is your father. I didn't tell you because I wanted to wait until you matured a bit more. I was going to tell you on your sixth birthday since that's when you started the academy, but it seems you're ready now. Sayuri said, did he know about me? Naruto asked, yes. The only way he wasn't around was October 10th. Sayuri said, because of the Nine Tails attack. Naruto asked, no. It was something else. Sayuri said, are you sure he's ready to know the truth? Hiruzen asked, yes. I underestimated how quickly he would mature and part of that was me foolishly hoping he would stay a baby for his entire life, but I was wrong to think that. Sayuri said, what's the truth? Naruto asked, the reason your father wasn't around on October 10th wasn't just because the Nine Tails were attacking. He was gone because your sister was born that exact same day. Sayuri said and Naruto's jaw dropped, I thought I was your only child. Naruto said, you are. Me and your father were never together. I won't go into detail since you're so young, but you were created from that. Minato had a wife and she gave birth to your sister, and you've already met her. Sayuri said, I did. Who is she? Naruto asked, Itsumi Yuzumaki. Sayuri said, the girl from last night. Does she know about me? Naruto asked, no. I haven't told her about her heritage yet simply because she's more at risk than you are. You see, your father and her mother had issues with Kumo and Iwa. If Natsumi was to find out right now she'd tell everyone given her personality. Her mother was Kashina Yuzumaki, and Kumo tried to kidnap her one day for the Yuzumaki. I was simply hated your father because of his actions during the Third Shinobi War, and they'd do anything to kill both of you. Hiruzen said, so I can't tell her who I am? Naruto asked, no. Not yet. However, given what happened last night I can do something for you. Hiruzen said, what is it? Naruto asked, I know you'll seek her out to spend time with her and get close to her, but it'll give you a mission that won't go on your record until you become a shinobi. How's that sound? Hiruzen asked, fucking awesome. Naruto said and Sayuri popped him upside his head, Naruto Ichiha. You do not use that language. Sayuri said, ow. Anko says it all the time. How come she can say it, but I can't? Naruto asked, because she's an adult. Sayuri said, fine. Sorry old man. Naruto said and Hiruzen chuckled, it's quite alright. Now, this will be an S rank mission due to her status as A. Your mission will start when you've advanced in your training. You will help a squad to protect her during the day, while at night I'll have a different squad watching her. Hiruzen said, are you sure about this lord what about him? Won't he go after Natsumi as well? Sayuri asked, yes. I can already tell within two years Naruto will be stronger than some genin. As for him, he'll attack at night, but I have Kat and her squad guarding her at night. Naruto will just deal with civilians and some ninja that are genin or. It will be easier for me to protect her during the academy as well, since I have a feeling that the teachers and students will try to sabotage her. Sirotobi said, then if that's the case, why not fire them and get new teachers? Sayuri asked, because the academy somehow fell into the hands of the civilian council and I'm still trying to find a way to take it back. I can only get involved if something is reported directly to me, and that's where Naruto comes in at. If you see any kind of sabotage going on, report it to me. Hiruzen said, permission to beat them up? Naruto asked, only if you deem it necessary. Hiruzen said, good. Naruto said, that means if they attack her first young man. Sayuri said, remember, Naruto. You can't say a word to Natsumi about any of this. Hiruzen said, I know. Naruto said, also, when you graduate from the academy, I'll have a surprise for you. It's something your father left behind for you. I don't know what it is since it's sealed in a scroll that will only open with your blood. Hiruzen said, at Minato. Always thinking ahead. Sayuri said, well, that will be all. I must go to a council meeting. Hiruzen said, come on, Naruto. It's still early enough for you to get a couple of hours of training done. 
Sayuri said, okay. Bye old man. Naruto said as they left the room, Sayuri house, okay. Since you've unlocked the Sharingan, training will be different. Sayuri said, different how? Naruto asked, I'm going to teach you about Sharingan. What you have right now is the basic level of the Sharingan, but unlocking it at your age is simply unheard of. Your one Tomo Sharingan gives you the instant ability to analyze things. It allows you to copy jutsu, imitate movements and have faster perception. Sayuri said, so it's kind of like a defensive tool right now. Naruto asked, exactly. The next step is the two Tomo Sharingan. It's the same as the one Tomo Sharingan, but you get slightly enhanced vision that will allow you to see your opponent's moves slightly in advance. The third is when you have three Tomo in your Sharingan, and that's when it's fully matured. This version of the Sharingan enhances your vision to the max, allowing you to see your opponent's moves in advance, so you can counter before they attack you. This version also gives you access to some Sharingan as well. Sayuri said, I get that and everything, but that seems pretty basic when you explain it like that. I was expecting more and I already see a weakness in the Sharingan. Naruto said, what would that weakness be? Sayuri asked, well, what if you fight somebody that doesn't really have a set movement for their attack? I think even the Sharingan would have a difficult time reading and predicting the attack. Naruto said, that's good. I should also warn you about reaction timing. Just because the Sharingan can see and predict movements doesn't mean you'll be able to counter in time. Your Sharingan will essentially slow their movements down, but if your body isn't conditioned enough then you won't be able to dodge. Sayuri said, so will you be training me in speed as well? Naruto asked, I want you to be an all-around ninja. Most in the Ichiha clan unlock their Sharingan and focus solely on their Sharingan. I'll teach you every aspect of being a ninja. Jinjutsu, ninjutsu, tojutsu, and some medical ninjutsu. When you graduate from the academy, I want you to be a mid chunin level shinobi. I know you can be stronger than that, but taking a break to give your body a chance to fully recover is a good thing and is essential to your growth. Sayuri said, this is going to suck, isn't it? Naruto asked, of course it is, but I'm sure you can handle it. Now, come here so I can play some seals on you. Sayuri said, what kind of seals? Naruto asked, these are resistant seals. They make it harder for you to move and they don't stunt your growth like weights would at your age. Basically it feels like the gravity is increasing around you a bit. Sayuri said as she placed the seals on Naruto, cool. Naruto said, as he felt it hard to move, should I tell him about that? I think he can handle it. I hope I'm not wrong about this. Sayuri thought, Naruto, there's something else I need to tell you about the Sharingan. Sayuri said in a serious tone that he picked up on, what about it? I thought you told me everything about it. Naruto said, no. The last thing I need to tell you about is the fourth stage of the Sharingan. It's known as the Manjikyu Sharingan and is extremely powerful. Sayuri said and activated her Manjikyu Sharingan, which was in the form of a three-leaf clover, Naori Ichiha Manjikyu. Picture on profile, what does it do? Naruto asked, this version of the Sharingan gives you your own unique abilities, and as you can see, it changes the look of the Sharingan to a unique pattern. The drawback of the Manjikyu Sharingan is that you go blind the more you use it. Sayuri said, then what's the point of getting it? You gain immense power, but lose your vision. How do you even awaken it? Naruto asked, according to the Ichiha stone tablet, you must kill your best friend. Sayuri said, did you kill your best friend? Naruto asked, indirectly. I could have possibly saved Kishina had I gone to see her give birth to Natsumi, but I declined. Sayuri said, the cost of this Manjikyu is losing your vision and your best friend. It's not worth it in the end. Naruto said, I hope you never have to experience that kind of pain, but since you'll become a shinobi, I don't think it's unavoidable. Sayuri said, I'll try my best to keep that from happening. Naruto said, good. Just be careful if it does happen. Sayuri said, so what does your Manjikyu Sharingan do? Naruto asked, I have an ability in my right eye known as time skip. I can freeze time for a fifth of a second, but I'm able to move around freely in that small time frame. If I use this ability enough, I can store the time I've skipped to create a space so I won't get touched. Sayuri said, that's so cool. Naruto said, it is. My second ability is from my left eye called Amaterasu, and I have the ability to control the shape of my flames. Sayuri said, wow. Naruto said, enough about my abilities. Let's start training. Sayuri said and started to cough heavily. Mom? Are you okay? Naruto asked, I'm fine. It's just a cough. I want you to start by giving me 15 laps around the backyard. After that we'll work on your kunai and shuriken skills. Sayuri said, okay. Naruto said, he took off running, but looked back when he heard his mom coughing. Sayuri noticed this and gave him a smile with a wave, reassuring him that she was fine. When Naruto started his laps again, Sayuri looked at her hand and saw she had blood on her hand. She sighed and hoped she had time to at least get Naruto into the academy, since she knew she would never make it to see him graduate the academy. 
All she knew was that she needed to train him as much as she could before her time came. Chapter 2. Two years have passed since Naruto awakened his Sharingan, learned about his father, and learned about Natsumi being his sister, as well as A. His training started off good, but then it slowed down as Sayuri's illness got even worse. She tried her hardest to keep it from him, but as time wore on, it became more obvious. He often would stay by her side all day to take care of her and miss school, but he didn't care since his mother came first. Sayuri knew she was on borrowed time and tried to stay strong, but she was losing strength every day. Naruto nearly missed his entire year of school as he refused to leave his mother's side. It took Kurenai and Anko saying they'd watch her for him in order to get him to go back to school. While he was in school everyone noticed his dramatic change while he was there. At first he would talk to people if they talked to him, but now he was withdrawn and didn't seem to care about anything. Natsumi would talk to him, but it would be a short conversation as he would just walk away. The Natsumi, they were great friends and she wanted to help him, but Naruto refused her help. Natsumi was the only person to get Naruto to talk and it made some of the girls in class mad. The result of Naruto being distant to everyone reminded the older generation of the younger Kakashi. His mom tried to cheer him up a bit and it worked a little, but Naruto was sad that he was going to lose his mother before she saw him graduate the academy. The illness of his mother made him read more on medical ninjutsu, so he'd walk around reading a book and even had the idea of combining it with medical ninjutsu. Despite his training slowing down, he was still able to keep up with what he was taught so far and improved on it. He had great chakra control since he completed leaf balancing, pebble balancing, kunai balancing and tree walking. His reserves were unnaturally large, but he learned his father also had large chakra reserves, so it was only natural for him to have that as well. He mastered the fireball since it was like a rite of passage for Ichiha clan members, but he had a hard time with it and Sayori figured he didn't have a fire chakra nature or it wasn't his main affinity. His tojutsu was low genin level and it was at the top of his class. His ninjutsu was limited for the time being since he only knew the fireball, substitution, henge and clone. He was the best in his class when it came to kunai and shuriken throwing as he would get 10 out of 10 each time he was tested on it. He was offered the chance to graduate early but he declined. He made no friends really in school since he didn't try to. Natsumi doesn't count in his book since she's his sister and he met her before the academy started. They hung out quite a bit during the day and she normally spent her day at the Ichiraku Raymond stand or with Ino Yamanaka who had a huge crush on Sasuke Ichiha. Speaking of Sasuke, Naruto finally met him and he personally didn't care for him but he didn't hate him. He was neutral towards him. He met Itachi and Shisui as well but they were always busy and secretive. He knew why they were secretive since it had to do with the tension that reached its breaking point between the village and the Ichiha clan. While Naruto didn't say anything, he knew what was going on as he paid attention to everything going on around him, even if it didn't seem like it. His mission protecting Natsumi over the years was going slow, but that's because they were in the academy and nobody knew where she lived except for Naruto. He's even spent the night over there a few times and stayed up all night with her until she eventually fell asleep. He found out her dream was to become the and he honestly believed she could become. Currently he was sitting in class next to Natsumi who wasn't really paying attention. This class is so boring. All he does is talk. Natsumi said, if we're lucky he'll talk so much that his mouth will fall off so we don't need to hear him anymore. Naruto said and Natsumi gasped, did you just make a joke? You haven't joked since your mom got even more sick. Is she okay? Natsumi asked and Naruto sighed, no. It's only a matter of time before she can no longer fight it. I don't get it. Kanoha is supposed to have one of if not the best hospitals across the nations, yet they couldn't find out what was wrong with her. Naruto said, maybe she'll pull through. Natsumi said, it's good that you remain hopeful, but she isn't getting any better. I've even tried to ask the old man to send an urgent message to his student Sanadi Senju, but the messenger was killed before he could deliver the message to her. Naruto said, Anichiha asking a Senju for help. That's ironic given their history. Natsumi said, that history is before I was born and would be stupid for me to continue it. Naruto said, I guess you're right. What are you doing after school? Natsumi asked, I'm going to the hospital to see my mom and then get some training done. Naruto said, I go with you, but I need to do some training of my own. Natsumi said, where will you be training? Naruto asked, why? Are you trying to steal some of my awesome ninja moves? Natsumi asked, please. I just figured I'd take you out for some ramen, but I think I'll just head home. Naruto said, what? No. We can go. Natsumi said, Naruto and Natsumi care to tell the rest of the class what you're talking about. Their teacher yelled, yeah. We're discussing something private. It's not like you're teaching us anything new. We learned about chakra last year. Naruto said, you know what? Naruto you can go too. And appeared in the room and gave the teacher a slip of paper before leaving. Actually, you need to go to the hospital. This says it's urgent. 
the teacher said and Naruto basically flew out of the room. Hospital. Naruto arrived at the hospital and didn't even bother to stop at the front desk. Nurses wanted to stop him, they realized who it was and left him alone. They tried everything they could, but didn't have the right medicine to treat his mother, and they seemed to be losing money every year. As he was running through the hospital, he had his Sharingan activated to evade anyone in his way until he reached his mother's hospital room. When he went inside, Anko, Kurinai and Makoto were all there with sad looks on their faces. We leave you two alone. Makoto said and they walked out. I'm here, Naruto. Sayori said, as she held out her arms for a hug. I guess I can't ask how you're feeling, huh? Naruto asked and she chuckled. I guess not, but it's what you've been preparing for. I tried to stay strong for you, but I wasn't strong enough. Sayori said. No. You were strong. You're the strongest person I know. Naruto said. I'm happy to hear you say that. Where's Natsumi? Sayori asked. She's still at school. I didn't bring her since I left right after the teacher told me to come here. Naruto said and she nodded. She's a good girl. I only wish I was able to adopt her so she wouldn't grow up alone. At least she has you in her life. Sayori said. Yeah, but it sucks that she doesn't know we're related. Naruto said and she started to cough so he gave her some water. Thank you. Listen, I need to tell you something important. Sayori said. What is it? Naruto asked. The Ichiha clan is planning a coup d'etat. I'm sure you've noticed the brewing tension between the Ichiha clan and the village. The reason for this is because the village blames us for the Nine Tails attack, since the Sharingan has the power to control the Nine Tails. Fugaku is leading the coup, and I don't want you to get involved in it. Sayori said. What's going to happen? Naruto asked. I'm one of the three people in the clan that know about the coup and are against it. Hiruzen is trying to bring peace between the two and work something out, but it's not going as he hoped. I don't think we have much time left before the coup happens. We both know I won't live much longer, so I want you to go to the secret bunker I told you about that your father built and stay there. It's protected by a barrier so nobody can sense where you're at. Sayori said and started coughing. Mom. Naruto said and started to cry. Just listen, Naruto. I'm sorry I won't be able to see you become a ninja, but I'm happy to have seen you take your first steps to becoming a ninja. My baby boy is growing up so fast. It almost seems like it was just yesterday when I found out I was pregnant with you. I won't be able to see you graduate, leave on your first mission or even get a girlfriend. Make sure you find a girl that actually loves and cares about you to start a family with and treat her with respect. Sayori said. I will. Naruto said. Don't let these little fangirls sink their claws into you. There's so much more that I want to say to you, but I simply can't put it into words. Make sure Natsumi grows up big and strong so she can achieve her dream of becoming. Also be wary of a man named Danzo Shimura. He's evil, cunning and will do anything to get you to join his side. He's probably plotting on you to capture you as we speak, but as long as you stay with Kurinai and Anko, you'll be fine. Kurinai has agreed to let you live with her, and I've already signed the papers for her to be your legal guardian. I need to tell you something about your Sharingan. Sayori said. What about it? Naruto asked. You have the most powerful Sharingan eyes within the Ichiha clan. Maybe in the history of the Ichiha clan. You unlocked your Sharingan after you saved Natsumi for the first time, and you were only five when that happened. You were able to cast Minor with them while they only had one Tomo, and now that you have a two Tomo in your Sharingan, its visual prowess is even greater. However, there is one important thing you should know. Eventually you'll unlock your Manjiku Sharingan and its abilities then lose your eyesight, but there is a way to cure your blindness. Sayori said and wiped tears from his face. How? Naruto asked. When I die, I want you to remove my eyes and store them in that container I have right there. The storage seal you had placed on your shoulder is where I want you to keep them. On the Ichiha stone tablet it says you can restore the light of your Manjiku with an Ichiha you have strong blood ties with, and since I'm your mother, I want you to have my eyes. Do not fall into the Ichiha clan's curse of hatred and keep yourself surrounded by loved ones. Sayori said. I will. I have Anko, Kurinai and Itsumi. Naruto said. That's good. Try to find Lady Tsunade and have her look over the notes for my illness and see if she can come up with a cure. I don't want anybody to go through this kind of pain. Sayori said and Naruto nodded. I haven't given up. I'm even trying to make medical seals. I just wish I was able to finish them to save you. Naruto said. Don't worry, Naruto. Take your time. They need to be perfect and if you rush them, then you'll make a mistake. Think of it like this, you can possibly save millions of people with this idea of yours. Well I would have loved to use one of your seals, I've come to embrace my fate while doing everything I could to overcome it. Sayori said. It'll take me some time to get over this even though it's been getting closer and closer every day. Naruto said. It's okay to mourn. Just don't turn out like Kakashi. Sayori said. I don't even know who that is. Naruto said. You'll find out eventually. Sayori said and gave Naruto the biggest hug she could. I love you, mom. Naruto said. I love you too, Naruto. You'll always be my little maelstrom. 
Sayuri said and it was as if a switch was flipped and then she took her final breath while he was holding her. He cried silent tears as he held his mother since he didn't want anybody to hear him. Kurinai and Anko came into the room with tears as they heard the last bit of their conversation, then joined in the hug. After a few minutes Naruto asked them if they could leave the room to give him some space and they did. Naruto steeled his nerves and removed his mother's eyes like she asked him to, then he placed them in the container she had before sealing them away. He stayed in her room until it was late at night, even after they removed her body. They were going to remove her organs for testing, but Naruto didn't trust these nurses since he's never seen them before and was against it. He told Hiruzen, who was there, that he's going to burn her body. Hiruzen nodded and sealed the body away until Naruto was ready to cremate his mother. He finally stood up and looked at himself in the mirror, then started to clean his face. As he was doing this, his Sharingan activated with both in each eye spinning rapidly before turning into three tomatoes in each eye. However his Sharingan kept spinning before it turned into his own Manjikyu Sharingan. Image on profile, one last gift I guess. Naruto said and walked out of the hospital, Okage Monument, Naruto left the hospital and went to the monument just to clear his mind. He could have gone back to class, but he opted not to and had Kurinai tell his teacher that he wouldn't be returning. He didn't know how much time had passed, but the sun was starting to set so he would be leaving. As he was about to leave, he heard someone walking up on him, but he didn't bother to turn around. Naruto Uchiha. The person said, what do you want? Naruto asked, straight to the point. My name is Danzo Shimura and I have an offer I'm sure you'd like to hear. Danzo said, so this is the guy mom told me about. Most likely he wants the Sharingan on his side. Naruto thought, not interested. Naruto said, just hear me out. I mean no harm. Danzo said, if you didn't mean any harm, then you wouldn't have come with backup. Naruto said, he's able to detect me. Danzo thought and gave a slight signal for them to be ready. They are just my bodyguards. Danzo said, you have 30 people hiding. That's not bodyguards. Not even the walks around with that much protection, and I highly doubt you're more important than he is in the village. You came here to take me by force if I didn't listen to your offer. I know what you want and my answer is still no. Naruto said, perhaps you should reconsider. Join me and I can make you as powerful as you'd like. We can build a village together that is unstoppable. I can even train you in the use of your Sharingan. My men will push you to your limits and beyond them. Together, we can rule this village and bring it to newer heights. Danzo said, you can't teach me something I already know about. My training is perfectly fine and I don't need help from somebody like you. As for ruling this village, I'm not interested in becoming its leader. Being isn't something that interests me. Naruto said, then perhaps the cure for your mother's disease will suffice in exchange for you joining me. Danzo said and smirked a bit, I'd rather have my mom die rather than take something from you, and I'm sure she'd say the exact same thing. You wasted your time coming here. Naruto said and stood up, I've noticed you've gotten close to Natsumi Uzumaki. It would be a shame if something bad were to happen to her. She should watch her back. Danzo said and started to walk away, but Naruto spoke up, you won't touch and we both know why. You'd risk unleashing the Nine Tails if you did that, and then you'd have to answer Hiruzen about why you attacked Natsumi. That eye you have hidden in your right eye socket isn't even strong enough to help you against the Nine Tails. That's why you want me or more specifically my Sharingan, because you know it's stronger than the one you have in your head right now. I noticed all of the spies in the Achiha clan district, mainly around me. Me and my mom purposely talked about my Sharingan in the open while training, so they'd report to whoever sent them. Naruto said, he planned for this meeting, but didn't know it was going to be me. I've been outsmarted but a mere child. Danzo thought, now that I know who was sending them after me, I have a message for you. Naruto said, what is it? Danzo asked and narrowed his eye. Do not bother me and stop sending your spies after me and Natsumi. You regret it. Naruto said and glared at him. Why can't I move? Jinjutsu, of course. Danzo thought and when he released the, Naruto was gone. Two weeks later, two weeks passed and Naruto was currently walking towards the Uchiha clan district. He hasn't been there ever since his mom died and lived in the secret bunker like she said to. The reason he wanted to head to the Uchiha district is because he wanted to read the Uchiha stone tablet. The Uchiha clan was killed the week prior by Itachi after they were about to launch the coup. Shisui mysteriously died and Itachi was blamed for it. News spread wildly about the Uchiha massacre and that it was Itachi who did it. Both Naruto and Sasuke were the only survivors and the entire village started to treat them like royalty. They were questioned, but Naruto wasn't there so he didn't say anything. Anko, Kurinai and Natsumi thought he was dead, but he told them he was somewhere safe and away from everybody. He made contact with Itachi after it happened and told him he already knew why this had to happen. That surprised Itachi, but he was even more shocked when Naruto asked who the other person was that he kept detecting. The person he was feeling would appear in one area, but then he would be in a completely different section of the district. 
Itachi only told him to watch after Sasuke for him before he suddenly left, and Naruto told him that he's not a babysitter. Naruto made it to the Naka shrine and went underneath it to start reading the tablet. At first he wasn't sure if he should read it, but something came over him and made him read it. So far all he read was the warnings about the Sharingan and the misfortune it could bring which he figured it was the curse of hatred his mom told him about. He also came by the techniques of the Manjiku Sharingan and carefully read them. The Madarasu was an ability that produced black flames that would not stop burning until the target was completely incinerated. The flames cannot be extinguished with water, the passage of time or any other normal methods, and only the user can put the flames out. Tsukiyomi was a that inflicted real pain and lasted for three days inside, but on the outside only three seconds would have passed. It also said that only another Manjiku user can break the Tsukiyomi, and you need to make eye contact in order to make it work. Susanoo is a gigantic humanoid avatar made of the user's chakra that surrounds them and fights on their behalf. It is an extension of the user's will and has multiple stages before it's complete. Hamui, a space-time ninjutsu that allows the user to transfer objects to and from another dimension. It creates a spiraling void and distorts their form as they're traveling between dimensions. Hodamatsukami, an extremely powerful jinjutsu that completely manipulates someone's thoughts. The victim believes that they are doing what they are doing by their own will. Hagatsuchi, a technique that allows the user to shape the black flames of a Madarasu, allowing the user to manipulate them at will. While Naruto was reading the techniques, he noticed his mother's time skip ability wasn't there, and he figured that it was a secret ability that was never unlocked before. He read about the consequences of using the Manjiku Sharingan, and something caught his eye that didn't make sense. It says the only way to unlock the Manjiku Sharingan was to kill your best friend. He didn't kill his best friend and neither did his mom. That information was false, and he wondered why that was written there. He read something else about a god seeking stability was divided into yin and yang, but when these two came together you obtain all things in creation. He thought about that for a while, and the only thing he could think of was the sage of six paths, but nobody actually has any legit information on him. It talked about having the power to control the tailed beasts, but he doubted he'd ever want to do that. It also said that when someone who possesses the power of Sax Ra approaches the moon, an eye will open that is reflected on the moon to grant the eternal dream. It mentioned something about an infinite Tsukiyomi and that it's the only way to save the Ichiha clan. He couldn't read anything else, but used his brain to guess that the infinite Tsukiyomi was nothing more than a more advanced version of the Tsukiyomi. If that was the case, he wondered how he was supposed to save the Ichiha clan. This tablet doesn't make any sense. Naruto said and left academy next day. Class was going on as usual, and Itsumi was sad again, since Naruto still hasn't come to class. Without him there to defend her, her grades were slipping, and she fell from top 10 to the middle of the class. Their teacher was in the middle of the lesson when the door slid open revealing Naruto reading a medical ninjutsu book. Naruto, you're three hours late. Last week was an exception for your absence, but I can't allow it today. Why are you late? The teacher asked. Funny story actually. I was walking to school and on my way there the Inuzuka dogs were trying to kill a black cat, so I had to take the long way around. Naruto said and the teacher just banged his head in the chalkboard, great. He's just like Kakashi. The teacher thought, does he really expect anybody to believe that? Mitsumi thought, HN. Sasuke thought, I am glad Naruto made it to class. Hinata thought, just go sit down. The teacher said, sure. Naruto said and sat in his seat, why are you late? Mitsumi asked, I just told you why. Naruto said, whatever. Listen, I've got an extra room in my place if you need to use it. Mitsumi said, thanks for the offer, but I'll have to pass. My sister is letting me stay in her place. Naruto said, I didn't know you had a sister. Mitsumi said, you also don't know that you have a brother. Naruto thought, she's not really my sister, but she's been watching me ever since I was born. You haven't met her yet because she's always out on missions since she wants to become a Naruto said, and I can't wait to meet her. Mitsumi said, I'm sure you can't. Naruto said, have you been training at all these past two weeks? Mitsumi asked, yeah, but I've mainly been working on my speed into jutsu. Naruto said, I bet I can kick your ass. Mitsumi said, you'd lose that bet. Naruto said, whatever. Want to grab some Rainman after school? Mitsumi asked, I have to make a stop, but I'll meet you there. Naruto said, yes. I'll finally reclaim my crown for most Rainman bowls eaten. Believe it. Mitsumi said, right. Naruto said, take your mask off while you eat. It's weird seeing you seemingly stuck food through the mask. How do you do that anyway? Mitsumi asked. If I told you then it wouldn't be funny to look at your face trying to figure it out. Naruto said. Why do you wear a mask anyway? Are you ugly? Mitsumi asked. No. I have my reasons, but until certain requirements are met, I can't show my face to people. My father was a very powerful man, and if I take my mask off you'd be able to tell who my father is right away. 
even though he's dead, his enemies would still come after me and I'm not strong enough to face them. Naruto said, I see. Well, hopefully when you get stronger you can show me your face. Mitsumi said, how about this? When I'm able to handle a level ninja, I'll stop wearing my mask. Does that sound fair? Naruto asked, yup. Mitsumi said, so, how's everything been since I've been gone? Naruto asked, horrible. I fell from the top 10 in class to the middle. I don't understand it. I know I got everything right and I haven't missed a day. I just don't get it. Mitsumi said, I see. Well, now that I'm back I'll help you out. Naruto said, thank you. Mitsumi said, alright, students. Today we're going to learn about why ninja usually travel in groups. The teacher said and everyone groaned, can I be excused? Naruto asked, you were three hours late and you want to be excused. Where do you have to go? The teacher asked, anywhere that's better than here. This crap is boring and you know it. Naruto said, no. If they have to learn it then so do you. Now, pay attention. The teacher said and then appeared, sorry for the interruption. Naruto Uchiha, Lord, would like to have a word with you. The said and vanished, fine. Naruto, you're excused. The teacher said, wow. Talk about perfect timing. I'll see you at Ichirikus later. Naruto said and left, okay. Mitsumi said, wow, Mitsumi. You've got another date with Naruto. Ino said, it's not a date. Besides, he's like a brother to me if anything. Mitsumi said, then why does he only hang out with you? Ino asked, I don't know. You'd have to ask him. Why? Do you like him? Mitsumi asked, please. Why would I want Naruto if I have Sasuke for myself? Ino asked, excuse me? Sasuke is mine, pig. Sakura said, what was that forehead? Ino asked, give me a break. Mitsumi thought and sat next to Hinata. Hi Hinata. Mitsumi said, oh oh. H hi Mitsumi. Hinata said, you know, if you stop stuttering so much and gain some confidence Naruto might start to notice you. Mitsumi said and Hinata turned red. W what do you mean? Hinata asked, we all know you like him. Mitsumi said, and no. You've got a W wrong. Hinata said, sure I do. Mitsumi said, Hokage office, you called for me, old man. Naruto asked, I did. Care to explain where you've been for the past two weeks? Hiruzen asked, I was in a secret bunker my father had. Naruto said, where exactly is this bunker located? Hiruzen asked, if I told you it wouldn't be much of a secret. Besides, only me and Mitsumi can get inside of it. Naruto said, of course Minato would set it up like that. Anyway, your mission has a two-week blank period. Ask Mitsumi for anything unusual. Hiruzen said, I did. The only thing that happened to her was she fell from the top 10 in class to the middle. She went every day and got everything right, but she still fell to the middle of the class. Naruto said, I see. I'll deal with this one myself. Keep up the work. Hiruzen said, yeah. Oh and I spoke to your pal, Danzo, two weeks back. Naruto said and Hiruzen grew serious, what did he want? Hiruzen asked, a typical join his side for power. Don't worry. I declined and basically threatened him before leaving. He knows about my Sharingan being the strongest in clan history and wants it for his own personal gain. Naruto said, I want to know if he even looks at you next time. Hiruzen said, you got it. Naruto said, now, I'm sure you have time left for class. Get going to the academy. Hiruzen said, actually, I think I'll skip the rest of the day. I was already three hours late. Naruto said, why were you late? Hiruzen asked, well, I was on my way to the academy, but then the Inuzuka dogs were trying to kill a black cat. They were blocking the road so I had to take the long way around. Naruto said and Hiruzen pinched his nose. You're dismissed, Naruto. Hiruzen said, later. Naruto said and walked out. Naruto, as he was walking around the village, Naruto started to think about his training and what he could do to improve on it. He needed some ninja tools and more clothes for a shinobi, but didn't know where he could find some. All he saw was civilian clothing stores and no ninja stores. He was walking while reading his book until he had a feeling he should look up. As he looked up, he noticed he stopped in front of a ninja supply store that seemed pretty new to him. I guess it wouldn't hurt to try this place. Naruto thought as he went inside. Hello. Is anybody here? Naruto asked. Welcome to Higurashi's ninja store. How can I help you young man? The name is Sato Higurashi. Sato said and Naruto shook his hand. Naruto Uchiha, nice to meet you. Naruto said. An Uchiha with manners. That's rare. Sato said. My mom and older sister raised me well. Naruto said. I see. So, what can I do for you? You're the first customer for the store since we've just opened. Sato said, sweet. I need some kunai, shuriken, ninja wire and if possible some deer ink. Naruto said, hmm. I have just what you need, but I can't sell them to a civilian. Sato said, but I'm in the academy. It's my second year. Shouldn't that count? Naruto asked, ah yes. It does. However, since you are still in the academy I can only give you practice kunai and shuriken. 
they're less durable than the actual thing, but it's all I can do for an academy student. I can sell you the ninja wire, but only about 10 feet of it. As for deer ranked, I only have a few, and most of them are elemental ninjutsu, so you need to know your chakra nature for those. Sato said. How do I figure out my chakra nature? Naruto asked. But this. It's called chakra paper. Sato said and gave Naruto a piece of paper. What should I do? Naruto asked. You channel some chakra into the paper. Do you know the basic chakra natures? Sato asked. Yes. Wind, water, fire, lightning and earth. Naruto said. Great. Now on the paper after you channel chakra into it, each of the symbols will glow indicating your chakra nature. Green is wind, blue is water, red is fire, brown is earth, and yellow is lightning. Give it a try. Sato said. Naruto channeled chakra into the paper, then watched as the results were shown to him. Yellow, blue and red were glowing on the paper, indicating he has lightning, water and fire chakra natures. What confused him were the numbers 1 through 3 appearing next to the glowing symbols. What do the numbers 1 through 3 mean? Naruto asked. It means your main affinity is lighting, the second is water, and the third is fire. It's weird because most Ichiha only have a fire chakra nature. Sato said. That's why it was a bit difficult for me to learn the fireball. Not only is fire not my main affinity, but my water affinity must be stronger than the fire affinity. Naruto said. Precisely. Now, I'll gather everything you need and you can have a look around. Sato said. Naruto nodded and walked around the store looking at everything he had. Multiple different kinds of weapons and some of them he never even saw before. Like he saw fans, but never saw why somebody needed a fan. He found different books on Kanoha history, books on weapon forgery and clothes that were meant for ninja, but he didn't think any of them would fit for him. The thing that caught his eye was a sword that was stuck in stone that was locked behind a glass case. He would ask Sato about it and the history behind it. He went back to the front of the store to pay. Did you find anything else you needed? Sato asked. Just some books on Kanoha history, but I learned enough of that in the academy. I do want to know about the sword in that glass case. Naruto said. Ah. That sword was forged by a good friend of mine seven years ago. He unfortunately died and never claimed the sword. After my first shop was destroyed by the Nine Tails attack, I found the sword stuck in the ground and I couldn't remove it. As you can see, I had to move the entire slab of earth to keep the sword. Some think that only people the sword deems worthy can hold it, but I personally think only one of his family members can use it. If one of his family members comes and claims the sword then they can have it. Sato said. Maybe I can give it a try. Naruto said. I'll tell you what. How about you learn how to use a sword, and when you graduate, I let you try to take the sword. How's that sound? Sato asked. Sounds fair. Can you tell me why you have fans for ninja weapons here? Naruto asked. Those are mainly for wind users. They allow them to blast away their enemy with a single swipe. I mainly sell them to Suna Shinobi when they are in the village. They're not as powerful as the larger fans they sell in Suna, but they still pack a punch. They can also shoot out if they want them to. Sato said. Cool. I think I'm done for the day. Naruto said. Alright. I've thrown in three elemental ninjutsu for each of your chakra natures and two non-elemental ninjutsu. When you're in the academy, they pay for everything you get from here except special orders. Sato said. Really? How much does a special order cost? Naruto asked. It depends on what you order. Sato said. I noticed one of your books talked about chakra metal. Is it possible to have some kunai and shuriken made out of that to channel elemental chakra through it? Naruto asked. Of course it is. How many do you need? Sato asked. About 500 each. Naruto said and Sato did the calculations. That's going to cost you about 16,000 yen. Since you won't need them for a few more years, I'll place them on back order. Sato said. What does that mean? Naruto asked. It means that the order is basically delayed. You'll be able to pick them up the day you graduate. If I'm not here then my daughter will be here. Just tell her your name and she'll get the order for you. Sato said. Can I pay for them now? Naruto asked. Sure. Since you're the first customer I'm the new store, I'll throw in the instructions to properly use your chakra nature. Sato said and sealed everything in a scroll for Naruto, thanks. Naruto said and paid for his special order, no problem. If any of your friends need some supplies, tell them about my shop. Sato said, I will. Naruto said and left, he's a good kid. Sato said, it's Raku Raymond. Naruto still isn't with you today, Natsumi. AM asked, not yet, but he'll be here. I want my crown back as the queen of gluttony. Natsumi said. Another challenge. What's the record between you two? AM asked. 10-8. I'm behind by two. I'm feeling really lucky today. Natsumi said. You said that last time and lost. Naruto said as he entered the Raymond shop. Oh. Naruto. You're here. AM said. Why didn't you get that excited when I came in here? Natsumi asked and AM blushed. I I am. W well. It's just that you're always here. AM said. He's here just as much as me. Natsumi said. Can we just start? 
Naruto asked, and then Tucci placed four large bowls in front of both of them, alright. Listen up. We've got another gluttony challenge over here. Mitsumi has challenged Naruto for the crown. Do you accept the challenge, Naruto? A.M. asked, of course. Naruto said, everyone gather around and place your bets. A.M. announced, and everyone bet on Naruto winning except for one person, alright. Go. A.M. said, Naruto and Mitsumi began digging into their food at a fast pace while listening to the cheering crowd. Everyone except one person may have bet on Naruto winning, but the competition was something that made sure everyone was cheering. This went on for another two hours, with Naruto having a one bowl lead over Natsumi. Gucci and AM were working as quickly as possible to keep up with the speed the bowls were being eaten. Natsumi caught up to Naruto and then quickly took a two bowl lead. Naruto wasn't going to lose and up the pace, and now they were tied. Tucci only had enough ramen for one bowl, so he made that and sat it between the two of them. Done. Naruto and Natsumi yelled, We have a tie. AM said, What? How? Natsumi yelled, It's actually not a tie. Naruto said, How? You both ate the same amount of ramen bowls, and you both split the tiebreaker bowl. AM said, I would have won if I didn't drop a noodle on the ground earlier in the contest. When we eat, the rules state that you must eat every noodle and I didn't. She's the winner by the rules we set. Naruto said and Tucci placed the crown on Natsumi's head, yes. Take that. I'm the queen of gluttony. Natsumi said, you may have won, but you're still behind a game in our little competition. Naruto said, so then nobody wins any money. Natsumi said, not true. I bet on you beating me this time. Naruto said, H how much money did he win? Natsumi asked, 1.4 million yen. AM said and gave Naruto the money, nice. Pleasure doing business with you. Natsumi, I need you to come with me. Naruto said and they walked out, where are we going? Natsumi asked, to the ninja supply shop. Naruto said and she stopped, let me put on a hand so I can get inside. Natsumi said, there's no need for that. Just trust me on this one. Naruto said, what if I get kicked out? Natsumi asked, then I'll stop doing business with the owner of the shop. Naruto said, the Grashi Ninja store, are you sure I can be in here? Natsumi asked and looked around, of course. Naruto said and walked up to the counter to ring the bell, humming. Sato said from the back, it's me, Naruto. I've brought a friend. Naruto said, a friend you say? Who is it? Sato asked as he came from the back, go on. Introduce yourself. Naruto said, I I'm, and Natsumi you Uzumaki. Natsumi said, so this is Kashina and Minato's daughter. She's almost an exact replica of Kashina if it weren't for the whisker marks and blue eyes. Sato thought and looked at Naruto who nodded to him like he knew what he was thinking, I see. I'm Sato Higarashi. Nice to meet you. Have a look around while I talk to Naruto about his order. Sato said, are you sure? Natsumi asked, of course. Since you're an academy student, everything you pick out is paid for by them crept for special orders. Sato said, thanks. When I'm, I'll make sure everyone knows about your shop. Natsumi said and ran off, I'm guessing you already know who she is. Sato said, more than you know. Naruto said, how did you find out? It's supposed to be a secret. Sato said, my mom told me. Naruto said, I see. If they told you then I won't question it. The thing is, does she know you two are related? Sato asked and Naruto's eyes went wide, how did you know? Naruto asked, Naruto, I was good friends with the fourth. There are no spiky hair at Chiha, and the only people your mother really hung out with were me, Minato, Kishina and Makoto. It's not hard to figure out who your father was. I bet you look just like him underneath that mask of yours. Sato said, fine. To answer your question, no she doesn't know we're related. Naruto said, because of Iwa, correct? Sato asked, yes. The third wants to tell her when she graduates so hopefully she'll be mature enough to handle it. Naruto said, understandable. Well, she's welcome here anytime she wants. Sato said, and then they heard stuff fall over, sorry. Natsumi yelled and then another crash was heard, you may want to hire a cleanup crew. Naruto said, it's fine. I'll just hire some genin for a D-rank mission to clean it up. Sato said, that's what a D-rank mission is. Naruto asked, yeah. It's basically chores for civilians. I used to be a ninja, but I retired after sustaining a brutal leg injury. That's why I walk with this cane. Sato said, I am not looking forward to doing those. Naruto said, if you get lucky enough you'll get a teacher who'll let you do the D-rank missions quickly or won't have you do them at all. Sato said, hopefully. Naruto said and then Natsumi came back, I'm back. Natsumi said and put some stuff on the counter, ink cans, rope, rubber ducks, stink bombs, glue. What is all of this? Naruto asked, I didn't even know I sold that stuff. Sato mumbled, it's for pranking, duh. Natsumi said, I brought you here to get some ninja supplies, but I clearly wasted my time if this is all you're interested in. Naruto said, but he said the academy pays for all of this. Natsumi said, they do, but you have nothing to train with in here. 
I saw your gear and that is why I brought you to Sato. Naruto said. Well, maybe I don't want your stupid help. Mitsumi said and walked out. I'll keep these here for her. Sato said. Thanks. Naruto said and walked out of the store. Training ground. Naruto was sitting down in a meditative position when all of a sudden his eyes snapped open and kunai started flying at him from all directions. He jumped into the air and twisted around the kunai before he threw them so they'd collide with some of the other kunai. He heard eleven thumping noises and then landed on the ground with a smirk on his face. He looked around and saw ten targets with a kunai in them. He looked behind him and saw a target behind a big rock with a kunai embedded inside of it. He sighed and took a drink of water before looking to his left. I know you're there. Naruto said and two blank masks appeared. They didn't talk and just attacked him, but unfortunately he was able to dodge them. They weren't that fast, but they were faster than him and they knew when to attack. Naruto used a fireball, but they dodged it at the last minute. They came at him with their swords drawn and tried to attack him, but his Sharingan was able to predict their attacks. He was thankful for his mother's reflex training to help him counter some moves. Naruto managed to grab the sword from one of them and slashed his stomach, but it was as if he didn't feel it. He was kicked away by both, but he was able to correct himself in the air and land properly. He looked up and saw one of them with his sword drawn aiming at his heart. Naruto's Manjikyu Sharingan activated and then he suddenly switched places with the other who was stabbed through the heart instead of him. The other was killed instantly and before the other could remove his sword, Naruto stabbed him in the back through his heart and killed him. He took the mask off to see who this person was, but both of the agents went up in flames. Naruto ran to the bushes and threw up over having to kill somebody like that. It took him a minute, but he got himself under control and went to see Hiruzen. Hokage office, what can I do for you, Naruto? Hiruzen asked, why did they attack me? Naruto asked, what do you mean? They shouldn't have attacked you, and I can assure you that all of them are accounted for. Hiruzen said, I managed to get this off of one of them. Naruto said and placed the blank mask on his desk, Root. Hiruzen mumbled, what's Root? Naruto asked, it's an illegally run division of Anbu controlled by Danzo. I've been trying to get some sort of evidence on him, but he leaves no trace, and when they fail a mission, they go up in flames removing them from existence. The fact that you got one of their masks is proof against Danzo that they exist, but it isn't enough. Hiruzen said, these two weren't that much stronger than me. They only had a slight edge over me in speed and they knew, but I was able to evade them with my Sharingan. Naruto said, then he'll send more of them after you and they'll be even stronger. You need to up your training and be prepared. The best I can do is have an operative watch over you. I don't want this to leak out somehow. Hiruzen said, I'll be fine on my own. I've picked up a few things for my training from Sato Higurashi. I'll have to go back eventually, but I have enough now to last me. Naruto said, what did you get from him? Hiruzen asked, some practice kunai and shuriken, three elemental for my chakra natures and two non-elemental. Naruto said, chakra nature? Which ones do you have? Hiruzen asked, lightning, water and fire. Naruto said, interesting. Most Ichiha normally have a fire chakra affinity and then copy others. Hiruzen said, he said the same thing. He also has a sword that apparently nobody has been able to use and he'll let me try to take it after I graduate. That means I'll need a teacher. Naruto said, well, I can't help you out since it would be showing favoritism. I also can't tell you that there's an area in the shinobi section of the library. Hiruzen said and Naruto caught on to what he was doing, it's okay. I guess you can't tell me that since the civilians run the library, there's no security after it closes in five minutes. Naruto said, that is correct. Now, I must get back to my work. Hiruzen said, one more thing. It's getting harder and harder for me to clone. Mitsumi has the same problem, is there a way you can't help me with this problem? Naruto asked, you're correct. There is absolutely no way I can allow you to take the scroll on different types of clones. Hiruzen said, as a scroll mysteriously rolled to Naruto's feet, right. I thank you for being honest and not getting my hopes up. I'll be happy to throw this in the trash for you, since you have more work to do. Naruto said and picked up the scroll, that is most kind of you. Hiruzen said, I'll be going. Naruto said and left. Naruto, after sneaking into the library and finding what he needed, Naruto went to Kurinai's apartment to sleep for the night. On his way there, he heard sounds coming from an alley and rushed into the alley to see a group of civilians and Genin beating up Natsumi. He activated his Sharingan and jumped into action. He used on the Genin who were unable to break it and simply knocked out the civilians before going over to Natsumi. Natsumi, are you okay? Naruto asked and she slowly opened her eyes. I think I'll be okay. Natsumi said, come on. I'll take you home. Naruto said and she climbed on his back. How did you know I was getting beat up? Natsumi asked, I was on my way to my sister's house and I heard noise in the alley. Naruto said, why is it always you saving me? Why do you hang out with me so much? Natsumi asked, because I care about you. You mean more to me than you could imagine at the moment. 
Naruto said and her eyes started to close. I wish you were my real brother. Natsumi said before she fell asleep. All will be revealed in due time. I just hope you can get strong and mature enough. Naruto thought. He entered her house and placed her on the bed. He was about to leave, but not before leaving some of his practice ninja tools for her and some tips on how to use them. He opened the scroll that Hiruzen didn't give him and saw something known as the Shadow Clone and wrote down the instructions for Natsumi. This was almost made for somebody like them with huge chakra reserves. While Naruto's were large for his age since he already had low reserves, Natsumi most likely had more chakra than an elite right now. He wrote down some chakra control exercises for her as well and then finally left. He had five more years until he graduated and began his ninja career. His main priority right now was to become as strong as he possibly could before he would become part of a genin team. Kinjutsu, ninjutsu, tojutsu, and medical ninjutsu were everything he would be working on for the next five years. He may have to skip some days of school, but he really didn't care since they weren't really learning anything. Chapter 3. Graduation and genin team. Six years have gone by and Naruto has grown to an acceptable level. He was a mid chunin level ninja with some field experience, thanks to him constantly having to fight off Danzo's route that he sent after him. Naruto was thankful for them attacking and trying to capture him because it helped him hone his skills. He was so thankful that he sent Danzo a thank you letter in the mail, which was written on the back of an explosive tag. He trained exactly how his mother trained him and even added more to the regime, thanks to Anko and Kurinai, giving him some tips. He was an all-around shinobi having trained in every aspect of being a ninja and didn't finish anything until he had it down completely. Natsumi called him a perfectionist, but Naruto told her that he didn't want to make any mistakes in battle. His ninjutsu was high level thanks to him increasing his arsenal, but he didn't learn anything higher than a C rank. His lightning ninjutsu was his best since that was his strongest affinity and he learned to shorten the hand signs for his lighting. He learned lightning beast, lightning ball, lightning fish, electromagnetic murder and thunderclap arrow. His water affinity was strong, but he wanted to be able to grab water from the air like Tabarama Senju, and he would work on that all the time. Water style. Raging waves, water style. Liquid bullets, water clone jutsu, water style. Raging rapids and water style. Water wall were all the water he's learned so far. His fire affinity was good, but it would always be his weakest affinity, since he had a strong affinity to water. Fire style. Fireball, fire style. Phoenix flower jutsu and fire style. Dragon Flame Jutsu were all the fires he knew. His Tejutsu was about low to mid-level which was good for him at his age. He never worried about not being good enough since he knew he could always improve. His fighting style revolves around using pressure point attacks to damage his opponent's vital points and he was a completely physical fighter. Adding that with his Sharingan's ability to slow down his opponent so he can see their moves and it would be a deadly combination as he got stronger. His speed was low level thanks to the resistant seals he wore. He took them off once a year and ran around the village to get used to his speed. That turned out to be the wrong thing for him because every time Hiran, an eccentric he learned to know was Mike Guy, would always catch up to him going on about the springtime of youth and after a while, Naruto started to ignore him. He was arguably the best in the village thanks to his Sharingan, but he learned a few that worked without his Sharingan as he was keeping it a secret. His skills were good as well since he reached level 5 on his own which impressed Hiruzen. His medical ninjutsu was good, but he could use some work on it, and the nurses in Kanoha were useless since they barely knew what they were doing. He learned about the mystic palm, medical water jellyfish and water mosquitoes. His skills were low level as Anko and Kurinai introduced him to their friend Yugao, who was a specialist. They were shocked when Naruto said he knew she was a member of the Black Ops, and when they asked how he knew, he simply told them that she's the only person other than Anko with purple hair in the village. His Manjikyu was never used again after the first time against the since he wanted to focus on his other skills and not become too reliant on the Manjikyu. He read the tablet again and confirmed his suspicions that it was being tampered with because his ability was now on there. His ability was called Amenatejikara, which allowed him to shift himself between spaces, causing anything currently occupying the space he targets to swap places with him. He didn't know who was tampering with the tag, but it must have been somebody able to sneak into Kanoha unnoticed. Over the years he became friends with Ino Yamanaka who was one of Sasuke's fangirls, but she was pretty smart. She cared more about her looks than her skills, but that changed when Itsumi embarrassed her in a spar they had. She went home after that and had her father teach her some of their clan. Naruto recommended that she learn something else as well, but she said she'd wait for her instructor to teach her something. She still had her fangirl moments, but she was a good friend to Naruto. Itsumi was still the same except she grew taller. Her skills were at a mid genin level, and she always tried to push herself too hard to reach Naruto's level, but he explained that she should work at her own pace, and rest was important. She knew the shadow clone and like Naruto she learned it with ease. 
However, during the academy she kept trying to do the clone, as she would get teased and bullied for not being able to do the simplest. Her classmates nicknamed her Tomato thanks to her red hair, and she turned into a menace whenever somebody called her that. Teachers started to call her the second coming of the Red Hot Habanero, and they were terrified of her. The only person able to calm her down when she went on a rampage was Naruto, but he barely showed up to the academy. His attendance caused him to be at the bottom of the class, but he didn't care. Graduation came by this week, and everyone was separated into groups to get everything done quicker throughout the week. He was late to his, but he had an actual reason. The day of his graduation test was on his mother's birthday, and he was at the memorial stone for nearly four hours. He was excused by Aruka since he learned from Itsumi that Naruto's mother died when Aruka noticed he would never come to school at all on a specific day every year. Right now Naruto was sitting in class watching the remaining students take the test for their headbands. Ino and Sakura were arguing over Sasuke with his other fangirls, who Naruto wondered how they even passed. Kiba was bragging about his skills to Shino, Choji and Shikamaru were in the middle talking to each other, and Natsumi was patiently waiting for her turn. Hurry up. I'm ready for this damn test. Natsumi said, relax. You're up next if I'm not mistaken. Naruto said, it's not that she'll pass. She can't even do the clone. Kiba said and everyone laughed at Natsumi except Ino and Naruto. How about a bet, Kiba? Naruto asked, what's the bet? Kiba asked, I bet Natsumi will pass the test with flying colors. Naruto said, oh yeah. If she doesn't then she has to be my servant for the next three months. Kiba said, alright. When she does, you have to lick your dog's ass. Naruto said, hell no. Kiba said, oh. Is that Kiba denying a bet? Are you a pussycat? Naruto asked and that set Kiba off, deal. Kiba said and shook Naruto's hand, umbus. Natsumi thought, Natsumi Uzumaki, you're up. Haruka said, you got this girl. Ino said, I know. Natsumi said, use the shadow clones. Naruto whispered, I can't. It has to be a clone. Natsumi whispered, no, it has to be a clone. They never specified which one. Naruto whispered, you're right. I'll be back with my headband. Get ready to lick some dog ass Kiba. Natsumi said, exam room, alright, Natsumi. Please perform the substitution. Haruka said, you got it. Natsumi said and switched places with a chair before switching back, a job. Next, perform the hinge. Haruka said, okay. Natsumi said and had a devious grin, no wait. Haruka said, but it was too late as Natsumi transformed into a naked lady causing Haruka and his assistant Mizuki to pass out from massive nosebleeds. You should have seen your faces. Natsumi said, rolling around on the ground laughing, enough with the jokes. Haruka yelled and did his infamous big head, sorry. Sheesh. Learn to live a little. Natsumi said, okay. Now the last part. Please create three clones. Haruka said, come on, Natsumi. You can do it. Haruka thought, go on, Natsumi. Show us why you're such a failure. I'll use you for my plans and get rid of the nine tails at the same time. Mizuki thought, shadow clone. A puff of smoke went off revealing 15 Natsumis looking at them both with smug looks on their faces. So, did I pass? Natsumi asked and released her clones. No. That's not the regulation. You fail. Mizuki said, what? That's fucking bullshit. You never specified what kind of clone I had to use. I'm gonna kick your fucking ass. Natsumi yelled as her hair split into nine pieces. Calm down, Natsumi. You pass. All you had to do was make a clone. I never said which kind. Please don't hurt us. Haruka begged and gave her a headband. Woohoo. Take that, Mizuki. You son of a bitch. Natsumi yelled and ran out of the room. Damn it. Looks like I'll have to do this myself. Mizuki thought. Classroom, I wonder if she passed. Ino said. She did. Naruto said while reading a book. How can you be so sure? Ino asked. Because I know her. Naruto said and the door was kicked open. I passed bitches. Natsumi yelled. Woohoo. Ino yelled and ran to give her a hug. What? There's no way you passed. Kiba yelled. Well, I did. Believe it. Natsumi said. You know what that means, right Kiba? Ino asked and he paled. No. I'm not doing it. Kiba said. A deal is a deal. Lick Akamaru's ass. Natsumi said and Akamaru plumped his in up for Kiba, as if he understood what was going on. You can't make me. Kiba said, and then he couldn't move. I can. Shikamaru said as he caught Kiba with his shadow possession. Say ah, Kiba. Natsumi said and Shikamaru made Kiba open his mouth to lick Akamaru's ass. Wow Kiba. We didn't know you felt so strongly about Akamaru. Ino said and everyone laughed. Kiba and Yuzuka. What are you doing? Haruka yelled as he came into the classroom. He was just showing Akamaru how much he loved him. Ino said and Shikamaru dropped his. What you do at home is your business, but do not bring it to the classroom. Haruka said. I was forced to do it. Kiba said. He's lying. He just held up his end of the bet. Natsumi said, sometimes they make me regret being a teacher. Haruka thought and rubbed his temples, listen up. 
It's time to announce the Rookie of the Year, Kinoichi of the Year and the Dead Last. Haruka said, yes. Mitsumi said, Rookie of the Year goes to Sasuke Chiha. Haruka said, HN. Sasuke said, Kinoichi of the Year goes to Sakura Haruno. Haruka said, what? That's bullshit. Mitsumi yelled, she's right. Mitsumi was only slightly behind Sakura academically and blew her out of the water and everything else. Haruka thought, I demand a recount. Mitsumi yelled and, I'm sorry, but it's what Mizuki put on here when he tallied the scores for this year. Haruka said, ha. Ah. Sakura said and stuck her tongue out at Mitsumi, all right. The dead last is Kiba and Yuzuka. Haruka said, what? There's no way Naruto finished above me. Kiba yelled, well, it's true. Naruto would have been the rookie of the year, but he only came to class like 10 days a month. He has the highest scores in everything except his attendance. Now, tomorrow will be team assignments and the beginning of your ninja careers. Congratulations to everyone who passed. Haruka said and walked out the room, so, who wants to celebrate? Mitsumi asked, you can't. You need to come with me. Naruto said, is this another challenge? We're tied at 35 apiece. Mitsumi said, no. It's something even better than that. Just come with me. Naruto said and they left, village, so, what's so important that you can't tell me? Mitsumi asked as they were walking through the village, just be patient. Naruto said, I can't believe she graduated. A civilian whispered, good thing I pulled my daughter out of the academy. I can't believe that I let that thing become a ninja. We should have killed the demon when we had the chance. Naruto, you'd never lie to me, right? Mitsumi asked, of course not. Why? Naruto asked, so, if I were to ask you a question, you'd answer it honestly? Mitsumi asked, of course. Naruto said, do you know why people keep calling me a demon and treating me like I'm a contagious disease? Mitsumi asked, yes. Naruto said, can you please tell me why? Mitsumi asked, I wish I could, but the old man wants to tell you. Just hear him out before you say anything. Naruto said, why can't you tell me now? Mitsumi asked, because it's an S-rank secret. Naruto said as they reached the tower, I never knew that hating somebody is a secret. Mitsumi said and they walked in the office, yo, old man. We're here. Naruto said, do you believe in knocking? Hiruzen asked, only on Anko and Kurinai's doors. Naruto said, I see. So, what brings you here today? Hiruzen asked, he said you have something to tell me. Mitsumi said, she's ready. Naruto said and Hiruzen sealed the room, have a seat, Mitsumi. Hiruzen said, ask anything you want. Naruto said, why do the villagers hate me? Mitsumi asked, tell me, what do you know about the Nine Tails attack? Hiruzen asked, the fourth killed it 13 years ago. Mitsumi said, that's not what happened that night. The Nine Tails was defeated, but it was not killed. In order to stop a tailed beast, you must find a suitable container and then seal it away. Thirteen years ago on October 10th, a baby was born and lost her parents to the wrath of the Nine Tails. That baby was chosen by the fourth to hold the Nine Tails and keep it from attacking the village. Here is inset and her eyes widened, I was that baby. Mitsumi said, yes. You are what's known as a. You are the reason this village still stands and its savior. Hiruzen said, so, I'm the nine-tailed fox that attacked 13 years ago. Mitsumi said and started to cry, no. You are its container. Think of it like this. If I put water in a cup, does the cup become water? Hiruzen asked, no. Mitsumi said, that is correct. You are still Mitsumi Uzumaki, and the nine-tailed fox is something completely different. Hiruzen said, then if that's the case, why did they attack me? I was just an innocent little girl. Mitsumi said, the people of this village hate and fear what they do not understand. However, your family would be ashamed of them if they knew how you were being treated. I tried to let you live a normal life and get adopted into a nice family by labeling this an S-ranked, but somebody leaked the information about you being the Nine Tails to the village. I'm sorry for not telling you sooner, but you just weren't ready to handle the truth. Hiruzen said, you said my family would be ashamed of them, correct? Who are they? Do I have any family left? Mitsumi asked, here. Hiruzen said and gave her a picture, who are these people? Well, I know the fourth, but who's the lady with the nice hair? Mitsumi asked, her name is Kashina Yuzumaki. However, if she were alive you'd call her mom. Hiruzen said, mom? She's beautiful. Mitsumi said, she was easily one of the most beautiful women when she was alive. She's been with your father since they graduated from the academy, and then 13 years later, you were born. Hiruzen said, I hope my mom never got teased like I did. Mitsumi said and Hiruzen chuckled, oh she has, but for different reasons. She was teased and picked on because of her red hair and also because she was considered an outsider. Hiruzen said, why? Mitsumi asked, because she was originally from the Izushiagakur in the land of whirlpools. It was the home of the Yuzumaki clan. Sadly after she moved here, the entire Yuzumaki clan was destroyed. Hiruzen said, so they picked on her because she wasn't born here? Mitsumi asked, yes. 
She was nicknamed Tomato because of her red hair. She was such a tomboy that she'd beat up anybody who messed with her. Her nickname around the village was the Red Hot Blooded Habanero. Hirazan said, so, when the people called me the second coming of the Red Hot Blooded Habanero, I reminded them of my mom. Natsumi asked, yes. It's funny because like you, only one person was able to calm her down if she went on a rampage. Hirazan said, my dad. I guess you have something in common with my dad, Naruto. Natsumi said, you have no idea. Naruto thought, now, you do have some family left alive. A godfather, a distant cousin and a brother. Hirazan said, where the hell are they? Natsumi asked, your godfather is out of the village since he runs our spy network. The money you receive every month comes from him. Your distant cousin has been out of the village for over 20 years and probably doesn't even know you exist. Hirazan said, what about my brother? Why hasn't he been around? Does he hate me like everyone else? Natsumi asked, no. Hirazan said, well, he hasn't been here for me so he can kiss my ass. I don't need him. Naruto's my brother and that's all that matters. Natsumi said, listen, Natsumi. Your brother loves you very much and has been protecting you ever since he found out about you. Hirazan said, then why hasn't he said anything to me? Natsumi asked, because I ordered him not to. You see, he's your half-brother and was born into one of the most powerful clans. Your father had another baby that was born exactly two months before you. I ordered him to not say anything to you because that would paint an even bigger target on your back. Hirazan said, what do you mean? Natsumi asked, as you know from the academy, Iwa holds a grudge against your father because of what he did during the Third Shinobi War. Had news leaked about him having any children they would have tried to kill you. Kumo had a certain incident with your mother that I'll tell you another time, and they would have tried to get you as well. Had you known who your brother was at a younger age, you would have painted an even bigger target on your back and his because his clan didn't like him. They called him the half-breed of the clan. Hirazan said, you're right. I would have screamed it to the mountains who my brother was. So, who is he? Natsumi asked. I let him introduce himself. Hirazan said and nodded at Naruto. You know who he is? Natsumi asked. You're looking at him. My name is Naruto Uchiha Namikaze. Minato Namikaze is my father, and Sayori Uchiha is my mother. Naruto said, as he took his mask off revealing that he looked exactly like Minato with black hair and darker eyes. You're my brother Natsumi asked, and Naruto nodded. I couldn't exactly tell you, but I've known since the day after I first met you. I was supposed to keep my distance from you, but that wasn't going to happen, so I was assigned an S-rank mission to protect you from any civilian or ninja that tried to harm you. Now that you've graduated from the academy, my mission is complete. Naruto said and Natsumi gave him a bone-crushing hug. I can't believe it. This whole time I've been saying you're my brother and only family I have, but I was telling the truth without even knowing. Natsumi said and Naruto hugged her back. Now that you know about your family, what are you going to do? Hirazan asked. I'm gonna train even harder than before. I have a clan to represent. Natsumi said, that is good to hear. Now, you must keep this a secret to keep it from spreading to the other nations. I'll reveal your heritage the moment you can handle a level ninja. So, in six months I want you to be a level shinobi. Hirazan said, what about Naruto? Natsumi asked, I'm already a level ninja. Midchunin to be exact. Naruto said and put his mask on, that's not fair. Natsumi said, you spent most of your time pranking the village. While I was training, you were playing. Did you even use any of the material I gave you other than the shadow clones? Naruto asked, sort of. I did all those chakra control exercises and looked at that to jutsu style. Other than that I haven't looked at anything else. Natsumi said, you need to train seriously now. I can't have my little sister being weak. Naruto said and ruffled her hair, stop that. You're only older than me by two months. It doesn't count. Natsumi said and turned her head away. As funny as this is, I believe I have something for you both. Hirazan said and gave both of them a scroll. What's in it? Natsumi asked. I don't know. The last thing Kashina said to me was that they had these scrolls left for the two of you. Hirazan said and they unsealed the contents of the scrolls. What is this? Natsumi asked. It looks like your mom left some ninjutsu scrolls for you and her Kanoha headband. Hirazan said. Cool. Hey, what did you get? Natsumi asked. A bunch of tri-pronged kunai and some space-time ninjutsu scrolls. Naruto said. Well, it seems the two of you have some work to do. However, I recommend that you wait until you're ready for them. Hirazan said, you're right. Natsumi, come here. Naruto said, what do you want? Natsumi asked and Naruto drew a seal on her arm that disappeared. I just put a storage seal on your arm. That way you don't have to worry about losing the stuff your mom gave you. Naruto said, sweet. That sealing stuff seems complicated, but I'll give it a try. Natsumi said, well, you two must be going now. I have important matters to attend to. Hirazan said and unsealed the room. In other words you've been putting off your paperwork again. Naruto said. Shame on you, old man. Natsumi said. Damn kids. 
Hiruzen mumbled and they laughed, but Naruto whispered something in his ear, making his jaw drop. Let's go, Mitsumi. Naruto said. What did you tell him? Mitsumi asked. It's a secret. I need to get my sword from Sado. Naruto said. Let's go. I wanna laugh at you when you fail. Mitsumi said. Just for that, you can walk there. Naruto said and banished. Cheater. Mitsumi yelled and jumped out of the window as Hiruzen's secretary came into the room. Lord, I have those files from the civilian council for you. She said and pushed in two carts stacked with papers then left. Fuuuuk. Hiruzen yelled and the glared at the picture of Minato and Taburama, who seemed to be smirking at him. You bastards knew about this and didn't tell me. Hiruzen yelled and created some shadow clones. The Grashi ninja shop took you long enough. Naruto said. He cheated. Mitsumi said as they entered the shop. Yo. Old man Sato. I'm here for my sword and my order. Naruto said. I'm her too. Mitsumi said. Well, if it isn't my favorite customer. Sato said as he came from the back carrying a scroll. Check it out. We graduated. Mitsumi said. I see. Congrats to the both of you. Now, Naruto. There were a little bit of adjustments I had to make to your order. Sato said. What was that? Naruto asked. Nothing bad. It's actually better for you and I don't have to charge you extra. The guy I usually get my materials from didn't have as much steel as I needed for you kunai and shuriken, so I had to make them out of carbon fiber instead of steel. Sato said. What's the difference? Mitsumi asked. Carbon fiber is five times stronger than steel, twice as stiff, lighter and more resistant to heat, just in case you want to channel fire chakra through it. However, this is a rare kind of carbon fiber, since it's also able to handle chakra a lot better than chakra metal, so these will last a lot longer. Sato said and handed one to Naruto. Whoa. It really is lighter. Naruto said and handed it Mitsumi. Wow. It is. Mitsumi said. I believe you wanted to try the sword. Sato said. You're right. Naruto said and they walked to the sword. This is the sword. It doesn't look like much. Mitsumi said. Well, here goes nothing. Naruto said and tried pulling out the sword, but it wouldn't move. Oh. Looks like you can't have it. Mitsumi said and laughed. I was just kidding. Naruto said and removed the sword easily. W what? How? Mitsumi asked. There's something on the sword that pricked my hand and took some blood. Must be a blood seal on the sword that was set to activate when me or you touched the sword. Naruto said. Does she know? Sato asked. Just found out. Naruto said as he was checking out his sword. That's right. Mitsumi said. I see. Now, I have the scabbard for you in the back. Sato said and went to the back. What's a Chikudo? Mitsumi asked. That's the kind of sword this is. Naruto said. I knew that. Mitsumi said. Sure you did. Naruto said. Whatever. Hey, maybe he can make you some of dad's kunai made from that same carbon stuff or whatever it's called. Mitsumi said. That's a good idea. Look at you being all smart. Naruto said as they walked to the counter. I was supposed to be Kinoichi of the year, but somehow Sakura won. Mitsumi said. Don't worry. I'm sure that doesn't matter in the real world. Naruto said. He's right. From what I've been told about the Sakura girl, she doesn't train at all. We had a similar problem back in my ninja days. We had a girl just like Sakura and she was killed on her first mission outside of the village. However, you'll be fine. Sato said and gave Naruto the scabbard for his sword, who was the guy she was always going after. Mitsumi asked. Take a wild guess. Sato said. Dad. Naruto and Mitsumi said at the same time. That's correct. Sato said. Should have known. Naruto said. You two go on and enjoy your day. You deserve it. Sato said. Thanks. Naruto said and they left the shop. Well, I need to go celebrate with the Ichirikus. Mitsumi said. I need to get home and pack. Naruto said. Pack for what? Mitsumi asked. Now that I'm a ninja and technically an adult, I can get my own place. I'll be in the same building, but a few doors down. Naruto said. What about this big sister of yours that I've never met? Mitsumi asked. She knows and you've never met her because she's always out on missions. I'm sure you'll meet her eventually. One of them is a bit weird to say the least. Naruto said. She can't be that bad. Mitsumi said. Yeah. If you say so. I'll see you tomorrow. Naruto said. Wait. Mitsumi said. What is it? Naruto asked and she gave him a hug. I just want to say thank you for everything and keeping me safe. Mitsumi said. No problem. Naruto said and left. Kurenai's apartment. I'm back. Naruto said. Well, look who finally decided to show up. Anko said. What are you doing here? Naruto asked. What? I can't come and see my cute little brother. Anko asked. She hid the dango behind the two boxes on the top shelf, concealed by a Naruto said. Thanks. Anko said and ran to the refrigerator. So, what are you doing today? Naruto asked. M.M. Got some people to interrogate. Hopefully I can use all my tools this time. Last three people gave up in five minutes. Anko said, as she was stuffing her face with dango. Then instead of jumping into the whole crazy act, try off slow, then work your way up. Naruto said. Meh. 
Not my kind of thing. Anko said, apparently. Naruto mumbled. So, how long has the academy been out? Anko asked. I don't know. Maybe an hour. Why? Gonna stalk Aruka? Naruto asked. It's not stalking. It's called surveillance. Anko said. Whatever. Naruto said. Hey, you graduated and got the headband, right? Anko asked. Yeah. Naruto said. Show me what's under the mask. Anko said. Fine. Underneath this mask. Is another mask. Naruto said and pulled his mask down to reveal another one. Are you kidding me? I've been attacking you for your whole life just to see another mask. Anko yelled. Well, not many people have seen me without the mask. Only my mom, the old man, Kurinai and Itsumi have seen me without it. Naruto said. But I'm your sister. I should see it too. Anko said and Naruto sighed. Fine. First, do you know who my father is? Naruto asked. No. Kurinai does, but she won't tell me. Anko said. Well, you're about to find out. Naruto said and removed his mask showing his real face. Holy shit. You're hot. I mean I know I'm your sister, but damn. I see why you wear the mask. Anko said. Don't tell anybody. Don't even give a hint that I'm cute. Naruto said. You're not cute. You're fucking hot. Anyway, I won't tell anybody. So, the fourth, huh? I'm guessing you know Natsumi is your sister. Anko said. How'd you know she was the fourth Hokage's daughter? Naruto asked. Please. A redeed girl with blue eyes, a heavy Raymond addiction, a habit of screaming about becoming, a temper that scares adults and hair splitting into nine pieces when she's angry. If that doesn't scream Kashina then I don't know what would. Anko said. Well, when you put it like that I guess it is kind of obvious. Naruto said. I can't wait to meet her and mess with her. Anko said. That is something I don't mind waiting for. Anyway, when will Kurinai get back? Naruto asked. She should be back by tonight. Why? Anko asked. Well, I'm moving out today. My apartment is down the hall, and I wanted to let her know which one it is. Naruto said. That is right. Why are you moving out again? Anko asked. Other than the fact that I'm technically an adult. Well, Kurinai and Asuma don't know what a silencing seal is, and I get tired of hearing you drunk crying over Aruka whenever he looks at another girl for five seconds. I just need my own space, and I've seen you drunk passed out on the couch naked way too many times. Naruto said. I didn't see you complaining. Anko said. You threw kunai at my head. I didn't have time to complain. I was too busy trying to live. Naruto said. Sorry about that. Anko said. Why don't you stay at your own place anyway? Naruto asked. It gets lonely sometimes, and I know Kurinai doesn't mind if I crash here. Anko said. What about you Gao? Naruto asked. No. Hey it costs too damn much for me. Anko said. Well, maybe you should just ask Aruka out on a date. Naruto said. Why the hell would I do that? Anko asked. Because you love him. It's just simple, will you go out with me? Drop the crazy chick act for once and be a lady. Naruto said. What if he rejects me? Anko asked as she slumped into the couch. Then I'll buy you a year's supply of dango and red bean soup. Naruto said. Deal. Anko said and vanished. Next day. As of today, everyone in this classroom is now considered a ninja. What comes next will be far more difficult. You're only a genin first level ninja. All the genin would usually be grouped into three man squads, but since we have an odd number of students that graduated, one team will have four genin. Each squad will be led by a. Any questions before I call out the teams? Hiruka asked. Where's Mizuki sensei? Sakura asked. Unfortunately, Mizuki will not be part of the academy anymore. He's being sent to a different division. Hiruka said. Or like prison. Why would he try to steal the forbidden scroll? Hiruka thought. Well, someone's going to be in Sasuke's group. I wonder who. Ino said. I don't know. Sakura said and glared at Ino. The group. That'll only slow me down. Sasuke thought. Hmm. Let's see. My ideal team would be me, Naruto and maybe Ino. I mean we all get along. As long as Sakura isn't on my team, I'll be fine I guess. Natsumi thought and missed the first six squads that were announced. Squad 7. Natsumi Yuzumaki, Sakura Haruno, Sasuke Ichiha and Naruto Ichiha. Haruka said. Damn it. Why is she on my team? She's useless. Natsumi thought. I won't be on Naruto's team. Hinata thought. Next, Squad 8. Hinata Hayuga, Kiba Inuzuka and Shino Aburam. Haruka said. Woohoo. Oh yeah. I've got the best squad. Kiba said. Ugh. How did Sakura get in Sasuke's group? Ino asked. I don't get it. What do you see in a guy like that? He's not so special. Shikamaru said. You are so beyond clueless, Shikamaru. Don't you get it? Ino asked. Enough. Squad 10. Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara and Choji Akimichi. Those are all the squads. You have an hour to do as you want until your team shows up. Try to be back in 45 minutes. Haruka said and left. Hey Naruto. Want to try some of my lunch my mom prepared for me? Ino asked. The day's the day I see what he's hiding under that mask. 
Nino thought. He's already gone. Natsumi said. When did he leave? Nino asked. As soon as our team was announced. Natsumi said. Damn it. He will show me what's under his mask. Nino said. Why do you want to see what's under his mask so badly? He's probably ugly. Sakura said. I can tell you right now that he's not ugly. Natsumi said. How do you know? Sakura asked. He showed me what he looks like underneath it. He looks better than Sasuke, that's for sure. Natsumi said. You take that back. Sakura yelled. Can you stop yelling? Your voice is annoying. Natsumi said. Your face is annoying. Sakura said. I look better than you. You big foreheaded freak. Natsumi said. You take that back. Sakura yelled. Make me. Natsumi yelled. Sakura jumped at Natsumi with the intent to hit her, but she slipped off the desk and was headed towards Natsumi face first. Natsumi smirked and then used the substitution on an unsuspecting Kiba, causing everyone to gasp. Kiba was on the floor with Sakura on top of him, and they were kissing. However, Kiba was in the better position if you asked him because of the placement of his hand which was on one of Sakura's breasts. Sakura got over her shock and screamed at the top of her lungs. Kiba you pervert. Sakura yelled and started to beat him up. Wow, Sakura. I didn't know you liked Kiba. Natsumi said. Shut up. Sakura yelled. Hokage office. Well, there goes Natsumi. She's always causing trouble. Hiruzen said. Looks like you've got your hands full, Kakashi. Luckily you have Naruto on your team to keep her calm. Asuma said. Is that the most promising student, Sasuke Ichiha? I asked. Yes. Hiruzen said. He's one of the two survivors from the Ichiha clan. Kurinai said. That's right. However, I don't believe he's the most promising student in the class. Hiruzen said. What makes you say that? He's naturally gifted and is the rookie of the year. I said. That may be true, but there's another in that class who could have easily taken that title if he actually showed up to class. Hiruzen said. Naruto. Kurinai said. The half-breed. I asked. She's telling the truth. He trains non-stop and the only time he's not training is when he wants to take a break for a few days. Asuma said. I'm guessing the days he wasn't training were the days he decided to go to the academy. I said. That is correct. However, he was always late to class. Kurinai said. Why was he late? Asuma asked. He claimed to be walking, but the Inuzuka dogs would be trying to kill Black Cat, so then he'd always have to take the long way around. Kurinai said and everyone looked at Kakashi. What? It sounds like a reasonable excuse to me. Kakashi said. Of course it does. Kurinai mumbled. You all have your teams. It's time to go and meet them. You have until tomorrow to test them and report back to me. Hiruzen said and all the vanished. Ninja Academy. So, what do you think of my team, Ino? Natsumi asked. I wish I was on your team instead of Sakura. At least she has another girl to talk to. I'm stuck with lazy bones and the bottomless pit. Ino said. I highly doubt Sakura and I would talk. If we do, it'll probably be an argument. Natsumi said. Well, hopefully we can get this day over with and go shopping. Ino said. Shopping for what? I'm already stocked up on ninja supplies. Natsumi said. Her cute dresses and stuff. Sure we're ninja, but we have time off. I'm sure we'll get to go out and have fun. Ino said. I guess you're right. Hey, Hinata, do you want to come with us? I'm sure you can find something to impress Naruto. Natsumi said and Hinata blushed. I, I don't know what you am mean. Hinata said and started to poke her fingers together. Why would any girl want to date him? He's just a half-breed. Kiba said. A half-breed that constantly kicked all of your asses without even trying during a spat. Oh and I also don't lick dog ass. Naruto said. When did you get back? Natsumi asked. Five minutes ago. Naruto said. Where did you go? Ino asked. The place in order. I only came back because I thought our instructor would be here by now. Naruto said and stood up. Now where are you going? Natsumi asked. To talk to my mom. Naruto said. Oh. Natsumi said. You shouldn't leave. Our sensei could be here any minute. Sakura said. I'm sure my reputation has already gotten around. Whoever it is should expect me to be late. Naruto said and left. Itsumi, how long has it been since his mom died? Ino asked. She died right before the Ichiha massacre. Naruto only survived because he isolated himself from everybody. Natsumi said. How'd she die? Ino asked. From what I know she had a disease that none of our doctors could cure. All they figured out was that it wasn't contagious. She died right in his arms. Natsumi said. That's so sad. I don't know what I'd do if I lost any of my parents. Ino said and then the door opened as two people came in the room. Who are you two? Natsumi asked. I'm Kurinai Yuhi. Teammate, come with me. Kurinai said. Wow. Our instructor is such a babe. Kiba said as they were walking out the door. Yes, I'll have to beat that pervertedness out of him. Kurinai thought. I'll see you later, Asuma. Kurinai said. Yeah. I'm Asuma Saratobi. Team 10, come with me. Asuma said. Finally. I'll see you later, Natsumi. Ino said as they left the room. I. Now, where's our sensei? 
Mitsumi asked three hours later. Ah. He's late. Mitsumi said. Mitsumi, just sit down. Sakura said. I don't want to. How come our teacher's the only one that's late? Mitsumi asked. You aren't this upset when Naruto's late. Sakura said. Well, of course not. He's known for being late, but our instructor should have been here. Mitsumi said and grabbed an eraser before propping it up in the door. Hey. What are you doing? Sakura asked. That's what he gets for coming late. Mitsumi said. You're asking for trouble. You know you shouldn't do that. Sakura said. Blah blah blah. You're not my mother. Mitsumi said. Our teacher is a. An elite ninja. You think he's going to fall for that? Sasuke asked. Sasuke's right. You're so clueless, Mitsumi. Sakura said. Somebody came to the door making them stare at it and wait with anticipation to see who it was. A head of silver hair poked its way into the door and was hit upside the head with the eraser, causing each of them to have different reactions. I got him. He fell for it. Mitsumi said and started to laugh at him. I'm sorry, sensei. I tried to stop her, but she wouldn't listen. I'd never do anything like that. Sakura said. He actually fell for that cheap trick. Is this guy really a Sasuke thought? Hmm. How can I put this? My first impression of this group. You're a bunch of idiots. I'm Kakashi Haddock, your instructor. Meet me on the roof in two minutes. Kakashi said. What about Naruto? He's not here yet. Sakura said. He's on the roof already. Kakashi said. Rooftop, alright. Introduce yourselves one at a time. Kakashi said. Introduce ourselves. What are we supposed to say? Sakura asked. Things you like. Things you hate. Dreams for the future. Your hobbies. Things like that. Kakashi said. How about you go first? We already know each other, but we don't know you. Mitsumi said. Me? I'm Kakashi Haddock. Things I like and things I hate. I don't feel like telling you that. My dreams for the future. Never really thought about it. I have lots of hobbies. Kakashi said. All he really told us was his name. Sakura said. Okay. Your turn. You on the right. You're first. Kakashi said. I'm Mitsumi Uzumaki. What I like is my brother, Raymond, training, my red hair and pranking people. My dislikes are perverts, rapists, dickheads, douchebags, kiba, people who call me tomato, and people who can't tell the difference between water and the cup it's in. My hobbies are pranking and training. My dream for the future is to become one Mitsumi said. She's different from what I expected. Kakashi thought. Next, Kakashi said. I'm Sakura Haruno. What I like. Uh. I mean the person I like is. Uh. My hobby is. Uh. My dream for the future is. Sakura said and let out a squeal. What do you hate? Kakashi asked. Mitsumi. Sakura yelled. This my ass, Pinky. Mitsumi yelled. Girls her age are more interested in boys than ninja training. Kakashi thought. All right, next up. Kakashi said. My name is Sasuke Chia. I hate a lot of things and I don't particularly like anything. What I have is not a dream because I will make it a reality. I'm going to restore my clan and destroy a certain someone. Sasuke said. Sheesh. Lighten up a bit. Mitsumi thought. Sasuke is so hot. Sakura thought. Just as I thought. Kakashi thought. Alright. Last one. Kakashi said. My name is Naruto Chia. My likes, I have a few of them. Dislikes, well everything I dislike is dead, except for a certain root problem and tyrants. My dream for the future. I guess get married and start a family. Naruto said. So, you want to restore the Uchiha clan as well. Kakashi said. I just said everything I dislike is dead. Why would I want to restore that clan? My family may have the Sharingan, but we won't be associated with the Uchiha clan. I plan on taking my father's name soon and dropping the Uchiha name for good. Naruto said. What did you say, you pathetic half-breed? Sasuke asked. You heard me. Why should I care about the Uchiha clan when they didn't give a damn about me? Isolating me and my mother just because she was a part of the clan's fetish for keeping it in the family. The only other clan that is okay with incest is the Hyuga clan. Naruto Sai and Sasuke tried to attack him, but Naruto countered and pinned him to the ground. Let go of me. Nobody will disrespect the Uchiha clan as long as I'm around. Sasuke said. Look at you. Weak and pathetic. The so-called prodigy of the Uchiha clan. A name that was given to you by ninja and civilians who kiss your ass to feed your ego. You're nothing compared to me and don't forget it. Look at you, squirming underneath my foot. Pathetic. You're lucky Makoto is your mother or I would have killed you and sent you to live with the rest of that pathetic clan. This is your only warning. Naruto said and released Sasuke. What the hell was that? He's never acted like this before. Mitsumi thought. How dare he touch Sasuke like that? Sakura thought. Maybe it was a bad idea putting them on the same team. Kakashi thought. Alright. Well, each of you are unique and have your own ideas. We'll have our first mission tomorrow. Kakashi said. What kind of mission? Mitsumi asked. It's a task that the five of us will do together. Kakashi said. What is it? Mitsumi asked. A survival exercise. Kakashi said. Huh? 
survival exercise. Mitsumi asked, I thought we were supposed to have a real mission, not more practice. We already did this stuff in the academy. Sakura said, you and Ino both failed that part of the academy. Mitsumi said, shut up. Sakura yelled, I mean. Mitsumi yelled and they glared at each other, this is not like your previous training. Kakashi said, then what kind of training is it? Mitsumi asked, if I tell you, then you're not going to like it. Kakashi said, tell us. Mitsumi said, fine. Usually out of the 27 graduates, but this year it's 28. Usually only 9 will be accepted as a genin, however thanks to the odd number of graduates this year, it'll be 10 that will be accepted as a genin. The other 18 will be weeded out and sent back to the academy. This is a make or break it pass fail test, and the chance that you'll fail is nearly 70%. See? Didn't I tell you that you wouldn't like it? Kakashi asked, that's complete bullshit. What the hell was the point of us graduating? Mitsumi asked, sheesh. The mouth of this girl. Kakashi thought, that was just to select candidates who may or may not become genin. That's how it is. I decide whether you pass or fail. Meet me at training ground 7 at 5 am and bring your ninja gear. Kakashi said, well, I'm not gonna fail this test. My mom and dad would be so disappointed in me. That and I have to become one Mitsumi thought, if I fail, I'll be separated from Sasuke. This is a trial of love. Sakura thought, that's it. You're dismissed. Oh and don't eat breakfast or else you'll puke. Kakashi said and went up and smoke. Hey, Sasuke. Maybe we should train together. Sakura said and Sasuke just walked away. Want to train with us, Sakura? Mitsumi asked. If you're gonna be there then no. Sasuke, wait up. Sakura said and ran off. Stupid fangirl. Ready to train? Mitsumi asked. Sure. Naruto said. Oh and I've got this kick-ass secret technique that boosts my speed and power. I've got to show you. Mitsumi said. Let's go then. Naruto said and grabbed her shoulder then vanished. Chapter 4. Bell Test. A trip to Suna. After training all night, Naruto and Mitsumi arrived at training ground 7 ready for their test. Mitsumi showed Naruto her secret technique and he was a bit worried, but she showed him that she could handle it with no problem. They arrived at 7.30 since Naruto explained to her that he found out Kakashi was always 3 hours late like him, so they agreed to show up at 7.30 after eating breakfast. Sakura tried yelling at them, but they both ignored her and sat down. Sasuke glared at Naruto, but he wasn't even paying attention to Sasuke since he was reading the ceiling book left by his father. 30 minutes later, Kakashi finally arrived. Morning, everyone. Ready for your first day? Kakashi asked. You're late. Sakura yelled. Well, a black cat crossed my path, so I had to take the long way. Kakashi said. Does this cat have a scar over its left eye and two different colored eyes? Naruto asked. In fact it does. Kakashi said and Mitsumi just looked at him. See? I was telling the truth. That's the cat the Inuzuka dogs keep trying to kill. Naruto said and put his book away. I've heard about you. Nice mask. Kakashi said. Thanks. Naruto said. What the hell is going on? Mitsumi asked. Never mind that. Let's get started. Kakashi said and set a clock on a stump. What's the clock for? Sakura asked. It's set for noon. Your assignment is very simple. You just have to take these bells from me. That's all there is to it. If you can't get them by noon, you go without lunch. You'll be tied to those posts and you'll watch while I eat my lunch in front of you. Kakashi said. So that's why. Sasuke thought. He told us not to eat breakfast to make it harder on us. Sakura thought and then realized something. Wait a minute. There's four of us and only three bells. How come you have an odd number of bells? Sakura asked. Well, that way, at least one of you will end up tied to a post and ultimately disqualified for failing to complete the mission. That one will go back to the academy. Then again, all four of you could flunk out as well. You can use any weapon, including shuriken. If you're not prepared to kill me, you won't be able to take the bells. Kakashi said. Those weapons are too dangerous, sensei. Sakura said. Yeah. You couldn't even dodge that eraser. Mitsumi said and laughed at him. The loudest ones are usually the weakest of the bunch. Kakashi said. Well it's a good thing Sakura is the loudest person in the village. Mitsumi said. Sheesh. She looks like her mother and acts just like her. However, Mitsumi is a bit more brash than Lady Kashina. Kakashi thought. When I say start, you can begin. Kakashi said and Natsumi was about to charge at him with a kunai, but she was stopped as Kakashi twisted her arm and had her holding her own kunai at her neck. He's so fast. I didn't even see it. Sakura thought. So this is a Sasuke thought. He was holding back. Naruto thought. Don't be in such a hurry. I didn't say start yet, but it's good that you came at me with the full intention of destroying me, so how can I say this? I'm actually starting to like you guys. Get ready. Start. Kakashi said and they jumped into the forest except for Naruto who used a shunshin. Ninjas must know how to conceal their movements and hide effectively. Kakashi said and then turned around to see Natsumi. You and me. Right now. 
fair and square, Cyclops. Mitsumi said, you know, compared to the others, you're a little bit weird. Kakashi said, it just means I stand out more. Being weird is a compliment. Mitsumi said and Kakashi pulled out a book, Shinobi Battle Techniques, Lesson 1. To Jutsu. Kakashi said, Mitsumi ran at Kakashi and threw a wild punch, but Kakashi easily caught it. She sent a kick to his head, but he just squatted down, and she missed. She went for a punch to his face, but he just disappeared. Don't let your enemy get behind you all the time. Kakashi said and tried the Hidden Leaf Village secret, Thousand Years of Death, but his hands went straight through Natsumi, the clone. Sakura thought, all of a sudden, multiple Natsumi shadow clones came out of the river and ran at Kakashi. Then Kakashi was grabbed from behind by Natsumi, and all of them jumped to Kakashi holding him down, while one of them went for a knockout punch, but Kakashi substituted with a log and escaped. A good tactic, but you're going to have to try harder if you want these bells. Kakashi said, and then he was struck with some shuriken, but turned into a log, he's gone again. Probably fighting Sasuke. Natsumi said, and then they heard Sakura scream, looks like that's one down. Naruto said, are you sure this will work? Natsumi asked, of course. I did some digging around last night, and he's the last remaining student from our dad's genin team. It's not a coincidence that the two of us were put on the same team with him as our squad leader. That doesn't mean he'll go easy on us though. We still need to get the bells. Naruto said, how? He's too strong for us to take him on single-handedly. Mitsumi said, that's why we're going to take him on together. Me and you by ourselves should be enough to get the bells from him. The answer to this test is teamwork. He's trying to put us against each other to get a bell, but the true purpose is to work together. Naruto said, wow. That son of a bitch was tricking us. Mitsumi said, I should really talk to the people in your building about how they talk around you. Naruto said, what? I didn't do anything wrong. They've expanded my vocabulary. Natsumi said, right. That's what you call it. Anyway, are you ready? He's on his way back and I can tell the other two are knocked out. Naruto said, yeah, I'm ready. Natsumi said as Kakashi came back with Sakura and Sasuke unconscious under his arms, so, are the two of you going to even try? Kakashi asked, sure. It's not like you weren't expecting this. You know exactly who we are. Naruto said, I hope you're ready, Cyclops. Natsumi said, alright. I'll entertain the two of you for now. Kakashi said as he tied Sasuke and Sakura to a post, I see you're taking us seriously. Mitsumi said as she cracked her knuckles, not in the slightest. Kakashi said, your funeral. Mitsumi said, don't worry, Kakashi. I'm sure you'll put that book up quicker than you think. Naruto said and unknown to them except Naruto, the other sensei plus Hiruzen came to see this test, he doesn't seem so tough. Looks like a lonely old pervert if you ask me. Mitsumi said, he's just an obstacle in our way. Nothing more. Nothing less. Naruto said, well, those were a bit of hurtful words. Kakashi said and then blocked a punch from both of them, they're fast. However, Naruto seems to have something holding back his true speed. Kakashi thought, let's teach him a lesson, Naruto. Natsumi said and her eyes turned red as she drew out some of the Nine Tails chakra, yeah. Naruto said as he activated his Sharingan and deactivated his resistance seals, oh shit. Kakashi thought, before Kakashi could make a move, Naruto and Natsumi threw a few punches at him, but he was able to block some of them, until he was overwhelmed and kicked away by Naruto. He put his book away and lifted his headband revealing a Sharingan. He was a bit embarrassed having to use it, but he was going up against Natsumi, who was using the Nine Tails Chakra a bit, and Naruto who had a fully matured Sharingan, so he didn't want to take any chances. Kakashi looked up and saw them coming towards him with a flying kick, but knocked both of them away. Naruto pulled out a kunai and challenged Kakashi himself for a bit as Natsumi was kicked away. Kakashi and Naruto traded a few punches to the shock of all the spectators, except for Hiruzen, who knew Naruto had experience from fighting off Danzo's route for the past six years. Naruto managed to get a few good hits on Kakashi before he was kicked away. Natsumi came in and started using her fighting style, which was a mixture between brawling and Wing Chun. As they were fighting, Naruto was waiting for the right moment to help Natsumi out, and it came so he threw kunai at Kakashi who knocked it away, but gave Natsumi just enough of an opening to attack. He faked a right hook that Kakashi Sharingan followed, and then hit him with an open left hand strike to the face. Kakashi jumped back as Naruto appeared a few feet behind her and looked at them. These two have tremendous teamwork and they're not even communicating. Kakashi thought, here we go, Natsumi. Naruto said as he unsealed a few Mashuriken, let's go. Natsumi said, Naruto threw the shuriken that he secretly attached ninja wire to, and then it turned into two of them, but they went right past Kakashi. Naruto pulled in the ninja wire, and then Kakashi was in the middle of a storm of shuriken. While Kakashi was trying to find a way to escape, Naruto channeled lightning chakra through the chakra strings, and basically trapped Kakashi inside of the storm of shuriken. That's a good combination, Naruto. The two of you have good teamwork. 
Mitsumi, I hope you know what you're doing with that chakra. Kakashi said, as he appeared from underneath the ground behind them, if I didn't know what I was doing I wouldn't be using it. Mitsumi said and smirked, Kakashi heard a crack, then looked at the ground and barely managed to jump out of the way from a shuriken that went up into the air. The shuriken turned into Natsumi who threw another shuriken at Kakashi, but that shuriken turned into Naruto. Kakashi quickly wrapped Naruto in some ninja wire, but to his and everyone else's shock, Naruto switched places with him. Nobody noticed Naruto activating his Manjikyu Sharingan, and without the use of his chakra, Kakashi had no choice but to take on the full force of Natsumi's punch that sent him crashing into a tree. What was that? Natsumi asked as she released the Nine Tails Chakra, a secret technique. Naruto said and deactivated his Sharingan, but then the timer went off, damn it. We didn't get the bells. Natsumi said, yes we did. Naruto said, as he held up the three bells and gave one to Natsumi, how did you get them? Natsumi asked, when I switched places with him. Naruto said, very good you two. You are the first team to get the bells. Now, since there are only three bells, who gets the last one? Kakashi asked and they threw the bells to their unconscious teammates, they can have them. Sakura would yell her heart out as she failed, which would cause the Inuzuka dogs to lose their minds, and Sasuke would bitch and complain to the council like he always does when something doesn't go his way. Naruto said, yeah. We know the old man doesn't want to deal with his bullshit. Natsumi said and Kakashi sweat dropped, who taught her to speak like that? Kakashi thought, well, team 7 passes. I'll go and let you know that you passed. Kakashi said, he already knows. Naruto said and pointed to the onlookers, when did they get here? Natsumi asked, right before we started to fight. Naruto said, well, you two are certainly a good team. Hiruzen said, did you expect anything less? Natsumi asked, well, how did they do, Kakashi? Hiruzen asked, honestly, I don't see how Sakura passed, Sasuke is good for age, but relies too much on himself, and I don't need to say anything about these two. Kakashi said, then it looks like team 7, 8 and 10 pass. Hiruzen said, what about the ones that failed? Natsumi asked, they're going into the reserves unless they no longer want to be a ninja. Hiruzen said, I did it. I'm a ninja. Natsumi said and started jumping around, however, I'd like to make a recommendation. Kakashi said, what would that be? Hiruzen asked, I'd like to recommend Naruto for a promotion to special genin. Kakashi said, what makes you say that? Asuma asked, yeah. It's been quite some time since we've had a special genin. Hiruzen said, what's a special genin? Natsumi asked, it's for a new genin that has the skills of A, but needs the field experience to get promoted to. Hiruzen said, does that mean I don't have to do those stupid D rank missions? Naruto asked, yes. You'll mainly do C rank and B rank missions. Hiruzen said, I'll take it. Naruto said, wait. We were supposed to be together. We can't do that if you get a head start. Natsumi said, don't worry. I won't take the promotion unless you're involved. Naruto said, the only way for that to happen is if she takes the exams in six months. Hiruzen said, then that's when I'm taking my promotion. Naruto said, congratulations, Naruto. The only person to get promoted this fast was the fourth. Hiruzen said, hey. Why am I tied to a post? Sakura asked, you got your ass handed to you. Natsumi said, shut up. Stupid tomato. Sakura yelled, the fuck did you just call me? Natsumi yelled and her hair split into nine pieces as she walked toward Sakura, aren't you going to stop her? Kurunai asked, why me? Naruto asked, because you're the only person in the village who can stop her. Kurunai said, that doesn't mean I have to do it all the time. Naruto said, Naruto, I'd rather not have a dead genin in less than a week of having a team. Just calm her down. Kakashi said, fine. Natsumi, how about some celebratory ramen at Ichirikus? Naruto asked, deal. Natsumi yelled and grabbed Naruto before running off leaving a cloud of dust, seriously? That's all it takes. Asuma asked, no. They have this little competition going on, and I believe they're tied at 35 wins each. This is going to be another challenge of theirs. Kurunai said, my money is on Natsumi. She's the defending queen of gluttony. Asuma said, that's a thing. Kakashi asked, oh yes. Their competitions bring the Ichirikas a ton of money. Hiruzen said, how do you know about that? Asuma asked, I may or may not have placed a few bets there myself. Hiruzen said, shame on you, old man. Naruto said, what are you doing here? I thought you left. Kurunai said, I'm a shadow clone. The boss wants to know if he's still part of Team 7. Clone Naruto said, yes. He's still part of Team 7. Hiruzen said, thanks old man. The clone said went up in smoke, Akashi, free your remaining students and then I'll see you all for your first missions. Hiruzen said and left with his. Two months later, Naruto was returning from another C-rank mission, and it was the 12th C-rank mission he's been on in the past two months. Bandit eliminations and escort missions were all he went on, but he was thankful he didn't have to do any D-rank missions. 
he was quickly becoming a favorite to have on missions, since he knew to relax and not be so serious all the time which was good for his teammates. Even by the mask and the way he carried himself, a lot of people thought he was like Kakashi or arrogant like Sasuke, but he was different. Yo, Naruto. Do you mind giving the mission report? I need to get back to gate duty with Izumo. Kitetsu said, sure. I'll see you later. Naruto said and vanished. Mission office, yo. I'm back old man. Naruto said as he entered the office. Naruto, don't you know how to knock? Kurinai asked as she was in the room getting a mission for teammate. Only on you and Anko's door. Mission complete, old man. Naruto said. H hi, and Naruto. Hinata meekly said from behind Shino. Hmm? Oh hey Shino. How do you make your voice sound like that? Naruto asked and everyone sweat dropped. He can't be serious. Kurinai thought. Hello Naruto. However, that was not me. It was Hinata who said that. Shino said. Who's Hinata? Naruto asked. She's in our class, idiot. Kiba said. I went to class 10 times a month and sometimes I was asleep. If she didn't talk to me, then I would know her. Anyway, mission complete, old man. Naruto said. Hey. Show some respect to them Kiba said. Shut up. Stupid mutt. Naruto said. Gurunai, you have your missions for the day. You're dismissed. Hiruzen said. Thank you. Come on, teammate. After these two missions, we have training. Kurinai said and they left. How did the mission go, Naruto? Hiruzen asked. Not bad. We cleared out the bandits with no problem. Kitetsu went back to his gate duty. Naruto said. I see. Since it's still early, how would you like a B-rank delivery mission? Hiruzen asked. Why is a delivery mission listed as a B-rank mission? Naruto asked. Because this goes straight to the Kazakiage. Typically I would send a two-man team of, but you're as strong as two combined from what I've heard from your missions and your test against Kakashi. Hiruzen said. I guess you're right. What's so important about this document? Naruto asked. It's an invitation for the exams that start in a few months. I've already sent letters to the other villages, but sooner. This shouldn't take you any longer than a week to accomplish. Hiruzen said. You got it. Naruto said and pulled out a book. A new book. Which one is it this time? Hiruzen asked. It's on how to create a I want my own signature for myself. Naruto said. I see. I cannot wait to see what you come up with. Hiruzen said. I'll see you later. Remember, keep that seat warm for Natsumi. Naruto said and vanished. It's hard to forget. Hiruzen said. Those two will be the future of the village and the leaders of the next generation to come. Hiruzen thought. Naruto. As Naruto was walking through the Konoha forest on his way to Suna, he was reading his book intently and was already thinking of a way to create for himself. He wanted it to be a fire type, but he had to work on his fire manipulation first. He kept his sensory ability on high as he didn't want to get ambushed, and then out of the corner of his eye, he saw a puff of smoke. Being curious he took a detour to see what it was and was shocked to say the least. He was looking at what appeared to be a wounded dragon that came up to his waist. He used what medical knowledge he had and healed the dragon. There you go. Naruto said. Thanks. Who are you? The bird asked. You're a summoning creature. Naruto said. Exactly. The dragon said. Well, the name is Naruto Uchiha. What happened to you? Naruto asked. Nice to meet you Naruto. I'm Comet. To answer your question, I was injured by a snake on my way to find a summoner for the dragon contract since our last summoner died a few years ago. Manda started a war many years ago with some of the summoning creatures. Comet said. Who's Manda? Naruto asked. He's the boss of the snake clan. He started a war between the dragons, toads, snakes, slugs over 20 years ago. The toads, dragons and slugs are allied, but Manda ruined the reputation of the snake clan and is currently trying to get rid of us. We've lost some good dragons due to this war and we want to stop it. Comet said. The snakes sound like they are very powerful. Naruto said. They are, but their strength isn't what makes this difficult. A dragon and toad could easily defeat a snake, but they have the ability to sneak around undetected and that's how they've been killing us off. Comet said. I see. If you're in the middle of a war why come look for a summoner then? Naruto asked. Lady Catalina is the summoning boss for the dragons, and he thought we'd be stronger if we had a summoner. Comet said. This Manda must be an idiot to start a war with three different summoning clans. Anyway, I'm kind of on a mission and need to get going. Naruto said. You're a ninja the Comet asked. Yeah. I'm from Konoha. Naruto said and pointed at his headband. Do you want to be the new dragon summoner? We could use a good ally like you. Comet said and then a puff of smoke went off revealing a dragon the size of the tree surrounding them. Comet, what are you doing? The dragon asked and it was a feminine voice. My apologies, Lady Catalina. I was doing my mission to locate our new summoner and then I was attacked by a snake. I was going to heal up and return, but this ninja healed me. Comet said. Is this true, ninja? Catalina asked. Yes. Naruto Uchiha, pleasure to meet you. Naruto said and bowed. Naruto. Tell me, what is your mother's name? Catalina asked. Sari Uchiha. 
Why? Naruto asked, it is an honor to finally meet her hatchling. I am Catalina. I was your mother's personal summons, and now I am the boss of the dragon clan. Had I known you were still alive, I would have come to you sooner. Catalina said, my mom never mentioned she had a summoning contract. Naruto said, I see, but it is true. She was the very first summoner of this specific contract. Harper said, can he be our summoner? Comet asked, I have no problems with that. Allying with Kanoha again will be good for us. Catalina said and then a summoning scroll appeared at his feet. Not to be rude, but I'm in the middle of a mission right now. What should I do? Naruto asked. Prick your finger and sign them in blood. You'll need to make a handprint as well underneath your name. Comet will be your personal summons, but he's due to start training so he won't be available for some time. Catalina said. Awesome. Comet said. There. Now what? Naruto asked. Now, you can continue with your mission. If you are traveling a long distance, summon one of us. We have some dragons that are mainly transportation summoning creatures. Catalina said and went up in smoke with Comet. Well, I guess I won't have to walk to Suna. Naruto said and went through hand signs. Summoning. Greetings, Naruto. I am Dash. How may I be of service? Dash asked he was a falcon the size of a house. Can you take me to Suna? Naruto asked. Of course. Just hold on. I am one of the fastest of the dragon clan. Dash said, as Naruto hoped on, alright. I'm ready. Naruto said and Dash flew off like he was shot out of a cannon, Suna, the gate guards at Suna were relaxing as the sun was shining right on top of them. They weren't expecting anybody today, so imagine their surprise when a huge dust cloud was coming straight towards them. They went on guard and readied themselves for an attack. They were shocked to see a huge dragon stop and then a person jump off, halt. State your name and business for visiting Suna. A guard said, oh right. I'm Naruto Ichiha and I'm here to deliver a message to the Kazakiage directly from our Hokage. Naruto said, you're a bit early. We weren't expecting you for a few more days. The guard said, I caught a ride. Naruto said and pointed at Dash. I shall return to the summoning world, Naruto. Dash said and went up in smoke, very well. You may enter. The guard said, thanks. Naruto said and walked into the village, you saw the dragon, right? One of the guards asked, yeah. The other guard said, as he was walking around, Naruto noticed people would stare at him and figured it was because he wasn't from around here. He was looking around and noticed a few shops that sold ninja gear and decided he'd look into them after he delivered his message to the Kazakiage. As he was walking, he noticed somebody was following him, but he ignored it for now and decided to deal with it later. He reached the cage tower and went up to the secretary. Excuse me. Naruto said, yes. How may I help you? She asked, I'm here from Kanoha to deliver a message to the Kazakiage. Naruto said, you're a few days early, but he's available. Right this way. The secretary said and led him to a door before knocking, enter. A male voice said, Lord Kazakiage, the Kanoha messenger has arrived. She said, he's early. The Kazakiage said, I had a ride. Naruto said, very well. What is it the Hokage has for me? The Kazakiage asked, it's an invitation to the exams in a few months. Naruto said and gave him the scroll, I see. Very well. You will see me there. Now, you should seek shelter as we are expecting a sandstorm soon. After that you must leave. The Kazakiage said as he wrote a response and gave Naruto the scroll, sure. Naruto said and bowed before leaving, Naruto, where should I go now? Naruto asked himself. He was walking around the village and once again he was being followed. He was walking around not paying attention and knocked somebody to the ground. Hey. Watch where you're going. A girl said. Sorry about that. Naruto said and helped her up. Yeah you better be. The girl said. You don't have to be such a bitch about it. I apologized and helped you up. The least you could do is say thank you. Naruto said, excuse me. Do you know who I am? The girl asked, no and frankly I don't care. As far as I know, you're a spoiled girl with no manners. Naruto said, I am the daughter of the Kazakiage. She said, so? Naruto asked, that's it. That's all you have to say. She asked bewildered, yeah. I mean I'm not even from here. Is everybody rude like you? Naruto asked, I'm not rude. I'm basically royalty and I've kinda grown accustomed to people treating me like that. My name is Tamari. Tamari said, Naruto Uchiha. Naruto said, what's Kanoha doing here? Tamari asked, I'm not a. I'm an elite genin, and I had to give your father a letter for the exams in a few months. Naruto said, an elite genin? What's that? Tamari asked, it's a new genin that has the skills of a, but needs the field experience to get promoted to. Naruto said, wow. So, will you be taking the exams? Tamari asked, yeah I'm still taking them. Naruto said, isn't that cheating? Tamari asked, not really. I'm not a, I just have the strength to fight a Naruto said. How old are you anyway? Tamari asked. 13. You? Naruto asked. 14. Tamari said. Are you a Naruto asked. No. 
I wanted to be on a team with my brothers so I waited two years before I entered the academy. I'm the oldest. My brother Kankuro is your age, and my brother Gara is 12. Tamari said, cool. So, do you know where a hotel is? I need to find somewhere to stay for a couple days. Naruto said, you can stay at my place with me and my brothers. Tamari said, we just met and you're already taking me home. Wow, this is so unexpected. You never even took me to dinner. Naruto said and Tamari blushed, w what I it's not like that. Tamari said, I know. I'm just messing with you. Naruto said, then maybe I can show you around. Tamari said, get a hold of yourself, Tamari. Tamari thought, like a date. Naruto asked, no. I mean yes. I mean no. Tamari said, how about we agree that it's a date and in return, I'll take you out on a date if you're at the exams. Sounds fair. Naruto asked, sure. Now, come on. Tamari said and grabbed his hand, wow. Holding my hand already. You move fast. Naruto said, shut up. Tamari said and blushed again. As they were walking through the village, everyone was staring at Tamari because she was holding hands with a boy and she's never done that before. While Naruto was getting glared at by the boys, Tamari was receiving some glares of her own from the girls who were watching Naruto once he stepped foot in the village. Tamari stayed silent while Naruto was just looking around at everything until they came to a stop. Where are we? Naruto asked. It's a restaurant. They sell my favorite foods here. Tamari said as they walked in. Lady Tamari, welcome. Oh. Who is this? A boyfriend. The waitress teased and Tamari blushed. No. He's a genin from Kanoha. He was on a mission and we bumped into each other. I decided to show him around. Tamari said. Then why are you still holding his hand? She asked. Because they're smooth as a baby's bottom. Naruto said. Charming. I'm Mei. Nice to meet you. Mei said. Naruto. Naruto said. So, would you like a private booth or something out in the open? Mei asked. Something out in the open. Tamari said. Sorry, but we're filled up. Our open tables are reserved. What a shame. Looks like you'll have to eat in a private booth. Mei said and grinned at Tamari who was glaring at her. That's fine with me. What's wrong with a private booth? Naruto asked. Follow me. Mei said and they followed her to the booth. Oh. Now I see why. Naruto said. The booth was a small table between a couch that was surrounded by a black curtain with candles on the table and a very expensive chandelier hanging over the table. The booth was in a separate room and you could see the sunset from the window. Now, what can I start you two off with to drink? Mei asked. I'll have some herbal tea. Tamari said. Same. Naruto said. Sure thing. I'll be right back. Enjoy your date. Mei said and walked away. How are you going to eat with a mask on? Tamari asked. You'd be amazed, but I'll take it off. It would be rude if I were to eat with it during our date. Naruto said. Why do you wear it anyway? Tamari asked. Well, my mom made me wear them when I was younger because of who my dad was and my father was supposed to be kept a secret until I was strong enough to defend myself. Also, I just got used to it, but I'll stop wearing it eventually. I also joke around with it. Naruto said. How? Tamari asked. Take my sister Anko for instance. She asked me if I could show her what's under the mask and when I pulled the mask down, I showed her another mask. Naruto said and Tamari laughed. You won't do that to me, would you? Tamari asked. No. It would be rude to eat with this on while I'm on a date. Naruto said. Does anybody know what you look like under the mask? Tamari asked. My mom, my sister Kurinai, Natsumi, Anko and the. You'll be the fifth person to see me without a mask. Naruto said. No way. You're not ugly are you? Tamari asked. I'll be the most sought after person in the village when I remove my mask. Naruto said. Well, then you better not disappoint me or you won't get that second date. Tamari said. Well, prepare to be. I have buck teeth and humongous lips underneath this mask. Naruto said and they laughed. Seems like your date is going well. What can I get for you two to eat? Mei asked as she placed their drinks on the table. I'll have my usual. Tamari said. I'll take some barbecue camels. Naruto said and they looked at him. Are you sure? Tamari asked. Yeah. Why? Naruto asked. That dish is enough to feed four people. Mei said. I don't see the problem. Naruto said. All right. One order of roasted chestnuts and vegetable soup for Tamari and an order of barbecue camel for Naruto. Now, are you going to be rude and eat with your mask on? Mei asked. No. I'm going to take it off. Naruto said. Show me what's underneath the mask. Mei said. Okay. Underneath this mask. Is another mask. Pretty cool, right? Naruto asked as he showed Mei another mask and her eye twitched. What's under that mask? Mei asked. Another mask. Naruto said and Mei stormed away from them making Tamari laugh. Okay. That's hilarious. Tamari said. Thank you. I'm sure you see why I do it. Naruto said. I do. Tamari said and drank some of her tea. So, tell me about yourself. 
Naruto said. Well, growing up as the daughter of the fourth Kazakiyaj and the sister of Gara, I had a hard time making friends as everyone was always intimidated by my family. I'm usually stoic, but you're making me be more outgoing I guess. I'm very blunt and I don't mind speaking my mind. I may be cruel, but I do value peace. Tamari said. What about your mom? Naruto asked and Tamari gained a sad look in her eyes. She died the day Gara was born. They turned him into a monster while she was still pregnant with him. Tamari said. They sealed the one-tailed beast inside of him before he was born. Naruto said. Yeah. How do you know? Tamari asked. He's been following me around the village since I got here. Naruto said. Stay away from him. He'll kill you. Tamari said. Don't worry. I can handle the one-tailed beast. Anyway, whose idea was it to do that? If you want to seal a tailed beast inside of a baby, the best time to do it is right after it's born. Naruto said. Well, that's not what they did. He's become a terror thanks to the harsh treatment and a cold-blooded killer. He can't even sleep or else Shukaku will instantly take over. Tamari said. Sounds like a faulty seal. Naruto said. Our best seal masters place the seal on him. Tamari said. Can you show me the seal? Naruto asked and Tamari pulled out book, then showed him the seal. This barely passes as a storage seal. Naruto said. How can you tell? Tamari asked. I'm a level 5 seal master, and I make my own storage seals. This thing sucks. Naruto said. Let's talk about something else. What do you do for fun in Konoha? Tamari asked. I mainly train. If not then I'll sit up on the monument to relax and watch the sunset. I only hang out with my Natsumi and Ino, but they do girly things like shopping, so those are the only two things I really do. Naruto said. Maybe if you remember the second date I'll join you on one of your activities. Tamari said and then Mei came back. Hello, lovebirds. Here's your food, Tamari and here's your food, Naruto. Enjoy. Mei said and left. This looks so good. Naruto said. Alright. Stop drooling or you'll ruin the mask. Tamari said. I'm wearing two of them. Naruto said. Whatever. Take them off like you promised. Tamari said. Oh yeah. I forgot. Naruto said and took off his masks making Tamari turn bright red. H he's hot. He's easily the best looking boy I've seen. No wonder he keeps the mask on. Sorry ladies, but he's mine. Tamari thought and never noticed she was drooling. Here. Let me help you with that. Naruto said and wiped her mouth for her. Huh? Tamari asked. You were drooling. Naruto said and Tamari came to reality. Sorry, but it's not my fault. You're freaking hot. Tamari said. Thanks for the compliment. You're not too bad on the eyes yourself. Naruto said and she blushed. Thank you. Tamari said, and then a monkey appeared. What does the old man want now? Naruto asked. He needs you to head over to Wave. Team 7 ran into some trouble, and their C-rank mission was boosted to an A-rank mission. The monkey said and gave him a scroll. Fine. It'll have to be in a few days. Suna is expecting a sandstorm in a few hours. Kazakiyaj gave me his reply. Take it back to him. Naruto said and gave the monkey a scroll. Sure thing. The monkey said and went up in smoke. A monkey? Tamari asked. It's the summons. Naruto said. You call the old man? Tamari asked. Yup. I've always called him that. Naruto said. So, an A-rank mission, huh? Tamari asked. Yeah. I guess I have to go and save their asses. Naruto said. You said you're an Ichiha, so do you have the Sharingan? Tamari asked. I don't know. You'll have to wait until the exams if you compete. Naruto said. I guess that's fair. How's your food? Tamari asked as she took a bite of hers. It was good. Naruto said. What do you mean by war? Tamari asked and then looked at his empty plate. I mean I ate it all. It was really good. Naruto said. How did you finish so quickly? Tamari asked. I'm used to eating a lot. I have a big appetite. Naruto said. I can tell. So, any specific place you want to visit? Tamari asked as she finished eating. That ninja store caught my attention. Maybe I can get some new things while I'm there. Naruto said, as he paid for the food and put his mask back on. Sure. I need to pick up my fan anyway. Tamari said. So you're a wind type user? Naruto said. Yeah. Are you a wind user? Tamari asked. Nope. Naruto said. Well, what kind do you use? Tamari asked. Can't tell you. If we fight during the exams, I don't want to give you any type of advantage. Naruto said, as they left the restaurant, I hope you're not expecting much at this store. Everyone here is mainly a wind or earth type user. Unless you have an earth chakra nature, you won't find much here. Tamari said. I just want to look inside. I never said I was going to buy something. I said maybe I can get something. Naruto said. So, what was your father like? Tamari asked. I don't know. I've never met him. Naruto said. How come? Tamari asked. He died the night of the Nine Tails attack. I was only two months old when he died. Naruto said. Sorry. I'm sure that was a tough night for everyone. Tamari said. It was. People still aren't over it. Naruto said. I would imagine so. 
I mean, people here mainly attack Gara at first because of Shukaku's actions before Gara even became a Tamari said, people fear what they do not understand. However, I'd like to talk to a tailed beast. Naruto said and Tamari stopped, why the hell would you want to do that? They're monsters. Tamari said, I don't think so. It's like I said. People fear what they don't understand. Naruto said, well, good luck doing that. Tamari said, I know. It's easier said than done. Naruto thought, thanks. Naruto said, what about your mother? Is she still around? Tamari asked, no. She died when I was seven years old from a disease that our doctors couldn't figure out. She took her last breath in my arms. Naruto said, sorry for asking. I guess that's something we have in common. Well, not the dying in your arms part, but losing a mother at a young age. Tamari said, yeah. I'm guessing it wasn't your father who raised you. Naruto said, what makes you say that? Tamari asked, whenever you mentioned him, I could tell your demeanor changed a bit. Naruto said, you're right. He's the one who gave the order to turn Gara into A. After a while when Gara was deemed unstable, he sent assassins after Gara and all of them were killed. Gara was still sane after all of that, but he completely changed after our father hired our uncle to physically and mentally hurt Gara to test his control over Shukaku. People believe that Gara killed him, but I don't believe that. Our uncle was the other person outside of me and Kankuro who Gara loved. After that night, Gara only started to care about himself. Tamari said, Sounds like your father is a dickhead. No offense. Naruto said, None taken. As for your statement that our father didn't raise us, it's true. We were left in the hands of caretakers after our mother died. He's always in the office or out doing something. We have a huge house for just the three of us. Our caretakers left when Gara became even more unstable. Tamari said, That sucks. I mean basically raising yourself and your brothers doesn't sound easy. Naruto said, It's not. I mean before you bumped into me, I never really talked to anybody except my brothers and the council members. Tamari said, Well, you can talk to me. Naruto said, You're only in the village for a few days until you have to leave. I guess I'll make it last. Tamari said, Don't worry. You'll hear from me again. Naruto said and they entered the shop, I'm gonna go get my fan. You can look around to see if you find anything you want. Tamari said. When Tamari walked away, Naruto looked around for anything he liked and noticed his options were extremely limited. He found a few lightning and fire, but that was it. After he paid for his stuff, Naruto went and stood outside to wait for Tamari, but then he came face to face with a red-haired boy who people were telling him to run away from. So, my stalker finally decided to show up. I'm guessing that you're Gara. Naruto said. I am. Gara said. So, what do you want? Naruto asked. Mother wants your blood. Gara said blankly, I see. Well, that's not going to happen. I'll see you later Gara. Naruto said, as he walked by him and placed a hand on his shoulder which shocked everyone even Gara. how did he touch me? Mother didn't protect me. Gara thought and started to follow Naruto again. Tamari just got her fan and went to find Naruto, but she couldn't find him. The only thought that came to her mind was Gara must have gotten him, but she didn't hear the usual comments about Gara killing anybody yet. She assumed he hasn't met Gara yet and he just got lost, so she kept up her search for him. Looking for me? Naruto asked, as he appeared behind her and screamed then swung her fan at him, but he ducked out of the way. What the hell is your problem? Tamari asked, what do you mean? Naruto asked, you can't just sneak up on me like that. I could have killed you. Tamari said, oh. Well. Does Tamari care about me that much? Naruto asked and rubbed her cheek causing her to blush in embarrassment, no. Let's go. Stupid pretty boy. Tamari said and mumbled that last part, I heard that. Naruto said, as they started walking, shut up. Tamari said, hey Tamari. A voice yelled out to her, hmm? What is it, Kankuro? Tamari asked, have you seen Gara?" Kankuro asked, no. I haven't seen him all day, why? Tamari asked, because people are saying he's been acting weird. They said he had some run-in with a Konoha shinobi, and the guy actually touched him without his sand reacting. Kankuro said, that would be me. Who's the girl, Tamari? Naruto asked and Tamari snickered, this is my brother, Kankuro. Kankuro, this is Naruto. He's the Konoha shinobi I'm guessing everyone was talking about. Tamari said, that's me. So, why are you wearing makeup? Naruto asked, it's not makeup. It's war paint. Kankuro said, if you say so. Naruto said, how did you survive an encounter with Gara? Tamari asked, I don't know. He said his mother wanted my blood, but I told him it's not going to happen, and then I walked away while putting my hand on his shoulder. He's been following me again. Naruto said and then sand started to blow everywhere, shit. The sandstorm's coming. We need to get home. Kankuro said, come on, Naruto. Tamari said and grabbed his hand, sure. Naruto said and followed them, has a huge mansion, this place is huge. Naruto said as he was looking around at their house, yeah. It has like 15 rooms and 8 bathrooms. 
Kankuro sighed and Naruto whistled, wow. So, where do I sleep? Naruto asked, I'll show you. Tamari said, cool. Hey, does Gara have a room? Naruto asked, yeah. Why? Kankuro asked, because I want to do him a favor. Naruto said and showed them a seal, what is it? Kankuro asked, it's a chakra suppression seal. It was created by the fourth himself to suppress the chakra of a tailed beast from leaking out. If I can set these up all around his room, then they'll prevent Shukaku from escaping while he's asleep. Gara isn't as unstable as he seems honestly from what I can tell. Naruto said, how can you say that? He kills people who get close to him. Kankuro said, he hasn't killed you or Tamari. I'm positive that he only kills if somebody attacks him, and his sand only reacts towards hostile actions towards him. If Shukaku forces his way out while he's asleep because of a faulty seal, Gara must have great mental control if he can keep the tailed beast from escaping while he's awake, since it's possible for it to happen and should have happened by now. Naruto said, then how do you know your chakra suppression seals will work? Kankuro asked, because in his book of sealing, the fourth said that he used this on the four and five tail during the third shinobi war. If it worked on them then Shukaku shouldn't be a problem. Naruto said, do it. Tamari said, Tamari. We can't trust him. He's an outsider. What if he tries to steal Shukaku from us? Kankuro asked, why the hell would I want Shukaku? I can't even seal a tailed beast away. Well, not yet at least, but I'll be able to in a few months give or take. Anyway, what do you think I'll do? Put him in my pocket and walk out? Naruto asked, I trust him, Kankuro. He was able to instantly see the problem with Gara's seal when I showed it to him. Tamari said, what was wrong with it? I thought Gara just couldn't handle the power. Kankuro said, whoever sealed Shukaku and Gara did two things wrong. Number one, they sealed it inside of him before he was even born which should never happen, and I'll take a guess to say that is what actually caused your mother to die. Number two, he basically has a shitty storage scroll on his body. Naruto said, Lady Chio is the one who performed the sealing ritual. Kankuro said, well, she sucks. Naruto said, just trust him, Kankuro. Tamari said, why do you want to help Gara? Kankuro asked, because I'd do anything to make a pretty girl such as Tamari smile. Naruto said and she blushed, idiot. Tamari thought, if anything goes wrong, I'm blaming you. Kankuro said, sure. Now, this is the most important part. There will be a locking seal on the inside of his room to prevent people from coming in there. If the door opens then the suppressing seals will stop working, since I'll have them set to activate when the door closes. I'll give Tamari an overriding seal just in case, but if you ever need to go in the room you need to wake him up within 5 minutes, because that's how long it'll take the effects of the seal to wear off on Shukaku. If you can't wake him up just close the door and wait for Gara to get up. Naruto said, why does she get the seal? Kankuro asked, because she's more trustworthy than you. Naruto said, no, she's not. Kankuro said, yes I am and you know it. Come on, Naruto. I'll show you Gara's room and your room. Tamari said and they walked away. Tamari showed Naruto his room and Gara's room then showed him the bathrooms. Coincidentally, his room was right next to Tamari's room, so he'd have to be careful so he wouldn't go in the wrong room. They went to Gara's room and Naruto unsealed his sealing equipment and got to work. Tamari was really impressed by his skill because he looked so fluent while drawing the seals everywhere and called him a seal master, but he declined saying he was far away from being called a seal master. It took him three hours to complete everything and used his Sharingan to check for any signs of a break in the seals. That was another thing he managed to do with his Sharingan, he was able to basically zoom in and out while inspecting his sealing or anything else. It was really helpful and it's what got him so far into his sealing. He would check everything over before he moved to the next step. So, is it done? Tamari asked, yeah. Just a simple test run is needed before I apply the locking seal. Naruto said, what do you have to do? Tamari asked, I need Gara to come in here and go to sleep. Naruto said, uh. I don't think that's a good idea. Tamari said, don't worry. I'll be able to suppress Yukaku if he escapes or tries to. Naruto said, how? Tamari asked, secret. Just tell Gara to come inside and then you stay out. Naruto said and she sighed, okay. Tamari said and then Gara came into the room, why didn't my mother protect me from you? Gara asked, because I'm not a threat to you. I'm not trying to harm you. Now, I need you to close your eyes and start to fall asleep. Naruto said. Gara stared at him for a few seconds before nodding. Gara closed his eyes and Naruto sweat dropped because he was still standing up instead of laying on the bed. As soon as Gara's eyes closed, Naruto felt Shukaku's chakra start to leak out, but the seals started to suppress the chakra, and after 20 minutes then an hour, there were no signs of Shukaku trying to escape. Naruto woke Gara up, and Gara was shocked that Naruto was still alive. How did you survive the monster inside of me? Gara asked, the monster never escaped. This room will help you sleep at night and not worry about Shukaku trying to escape. 
Naruto said and then placed the locking seal on the door. Why did you do this? Are you going to kill me in my sleep? Gara asked. No. I did this so you can have some sort of a normal life and become better. You're not the only person with a tailed beast inside of you, and I believe that none of you should be treated like an outcast. Now, before you go to sleep, you'll have to channel chakra into this locking seal so nobody can get in. If the door is opened it will cause the seals to stop working, and if you're sleeping, Shukaku will escape. Naruto said, I see. You hurt my sister and I'll kill you. Gara said, Uli noted. Good night. Naruto said and left the room, you're okay. Tamari said and gave him a hug, yup. Everything is working perfectly. I even set up a fail safe in his room. If the seals fail, a barrier will appear and trap Shukaku while suppressing his chakra at the same time. If somebody breaks into that room then they'll die because of Gara's sand. Naruto said, thank you so much. Tamari said, you're welcome. Naruto said and Tamari yawned, good night Naruto. Tamari said and went to her room, good night. Naruto said and went to his room, two days later, well, this is it. It's been nice meeting you all. Naruto said, as he was at the gates with Tamari and Kankuro, but not Gara since he was still sleeping, sucks that you'll be leaving. I was going to challenge you to a spar with my puppets. Kankuro said, we still have the exams. Now that you're all entering them, I'll be looking forward to fighting you. Naruto said, so, are you going to wave now? Tamari asked, yeah. I need to save my team. After that I'll start training for the exams. Naruto said, well, I won't lose to you. I'm starting my training right away. Kankuro said, I'm sure you will. Naruto said and Kankuro left, I guess I'll see you in a few months. Tamari said and Naruto nodded, like I said, you'll be hearing from me sooner than you think. I have to go now. It was nice spending time with you, Tamari. Don't forget about our date in Konoha. Naruto said, I won't. Tamari said and smiled, I'll be waiting. Naruto said and Tamari pulled his mask down, then kissed him on the cheek, causing both of them to blush a dark red. Be good luck on your mission. Bye. Tamari quickly said and ran away. Uh. Thanks. Naruto said and summoned Dash. Where are we headed? Dash asked, as Naruto jumped on him. Land of waves. Naruto said and Dash flew off. Land of waves. Dash managed to get Naruto to the land of waves in about eight hours. Along the way Naruto was reading his book on creating. He was also thinking about Tamari kissing him on the cheek. He's been kissed on the cheek plenty of times by his mom and Kurinai, but this one was different. He wasn't an idiot when it came to love, but he wanted to talk to Kurinai first about this to be completely sure. Naruto, we have arrived. Dash said, as he landed, thanks. I can find them from here. You head back. Naruto said and jumped off of Dash, see you later. Dash said, and then Naruto walked around a bit before he found somebody, excuse me, but have you seen four or four people around here? A red-haired girl, a pink-haired girl, a guy who has one eye and a boy who looks constipated with a duck-ass hairstyle. Naruto asked, uh, yeah. They're with Tazuna at his house. Why do you ask? The man asked, I was sent here to help them out with the enemy. Naruto said, ah, okay. Tazuna's house is right by the docks. You can't miss it. The man said, thank you. Naruto said and gave him a pouch of money. I can't take this. The man said, sure you can. I know all about Gato and what he's been doing here use that to feed your family. After I'm done with this mission, my personal goal is to kill Gato and put an end to his tyranny. Naruto said, thank you so much. The man said and bowed before leaving, defeat the enemy and then kill Gato. Now, let's have a team reunion. Naruto said and vanished, Azuna's house, Natsumi. You shouldn't have said that to him. Sakura said, as Natsumi just finished making a little boy cry, the little shit deserved it. He's a whiny little brat who sheltered himself and hasn't even lifted a finger to stop Gato. He has no right to say I'll never defeat him. Natsumi said, still, I think you should apologize. Sakura said, nope. Not happening. Natsumi said and Kakashi sighed, where's Naruto when I need him? Kakashi thought, and then somebody knocked on the door, were you expecting someone? Kakashi asked, at this hour. No. Tazuna said and Kakashi put his book away, alright. You and Tsunami should hide in the kitchen for now. Sasuke, Sakura and Natsumi, I'm going to slowly open the door. Do not attack unless I say otherwise. Kakashi said and stood up, you got it. Finally. Some action. Natsumi said. Kakashi slowly opened the door and as usual, Sasuke didn't listen. As soon as the door was open, Sasuke grabbed the person inside and tried to stab him with a kunai. Natsumi and Sakura joined in, but they were all quickly defeated, and the only thing you saw was Natsumi and Sakura hanging upside down from the ceiling, Sasuke was on the ground with a kunai at his neck, and Kakashi was holding a wrist keeping a sword from slicing his head off while holding a kunai to back of the person's head. Well that was rude. You didn't even let me introduce myself. Naruto said. Naruto. Natsumi yelled as she was struggling to get down. Naruto. Let me down. Sakura said. Uh. 
I guess you're the backup. Kakashi said as he let him go and Naruto got off of Sasuke. Yup. That's me. Naruto said as he put his sword up then released Natsumi and Sakura from the ceiling. Naruto. Where have you been? I can't believe you left me with Pinky and Duck ass. Natsumi said and dramatically placed her hand over her head. I was on missions. Naruto said. I thought you were on Team 7 with us. Sakura said. I am. I'm an elite genin. Naruto said. How is he so strong? He will tell me his secret so I can kill him. Sasuke thought. Did they tell you what's going on? Kakashi asked. I read up on it on my way here. So, Zabuza Mamachi and an accomplice. Can I fight Zabuza? Naruto asked. No. I'll handle Zabuza myself. He only escaped last time because his accomplice interfered. You'll be back up just in case. Natsumi and Sasuke will be fighting the accomplice and Sakura will guard Tizuna. Think you can stay back and guard the house while we're gone and come after the threat is dealt with? Kakashi asked. Sure. Naruto said and sat down. What kind of mission were you on? Sakura asked. He ranked Tizuna. I would have been here sooner, but I had to wait out a sandstorm. Naruto said. How many missions have you done in the last two months? Natsumi asked. I don't know. Maybe 20. 21, including this one. Naruto said. Half-breed, I demand you tell me how you got strong and give me the sword while you're at it. Sasuke said. It's funny how you think you can boss me around. Let's get something straight. The only person who can boss me around in the Ichiha clan would be the clan head, and that's not you. Naruto said. I thought he was the clan head because he's from the main family. Sakura said. No. The clan head would be the oldest Ichiha remaining from the main family. Sasuke isn't the oldest. Itachi is. Technically Itachi is the clan head, but at the same time, he isn't. Naruto said. What do you mean? Kakashi asked. Think about it. Who was the original leader of the Ichiha clan? Naruto asked. Madara Ichiha. Kakashi said. Exactly. It would be his direct lineage that would be clan head. Sasuke isn't part of Madara's lineage. Naruto said. Madara didn't have any children though. It would have been documented if he did. Kakashi said. He had children in secret. His lineage kept going on. So, take a wild guess at who's the last of his lineage. Naruto said. It's you. Kakashi said. Exactly. So, technically I'm clan head and have been ever since my mother died. Don't step out of line. I'd rather keep you alive because Makoto was basically my aunt, but I have no problem killing you, Sasuke. Don't get on my bad side. Naruto said. Wait a minute. If you're the clan head then what does that make Sasuke and this Itachi person? Natsumi asked. I did some digging and looked into that. In our clan, Sasuke would be part of the side branch. Naruto said. I don't get it. How did Sasuke's family become clan heads then? Natsumi asked. Easy. It was long before Fugaku Ichiha was born, but someone in his lineage killed the actual clan head. Since Madara was gone that side branch member was the strongest and nobody challenged him for the throne. My family continued to grow in secret and Fugaku didn't even know I was born until I was two months old. Naruto said. Whoa. Natsumi said. Is it safe for us to come out? Tazuna asked. Yeah. He's our backup. Kakashi said. He's just a kid. Tazuna said. Well, he's stronger than all of them, and if he went all out I know he should be able to take on all three of them. Kakashi said. This half-breed is not stronger than me. Sasuke said. Oh. Then show me your Sharingan. Naruto sighed and Sasuke grit his teeth. He doesn't have the Sharingan. Mitsumi said. What a shame. Seems you can't even call yourself an Achiha with no Sharingan to prove it. At this point, Kakashi is more of an Achiha than you are. Now, is there any food? I'm starving. Naruto said. This is it. I can finally see what he looks like. Sakura thought and grinned. Of course. I'll bring you a plate of food. Tsunami said. Uh. You better make that a few plates. He can eat as much as me. Natsumi said. No. One plate should be enough. I saw the condition of this place because of Gato. Naruto said. It's okay. We have enough to last another week. Tsunami said. No. Even after Gato is defeated, it'll still take some time before the Land of Waves is back on its feet. I'll take one plate and then eat breakfast in the morning while they're out at the bridge. Naruto said. If that is what you want. Tsunami said and went back to the kitchen. I just realized that you never call Kakashi sensei, sensei. Why is that? Sakura asked. This isn't a knock on Kakashi, but my mom will always be my only sensei. Sure other people may teach me something, but I don't think I'll ever call them sensei. Naruto said. HN. Pathetic. Sasuke said, this is coming from the same boy who would throw a temper tantrum whenever his brother had a mission and couldn't train him. You should be the last person talking about being pathetic. You used your clan status and the people's ego to get them to train you growing up and you're still weaker than me. You may train hard, but I train smart. Naruto said and Tsunami came with his food. Here you go. Tsunami said, thank you. Naruto said and everyone looked at him, come on. Come on. 
Come on. Sakura thought, I wonder if this is how people feel when I'm eating. Kakashi thought, I wonder if he's gonna do the thing when he eats through his mask. Mitsumi thought, as she was always fascinated by that, Naruto picked up his chopsticks and pulled his mask, making everyone lean in, but then we put his food over the top of his mask into his mouth. Everyone fell over at such an idiotic move, and Sakura yelled. Are you kidding me? Sakura asked, what? Naruto asked, take off the stupid mask. Sakura yelled, I don't want to. Naruto said, please. Sakura asked and put on a puppy dog face, fine. Naruto said and put his chopsticks down, yes. Sakura said and leaned forward, underneath this mask. Naruto said, uh-huh. Sakura said with anticipation, is another mask. Pretty cool, right Naruto asked as he pulled down his mask, now I see how people feel when I do it. I can't believe he got me with my own thing. Kakashi thought, are you kidding me? I did all of that for this. Come here. Sakura yelled, she leapt at Naruto with the intent to rip his mask off his face, but Naruto switched with Sasuke at the last minute without them noticing. Sakura opened her eyes and saw her lips were connected with Sasuke's. Her eyes widened and her mind went blank as she felt Sasuke's hands on her butt. I'm kissing Sasuke. Sakura thought and then passed out on top of Sasuke, she can die happy now. Mitsumi said, not exactly. Naruto said, why not? She kissed him and she's happy. Mitsumi said, no. Kissing him isn't the only thing she wants from Sasuke, but it seems you don't understand it yet. I won't poison your young mind. Naruto said, young? We're the same age. Mitsumi said, I'm 60 days older than you. That's two months or if you want to be technical, 1440 hours which is equivalent to 86,400 minutes. That's three different ways of me saying I'm older than you. Naruto said, how can he remember all of that? Kakashi thought, you get on my nerves. Mitsumi said and stormed away, all in a day's work. Now, where's the little boy that I heard Natsumi yell at? Naruto asked, on the docks. Kakashi said, I'll be back. Naruto said, docks, hey, kid. What's your name? Naruto asked, Inari. Inari said, nice. So, would she yell at you? Naruto asked, because I told her she doesn't know how it feels to struggle since she came from a ninja village and that Gato is too powerful for her. You all are just going to die like everyone else. Inari said, I see. Well, let me prove you wrong on both instances. Natsumi unfortunately does know what it's like to struggle. I won't go into detail about her life, but she's basically hated by our entire village minus a few for something out of her control when she was only a few hours old. Now, Gato isn't strong. What makes you think he is? Naruto asked, he has goons working for him. I saw what happened to the silver-haired guy in there. If he can't beat them, then nobody can. Inari said, that's where you're wrong. Kakashi had the guy beat from what I understand, but he didn't know about the accomplice. Now, Kakashi will fight the guy again, and I'm sure he'll win. This time it'll be one-on-one -on -one since Sasuke and Natsumi will be fighting the accomplice. As for Gato and his goons. Well, I've seen his goons around here and none of them can do this. Naruto said and used a fireball as a demonstration, wow. Inari said, like I said, his goons aren't strong. They're just common street thugs that pick on the weak. Tomorrow Gato will fall and the land of waves will be free from his tyranny. Naruto said and walked away. Naruto went inside to see Sakura still on the floor and figured Sasuke must have gone to sleep. He picked her up, then took her to the room she was sharing with Natsumi and knocked before leaving. He opted to sleep on the roof of the house and enjoy the cool breeze of the night. Chapter 5. Hero Bridge. Legacy passed down. Naruto woke up early in the morning before everyone else and decided to get him some training done since he hasn't trained in a few days. He worked on his chakra control and tojutsu skills, but he didn't really push himself like he normally does due to him being needed at the bridge later on. He returned to the house after a few hours and saw everyone was up already. So, everyone's ready I see. Naruto said, yup. We're totally going to kick some ass. Natsumi said and gave Naruto a fist bump, you better. Can't have you losing on your first mission out of the village. Don't worry though, I let the old man know you said I can become for you. Naruto said, what? Hell no. I'm becoming one Itsumi said, I don't know. Ruling over the village does seem interesting. I might decide to become myself. Naruto said and she gasped, you can't. You said you don't want to do it. Natsumi said, I'm just kidding. I don't want to be stuck in some office all day. Naruto said and Natsumi sighed in relief, good. For a second I thought I'd have to kick your ass. Natsumi said, it's not very ladylike to swear, Natsumi. Sakura said, it's also not ladylike to try and spy on Sasuke in the shower, you pervert. Natsumi said and Sakura blushed, I wasn't. Sakura said, right and I don't have a Raymond addiction. Natsumi said, anyway, take care of yourself out there. Don't get too reckless. Naruto said, I'm the future. I can handle this. Natsumi said, well, Naruto. I'll leave them in your hands. 
Remember, once the coast is clear, meet us at the bridge to back us up if necessary. Kakashi said, sure. Naruto said, are you sure you're able to go? You're still recovering yourself. Tsunami said, why? Do I look like I'll fall over? I'll be fine. I just needed a few days to recover. Kakashi said, alright, come on. Let's go. Tazuna said and they left, come on, you two. Let's get inside. Naruto said, will they be okay? Tsunami asked, they'll be fine. Kakashi is an elite, Natsumi is borderline low level, and the same with Sasuke. Naruto said, what about Sakura? Tsunami asked, well, if she screams loud enough I'm sure she can make somebody bleed from their eyes, ears and nose. Naruto said, that's not really reassuring. Tsunami said, yeah, I know. It can't be helped though. She doesn't like to train. Naruto said, do you train every day? Inari asked, no. I train every other day. It's important to let your body take a break. Naruto said and Tsunami brought him some breakfast, here you go. I noticed you didn't eat this morning. Tsunami said, thank you. You're really kind. Naruto said, you're welcome. Breakfast is important, so I can't have you missing out on it. Tsunami said, I agree. Inari said and Naruto chuckled, tell me, Inari. Are you ready to become a hero and help free this place from Gato? Naruto asked, me? A hero? I don't know. Inari said, he's too young to be fighting. Tsunami said, he doesn't have to. I know something that will work. Naruto said, what do you have in mind? Tsunami asked, simple, after I deal with our two guests that are about to arrive, you two should gather as much help as possible with anything they can use as a weapon and meet us at the bridge. Who knows, if we don't get to him first, you all may be able to get some hits in on Gato. Naruto said, do you think they'll help us? Tsunami asked, of course. Just tell them that the Kanoha Ninja are fighting Gato and I'm sure they'll come to the bridge. Naruto said, I'll see what we can do. Tsunami said, what can we use as weapons? Gato and his goons took everything. Inari said, use whatever you can think of. Naruto said, as the door was literally cut to pieces revealing two men carrying swords and one had an eye patch while the other one had a purple hat on, well, what do we have here? One of the men asked, well, we have three people trying to enjoy their day until you two fuckers decided to show up. Naruto said, it was a rhetorical question. The guy said, I know, but I still felt like answering. Naruto said, enough. Should we take all three of them? The guy asked, no. Gato only wanted the daughter as his hostage. His partner answered, so, you work for Gato? Tell me, are you two the only ones here? Naruto asked, yeah. Now hand over the lady and I might decide to let you live. The one with the hat said, Tsunami, would you like to go with them? Naruto asked, of course not. Tsunami said and pulled Inari behind her, there you have it boys. She doesn't want to go with you. Now, you have two options. Either leave and never come back or die. Naruto said, you're just a kid. We can handle this. The guy with the eye patch said, Tsunami, cover Inari's eyes. Inari, cover your ears. Naruto said, okay. Tsunami said and they did as told. Now, let's have some fun. Naruto said, he kicked both of the intruders out of the house and unsealed his sword before following them. They got their swords out and started swinging wildly at Naruto who blocked or dodged every single swipe. Eventually they grew tired and Naruto went on the offensive. He appeared behind the one with the eye patch and stabbed him in the back through his heart. The other one tried to attack Naruto from behind, but Naruto ducked and the guy with the eye patch had his arm sliced off. Naruto kicked the guy in his knee which caused him to fall to the ground and then Naruto pinned him to the ground with multiple kunai and shuriken. W what are you? The guy asked, a ninja. Why did Gato want the tsunami as a hostage? Naruto asked, I'm not telling you anything. The guy said and Naruto stabbed him in both hands with a kunai making the guy scream, I won't ask again. Now answer the question. Naruto said and activated his Sharingan. H he wanted to use her as a hostage to make Tazuna hand himself over to kill him. The guy said, are there more of you? Naruto asked, W we were meant to meet the rest of them at the bridge. We were going to kill Tazuna, then kill Zabuza and his helper. The guy said, what of the other women and little girls that I heard were kidnapped? Naruto asked and the guy paled, I don't know. The guy said and Naruto stabbed him in both knees, you're lying. Naruto said, okay. We used them for sex. I didn't touch any of the kids. Gato did that. He only wanted the ones that were well developed. The man said, all of you are dead. Naruto said and removed his head from his shoulders, then threw both bodies in the water. Is it safe now? Tsunami asked, yeah. You can come out here. Naruto said, where did the two guys go? Inari asked, they decided to go for a swim. The rest of his goons are going to the bridge. Gather as many people as you can and meet me there. I have two weapons for you right here. Naruto said and gave them the swords, don't these belong to the bad guys? Inari asked, well, before they went on their swim, they were kind enough to leave them behind. Now, I need to hurry up and get to the bridge. 
Naruto said and ran off these fast. Inari said, come on, Inari. Let's go gather some people. Tsunami said, bridge. Naruto made it to the bridge just in time to see Kakashi about to kill Zabuza, Sasuke was out for the count, Sakura was guarding Tazuna with a kunai in each hand, and Itsumi was staring at the body that laid next to Kakashi. Naruto saw Kakashi about to use his infamous Jidori on Zabuza and knew he wouldn't make it in time, so he used his Manjikyu Sharingan and switched places with Kakashi. What the? Who are you? Zabuza asked. Naruto. What are you doing? Sakura asked. I need Zabuza to know something. Naruto said. What is it? Zabuza asked. Edo was going to betray you after this fight. Him and his people are already here. Naruto said and then clapping was heard. Well, well. Look at this. Seems like they've done quite a job on you, Zabuza. You look like yesterday's sashimi. I must say that I'm disappointed. A short man said and had an army behind him. What is the meaning of this, Gato? Who are these people behind you? Zabuza asked. He's here to betray you. Whatever he promised you at the end of this, he wasn't going to pay you. Naruto said and healed Zabuza's arms a bit so he could use his sword. He's right. You've become too expensive for me and you'll die right here on this bridge, Zabuza. Of course even these thugs cost something, so if you could manage to slaughter a few before you die, I'd appreciate it. Think you can do that, demon of the mist. Look at you, you're about as demonic as a wet kitten. Gato said and his goons laughed, there's so many of them. Mitsumi thought, well, well, Kakashi. It would seem that our fight is at an end. Since I am no longer in Gato's employ, Tazuna is safe. We have no quarrel. Zabuza said and picked up his sword, yeah, I suppose you're right. Kakashi said and Gato walked over the body on the ground, that reminds me, you little punk. You grabbed me and nearly broke my arm. I've been meaning to repay you for that. Gato said and kicked the body, Haku. Natsumi said and started to run towards him, but Naruto stopped her, wait. Naruto said, what are you doing? Natsumi said, just wait a bit longer. Gato will get what's coming to him. Naruto said and she nodded, if only you were still alive. That would have been even better. Gato said and kicked Haku again, boy. Zabuza said, what is it? Naruto asked, help me take these fuckers down. Zabuza said and Naruto unsealed his sword, sure. Naruto said, nice sword. Zabuza said, thanks. Naruto said and threw a kunai into Gato's shoulder, ah. Kill them. Gato said and retreated behind his goons. Naruto looked at Zabuza who nodded at him and they charged into the army of goons. Naruto easily avoided every attack coming towards him thanks to his Sharingan and he would cut them down with ease. Zabuza was different since he was headed straight for Gato, tearing down everyone that got in his way. Edo tried to escape, but he was at the edge of the bridge that wasn't completed yet and was shaking in fear as Naruto and Zabuza got closer to him. Zabuza had multiple weapons stabbed into his back, but he ignored them and when he finally reached Gato, he stabbed him right through the stomach and then kicked him into the water before collapsing on the ground. Is he dead? Mitsumi asked. No. He's still fighting it. When you live like a warrior, this is how it ends. Kakashi said. Hey Mitsumi. Look. Sasuke's alright. Sakura said and Sasuke gave her a slight wave. Well, well, will wonders never cease. Amazing. Kakashi said. Hey. Don't get too comfortable. This party ain't over yet. Who's gonna pay us now that Gato's gone? Agoon asked. No way we're gonna leave here empty-handed. We'll just have to hit that village and see what they've got for us. Another goon said. That's not good. Kakashi said. They won't be leaving this bridge. Naruto said and then an arrow landed in front of them. There's just one thing you're forgetting about. Before you set one foot in our village, you'll have to go through all of us. A villager said as Inari showed up with a lot of people. I see you made it, Inari. Naruto said. Well, heroes show up at the last minute, you know. Inari asked. They've all come. The whole village. Tazuna said. Shadow clone. Naruto, Kakashi and Natsumi each made their own army of shadow clones and Gato's army of goons grew scared. They all started to scramble and jumped off the bridge, hoping to get to the boats for an escape, but Naruto used the electromagnetic murder on the water and killed them. Victory. Inari yelled and everyone cheered. Sounds like it's over. Zabuza said, as Kakashi walked over to him. Yeah. Kakashi said. Kakashi. I have a favor to ask. Zabuza said. What is it? Kakashi asked. Take me to him. I need to see him one last time before I go. Zabuza said. Sure. Kakashi said and took the weapons out of his back before placing him next to Haku. Hey, it's snowing. Natsumi said, as snow was falling. Thank you Kakashi. Zabuza said, as Kakashi placed him on the ground, Naruto, shouldn't you try to heal him? Natsumi asked, no. For someone like Zabuza, healing him would be a slap to the face. He wanted a warrior's death and who am I to take that from him? This was his final act as the demon of the mist. Naruto said, Haku, you were always by my side. The least I can do is be beside you at the end. I know it won't happen, but I wish I could go where you're going. Hey, kid. 
Zabuza said, yeah. Naruto asked, not you, the redeed. Zabuza said, me? What do you want from me? Mitsumi asked, during the week I was recovering, Haku couldn't stop talking about this girl he met in the woods. He knows you're a good person, and ever since I met him, I've always gone against his word, but just this once I listened to him. He had a feeling that this would be our final days and asked for you to have something. I want you to take my sword and continue its legacy. Go on and pick it up. Zabuza said and Natsumi looked at Naruto. Go ahead. Naruto said and Natsumi went to the sword, then picked it up with ease. Now what, Zabuza? Natsumi asked and everyone looked at Zabuza who was no longer breathing with a smile on his face. Come on. Let's make a grave sight for them. Tazuna said. Few days later, after the events of the bridge, Tazuna and his crew dug a grave for Zabuza and Haku. The gravestone was in the shape of Zabuza's sword and had Haku's mask carved into the center of the blade. Natsumi made sure to visit the grave every day out of respect since she didn't know when she'd be back. Naruto, over the past few days, was helping rebuild the village as he managed to find Gato's hideout and retrieved all of the money and people he had taken. Naruto and Zabuza were given a statue with both of them holding their swords over their shoulders. We could have never finished the bridge without you. I can't tell you how much we're going to miss you. Tazuna said, as everyone was gathered at the completed bridge, please be careful. Tsunami said, for your help getting our village from underneath the tyranny of Gato, we've decided to call this the Hero Bridge and honor every single one of you. Zabuza and Haku will also be honored as well. Tazuna said, thank you for everything. Kakashi said, I Naruto. A group of girls said and Naruto scratched the back of his head, I girls. Naruto said and the girls squealed, he said bye to me. No, he was talking to me. As if. He clearly made eye contact with me. Well, would you look at that. Naruto has a group of fangirls. Mitsumi said and elbowed Naruto in the side. You want to talk. I've seen you hiding from the group of fanboys following you around. Naruto said and she shivered. This must be how Sasuke feels. Mitsumi said. I doubt it. He loves the attention. Naruto said. Naruto, Mitsumi. Come on. Sakura said as they already started walking. Those motherfuckers didn't even bother to wait for us. Mitsumi said. Well, look at it like this. The sooner you make it to Konoha, the sooner you can see whoever it is you have a crush on. Naruto said and Natsumi had a huge blush on her face. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Natsumi said. If you say so. Naruto said. Wait a minute. At least I have interest in somebody. You don't even look at girls. Natsumi said. I look at girls. I just don't do it a lot. Naruto said. Oh really? Name one girl that you've looked at in Konoha. Natsumi said. Me no. Naruto said. She doesn't count. You two are basically best friends. Natsumi said. This was before we became friends. Naruto said. Oh. You were thinking about dating her? Natsumi asked. I was, but then I lost interest in her. Naruto said. Are you calling her ugly? Natsumi said. What? No. Ino is very pretty, but she's just not the one for me I guess you can say. Besides, on my missions I've run into plenty of attractive girls. Naruto said. I don't understand why they even bother. It's not like you'll actually pay attention to them. Natsumi said. That's not true. I went on a date with one of them from my recent mission. I even took my mask off to eat. Naruto said. You went on a date with who? What's her name? Natsumi asked. Will you be quiet? Naruto asked. Sorry, but who is she? Natsumi asked. You'll find out in a few months. She's going to be taking the exams. Naruto said. Oh come one. Just give me one little detail. Natsumi said. No. In some ways you're just like Ino when it comes to gossip. The last thing I need is the council getting involved trying to do some stupid political marriage due to her status in her village. Plus we don't even know if we'll actually date each other, so just keep quiet. Naruto said. Fine. Natsumi said, as they caught up with the rest of the team, what were the two of you talking about? Sakura asked. We were talking about how long it takes you to wash your big ass forehead, Pinky. Natsumi said. What did you say, Tomato Head? Sakura yelled. You fucking heard me. Natsumi yelled. Will these two just get along already? Kakashi thought and then felt somebody tap him on the shoulder. Hmm? Can I help you? Kakashi asked. Yeah. I'm out of books. Got anything for me to read? Naruto asked. I don't think my books are meant for someone your age. Kakashi said. Well, technically I'm an adult. Naruto said. Just don't let Kurenai see you with this. Kakashi said and gave him one of his Icha Icha books. Who the hell wrote this? Naruto asked as he was reading it. Ureya of the Sanin. It's pretty good, right? Kakashi asked and Naruto threw the book at him. I've read children's books better written than that crap. Naruto said. First he asks me for a book and then he insults it. Kakashi thought. So, Naruto. Let me ask you something. Sakura said. What is it? Naruto asked. Will you ever remove the mask? I mean it's not fair that Natsumi is the only person who saw you without it on. 
Sakura said. She's not the only person to see me without my mask on, but to answer your question, I'll be removing my mask soon. Naruto said. Why do you wear it anyway? Sakura asked. So people won't recognize who my father is. The reason I can't show you specifically is because you're too smart and you'll figure out who my father is then tell Ino who can't keep a secret to save her life. Naruto said. What does your father have to do with this? Sakura asked. Let's just say he still has enemies from the third shinobi war, even though he's dead, and they do anything to get back at him, including killing his children. I could take it off now, but I'd rather be able to take it before I do. Naruto said. Someone like Kakashi sensei? Sakura asked. I'm still some years off before I'm able to defeat Kakashi. He's a legend in the bingo books. He's nearly an s rank shinobi and if I had to guess, the only people stronger in the village would be the old man and the two members. Naruto said. You're that strong, Kakashi-sensei? Sakura asked. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Kakashi said. Given Naruto's current strength he could surpass me in a few years. I can tell he's nearly a level shinobi himself. Kakashi thought. And out of our team, who's the strongest? Sakura asked. It's me. Sasuke said. In your dreams, duckbit. Naruto's easily the strongest one on this team and I'm second. Mitsumi said. Actually, you're third. Sasuke is stronger than you, but only by a bit. Sakura is the weakest, but she's not really a fighter. Naruto said. Gee thanks. Sakura said. There's no way you're stronger than me. I've surpassed you thanks to my Sharingan. Sasuke said and revealed his Sharingan with one Tomo in one eye and two in the other. That's cute. Sasuke finally awakened his Sharingan, but you're eight years too late compared to me. Naruto said and activated his Sharingan. I don't get it. Why does Naruto's Sharingan look different? Sakura asked. That's because my Sharingan is fully matured. I awakened it at 5, and it only took me 2 years to fully mature it. It could have been done sooner, but I wasn't training only on my Sharingan. Naruto said. Tell me how you did it. I need the power to kill him. Sasuke said. No and for the record, you're lifetimes away from being able to kill Itachi, and everyone knows that. He's probably stronger than Kakashi by now and as I've said before, he's no slouch either. Naruto said. This is gonna take a turn for the worse, and for once I don't want to see Sasuke get his ass kicked. So, what's everyone doing when they get back to the village? Natsumi asked. Maybe train a bit. Naruto said. How about you, Sakura? Natsumi asked. Why should I tell you my plans? I don't even like you. Sakura said and flipped her hair at Natsumi. You stupid pink-haired banshee. I just asked a damn question. Natsumi said. What did you call me? Sakura asked. You heard me. Natsumi said and then they started to argue again. I probably should have taken that promotion when it was offered to me a few weeks ago. Naruto thought. Anoha Hokage office. Mission accomplished, old man. Natsumi said as they entered the room. Show some respect to them Sakura said. Shut up. Natsumi said. These two have been at it the entire trip back. Kakashi thought. So, did the monkey give you the reply, old man? Naruto asked. Naruto. You can't call him an old man. Sakura said. I've always called him old man. It's nothing new and he doesn't have a problem with it. Naruto said. It's quite alright, Sakura. I've known the two of them since they were babies. To answer your question, Naruto, yes the monkey did give me the reply, and he also told me something else that happened in Suna. Kurenai and Anko also know about this. Hiruzen said, you stooged me out. Naruto said, as his eye twitched, no. They just happened to be in the room when the monkey showed up. Now, Kakashi, I assume there's an explanation as to why Natsumi is carrying around the Kubakirabacho. Hiruzen said, I forgot I had this thing. Natsumi said and everyone just looked at her, yes. With his last breath Zabuza entrusted the Kubakirabacho. Kakashi said, I see. Other than Zabuza and his accomplice, were there any other problems on the mission? Hiruzen asked, yes and I'd like to file a complaint. Natsumi said, what is it? Hiruzen asked, the pink banshee almost blew my eardrums out with her annoying ass voice. Shouldn't that fall under attacking a teammate? Natsumi asked, I did not. Sakura screeched and Natsumi covered her ears, see? She's doing it again. Natsumi said, as she dramatically fell to the ground and Hiruzen looked at Naruto, just ignore her. They've been like this the entire trip back. I'd say it's the beginning of a new friendship. Naruto said, what? As if I'd ever be friends with her. Natsumi and Sakura said at the same time which caused them to glare at each other. Anyway, other than Zabuza, nothing else important happened. Kakashi said and Hiruzen nodded, I see. All of you are dismissed except for Naruto. I need him for a mission. Hiruzen said, I old man. Natsumi said as she left them room, show him some respect. Sakura said, how about you stay out of my business and grow some boobs? You flat-chested cutting board Natsumi said, what did you just say? Sakura yelled, I didn't stutter, thin piece of paper. Natsumi yelled, that's it. Sakura yelled, and when the door closed you heard them starting to fight, they're going to be such great friends. 
Naruto said and Hiruzen chuckled, yes, they will become great friends. Hiruzen said, so, what's the mission? Naruto asked, I have an S-ranked mission for you. Hiruzen said, you know, with all these S-ranked missions you think I was a member. Naruto said, this is only your fourth S-ranked mission. Hiruzen said, fine. What do I have to do? Naruto asked, I have a feeling we have some spies in our village. Somebody has been doing some digging around our classified files. Most of them are around missions that should only be accessible to me and the instructors. I have reason to believe it may be somebody from an unknown village and one from Iwa. Hiruzen said, Iwa? What makes you say that? Naruto asked, One of the spies tried to break the seal regarding your father and Kishina Yuzumaki. I need you to find out who it is. I want weekly updates on this. I'll send you out on missions, but when you are in the village, this mission must be worked on. Hiruzen said, Give me until the end of the day and I'll have this figured out. When do they usually look at the files? Naruto asked, Late in the night when the building is closed. There is a hole in our security, and these two must be at least level ninja. Your stealth skills are the best in this village outside of Natsumi, which is why I'm assigning you this mission. Hiruzen said, I'll get it done. What do I do when I find out who it is? Naruto asked, I'll give you further directions after that. I have a suspicion that one or both of them will be in the exams if they are after something. The one I suspect is from Iwa may come after you or Natsumi, so I want you to up your training. Hiruzen said, you got it. Naruto said, you're dismissed. You may want to stop by Kurunai's house. She is waiting for you. Hiruzen said, of course she is. Naruto said and vanished, Kurunai's apartment. After leaving the tower, Naruto made a few stops along the way to get some food. He picked up Anko and Kurunai's favorites, so they wouldn't grill him too badly, but hopefully Anko had to leave, and that would just leave him and Kurunai. He stood outside of her door and before he could use the key, the door swung open and he was thrown into the apartment. Well, that was rude. To think I made sure to stop and grab both of your favorite foods, just to get treated like a rag doll. Naruto said, don't think that food will help you this time young man. Kurunai said, hold on, Kurunai. How much food are we talking were? Anko asked, two weeks of dango and red bean soup for Anko, and two weeks worth of vodka, and for Kurunai. However, given the way I was just treated, I might take it back. Naruto said, and then he was pinned to the wall by some kunai thanks to Anko. Now, you aren't taking anything back. Anko said and grabbed her food. You have some explaining to do. Why didn't you tell us you had a girlfriend? Kurunai asked, because I don't. Naruto said and took his mask off. Then why were you with her? Anko asked. I knocked her down, and we had a brief argument which somehow turned into her asking me out on a date. We ate food, laughed, and then she let me stay at her house with her brothers to wait out the sandstorm. Naruto said, I hope you slept in your own bed. Kurunai said, I did. I basically had my own room. Naruto said, so, what's her name? Kurunai asked, Damari. Naruto said, Damari. Why does that name sound familiar? Anko asked, I don't know, but I've heard it before as well. Kurunai said, she's the Kazakiyaja's daughter. Naruto said, what? Kurunai and Anko yelled, what? She's the Kazakiyaja's daughter. Big deal. Naruto said, that's a huge deal. Do you know what he'll do to you if you break her heart? Anko asked, nothing. He doesn't care. Her youngest brother is the one who threatened me, but I don't even know if we'll make it that far. I'd appreciate it if you two will keep this between us. I don't want the council finding out about this. Naruto said, why not? Kurunai asked, because they'd try to turn this into a political marriage, and I'd rather not lose my ninja license for beating them half to death. When I get married, I'll marry the girl I love and that's it. Naruto said, fine. I'll keep it a secret. Anko said, me too. So, do you like her? Kurunai asked, I don't know. Naruto said, does she like you? Anko asked, I think so. She did something that made me feel weird. Naruto said and that got their attention, what did she do? Anko asked, well, when I was about to leave, she pulled my mask down and gave me a kiss on the cheek before running away. It made me feel weird. Like I know the two of you used to give me kisses on the cheek, but this one felt different. Naruto said, our little Naruto is becoming a man. Anko said and started to fake cry, ignoring her behavior, that just means she likes you. Kurunai said, then why didn't she do it earlier? She was around me every day I was in Suna. Naruto said, maybe she was scared and figured that she wouldn't see you again, so she decided to do it. Anko said, is that what you did to get Aruka to date you? Naruto asked, oh no. I took that stallion home and rode him into the sunrise. Anko said, I shouldn't have asked. Naruto said, wait. You understood that reference, but couldn't understand Tamari kissing you? Anko asked, outside of you two I've never been kissed before. Naruto said, so, do you like her? Kurunai asked, I don't know. I think so. I'll know for sure when she comes to Kanoha for the exams. Naruto said, oh. Are you taking her out on a date? Anko asked, in fact I am. 
Naruto said. I can't believe it. Your very first girlfriend. Anko said. She's not my girlfriend. Naruto said. What do you plan on doing? Kurinai asked. I don't know. Maybe show her around the village. Well, the good parts at least and maybe to the monument. Don't bother following me. I can sense people so don't forget that. Naruto said and put his mask back on. Fine, but I want details after it's done. Kurinai said. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Naruto said. Wait a minute. She knows what you look like. You only met her once. How come she gets to see your face on the first day? Anko asked. Well, she asked and we were eating. It would have been rude to eat with it on. Naruto said. And then a puff of smoke went off revealing a small dragon. I have a message for you, Naruto. The dragon said and coughed up a scroll. It's weird how you can do that and not have any saliva on the scroll, Tatsu. Naruto said. That's what makes me such a nice delivery dragon. Wait. What's that smell? Is there a snake here? Let me kill it. Tetsu said and Naruto calmed her down. Relax. Do you remember the person I told you about who was betrayed by Orochimaru? Naruto asked. Yes. Tetsu said. Meet my sister, Anko Midarashi. She's not allied with them and she can't summon the snakes either, but she can use some snakes. Naruto said. I see. My apologies, Anko. Tetsu said and Anko got over her shock of seeing a dragon. Oh. Uh, sure. It's okay. Anko said. I'll summon you when I write the reply. Naruto said. See ya. Tatsu said and went up in smoke. Naruto, what was that? Kurinai asked. Are you blind? It was a small dragon. Naruto said and Kurinai's eye twitched. How did you get the dragon contract? I heard they only had one summoner before. Anko said. That one summoner was my mom. As for how I got the contract. I found a dragon wounded in the forest on my way to Suna, and then he explained to me about the war Manda started against the slugs, dragons and toads. Long story short I was able to sign the dragon contract. Naruto said. Of course. Leave it to you to find an injured dragon and get the contract. Anko said. I just have good luck. Anyway, is you go around? I need a favor. Naruto said. She should be at home right now. Today's the start of her two-week vacation after a three-month S-ranked mission. Kurinai said. Thanks. Naruto said and banished. Yuga apartment. I know you're home, Yuga. Kurinai already told me you were home. Naruto said and then the door opened. What do you want, Naruto? I'm on vacation. Yuga said. How would you like to train somebody with their sword? Naruto asked. You don't need my help anymore. Yuga said. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about Natsumi. Naruto said. I'll pass. Yuga said. Fine. I guess I'll get somebody else to train the new wielder of the Kubakirabacho. Naruto said and walked away, but Yuga appeared in front of him. What did you just say? Yuga asked. Does it matter? You said you'll pass. Naruto said and Yuga grabbed him by his collar. Enko's smart mouth rubbed off on you and I don't like it. Now, tell me what you just said or I'll give you a personal reminder as to why I'm the captain. Yuga said. Fine. Zabuza gave her the Kubakirabacho after he died on our last mission. I don't think she'll like it if Hei trained her because he coughs after every sentence and she has a bit of a short fuse. Naruto said. That's an understatement. Yuga said. Anyway, you're the best user in Konoha, so I thought you'd like to add training her to your resume. Naruto said. Tell her to meet me at Ichirikas tomorrow at noon. Yugao said and went back to her apartment, so Naruto created a shadow clone. Oh tell Natsumi the news. I need to head to Sato's shop. Naruto said and the clone vanished. The Garashi Ninja store. Yo. Old man Sato. Are you here Naruto asked. Naruto. What can I do for you today? Sato asked. I need some. Do you have anything higher than C rank? Naruto asked. In fact I do. Just got the approval to sell copies of some scrolls the other day and already made some copies. Take your pick. Sato said and pulled out three boxes of scrolls. Color arranged scrolls. Naruto asked. Trust me. I've been in this business a long time and the amount of ninja that come in here to return to that wasn't right for them because it was the wrong chakra nature gets really annoying. Sato said. Dad. I'm back. A voice yelled. Over here, Tenten. Sato said. Who's this? Tenten asked. My number one customer. Sato said. Tenten Higurashi, nice to meet you. Tenten said. Naruto Uchiha. Naruto said. So, what are you doing here? Tenten asked. Buying some ninjutsu scrolls. Naruto said. You're a ninja? Tenten asked. I know I'm taller than you, but I'm sure you can see the headband on my head. Naruto said. No need for the sarcastic answer. When did you graduate? Tenten asked. Two months ago. Naruto said. Oh, well. You're a rookie genin. That's so cute. Tenten said. I'm not a regular genin. Naruto said. Oh. Then what are you? Tenten asked. I'm an elite genin. Naruto said. That doesn't exist. Tenten said. Actually it does. The only other person in Konoha history to achieve that rank is the fourth. Sato said. Then why haven't I heard of it? Tenten asked. Because the rank was so rare since only one person got it. 
An elite genin is for somebody that is strong enough to become A, but lacks the field experience for promotion. Sato said, does that mean he can't compete in the exams? Tenten asked, I can still compete. I was never made, and I declined the promotion when it was offered to me. Naruto said, well, you better hope I'm not your opponent. Tenten said, I know. I'd hate to beat such a weak opponent. I'll see you later, old man Sato. Naruto said and vanished, we can show him weakness. Dad, I want the sword that's behind that glass case. Tenten said and pointed at the case, but it was gone. I'm afraid I can't let you have it. The rightful owner of the sword has claimed it. Sato said, you said your friend died years ago during the Nine Tails attack. How could he come and claim it? Tenten asked, he didn't, but his son did. Sato said, who is his son? Maybe I can get the sword from him. Tenten said, sorry, but I can't reveal who this person is. However, I'm sure he'll be in the exams. Sato said, do you think he'll let me have it? Tenten asked, no. That sword is one of the last things his father made, and I have a feeling he made it specifically for his son, since he wasn't much of a user as he focused mainly on ninjutsu and. Sato said, well, maybe you can make me one just like it. Tenten said, I can't. I've tried everything and the sword was bad. I don't know how or what he used, but that sword is one of a kind. Sato said, oh man. I guess I'll just have to make my own special sword then. Tenten said, you already have a ton of swords though. Actually, you have every single weapon available in Konoha. That and you're skilled a bit in. You're already a unique Kinoichi. Sato said, thanks dad, but I know you could feel the power coming from that sword. Tenten said and Sato chuckled, well, it was created by a powerful person. I've got an order to finish up. Do you mind watching the counter? Sato asked, sure. It'll give me an excuse to not train with the two idiots. Tenten said, Naruto, as he was walking around the village, Naruto looked through a few of his scrolls and realized the lack of lightning he had. If that was his strongest chakra nature, he wanted to have some strength for it. All he needed now was to find Kakashi since he was the best lightning user in Konoha. He searched for Kakashi's chakra and sighed as Kakashi was standing right behind him. You know it's rude to creep up on people like that. Especially with your reputation. Naruto said, my reputation? Kakashi asked, you're a grown man who walks around reading porn and you just snuck up behind a 13-year-old boy. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. Naruto said and Kakashi sweat dropped, right. So, what seems to be the problem? Why were you looking for me? Kakashi asked, how do you know I was looking for you? Naruto asked, you were talking to yourself out loud and I overheard that you needed to look for me. Kakashi said, right. I need your help. Naruto said, I am supposed to be your teacher. What can I do for you? Kakashi asked, I need some lightning and you're the best lightning user in Konoha. Naruto said, lightning huh? How much chakra do you have? Kakashi asked, I don't know. A lot. Naruto said, I see. How fast are you? Kakashi asked, with or without my resistance seals. Naruto asked, both. Kakashi said, well, I'd say low with them on and low to mid with them off. Naruto said, you've completed all the steps for properly controlling your chakra nature. Kakashi asked, yeah. Naruto said, meet me at training ground 7 tomorrow at 6 a.m. We'll be training all day. Kakashi said, do you mean 6 a.m. normal people time or 6 a.m. our time? Naruto asked, uh, our time. Kakashi said and went up and smoke, all right. 6 a.m. training. Naruto said, Naruto. A voice yelled and he turned around, um, what is it, Eno? Naruto asked, as Eno and Sakura came up to him, is it true Eno asked, uh, I need a bit more to go on. Naruto said, did Sakura kiss Sasuke on your last mission Eno asked, yeah. Naruto sighed and Eno screamed, how could you let that happen? Eno asked, what the hell was I supposed to do? Jump in front of Sasuke to take the kiss. No offense, Sakura, but I don't want you kissing me. Naruto said, none taken. Sakura said, if we're finished here, I need to go do something. Naruto said, don't you understand how serious this is Eno asked, not really. Actually, I don't even care to be honest with you. Naruto said, B, but I was supposed to be Sasuke's first kiss. Eno said, you've known him for like seven to eight years and had a crush on him the entire time. You had plenty of time to be his first kiss. Just let her have this one. I mean, she did kiss Kiba after all. Naruto said and they both paled, I guess you're right. At least it was before he licked Akamara's ass. Eno said, can I go now? Naruto asked, we were about to have some barbecue with all of the people from our class. You should come with us. Eno said, I can't. I have a mission I need to do. Naruto said, we just got back. Sakura said, I know, but the old man needed me for another mission. I'll come next time if nothing comes up. Naruto said and vanished, fine. Let's go, Eno. Sakura said and Naruto vanished, records vault. Naruto was doing his current S rank mission, and so far it was going slow. 
Hirazin led him into the office to see who was going through the files, and he had shadow clones covering every angle of the room with their chakra concealed. He's been in the room for nearly six hours, and he felt that the member left his guarding duty, but he wasn't supposed to leave. He kept his sensing ability at its highest point and then saw somebody enter the room very carefully to not set off any alarms. Who is this? I've never seen him in the village before, but he's wearing a Kanoha headband. Naruto thought. All right. Sasuke and Naruto Ichiha are the folders I'm looking for. The person said and looked through some files. Nothing has changed really since the last time I was here. Wait a minute. What's this? It says Sasuke finally awakened his Sharingan on his last mission. Naruto's files have changed, but there's not much in here. There's nothing about his skills or anything. Only his mission's record that's clearly false. I mean 0D rank, 12C rank, 8B rank, 1A rank and 4S rank missions, but one of those S rank missions is still in progress. This is clearly a folder for a seasoned user, but he's only a genin. The person said and never noticed a paralyzing seal on the ground until it was too late. What? The person thought before he was knocked out, but he went up in smoke, revealing it to be a shadow clone. One down. One to go. The second person is close, but it's like he's waiting for this guy to leave before he comes in. Naruto thought, as he signaled for a shadow clone to leave, and a few minutes later, somebody came in with an Iowa headband scratched out. Minato Namikas, where are your records, you son of a bitch? The person asked himself, so he's a rogue Iowa ninja looking for something on my father. Naruto thought, as the guy found his folder, but it was sealed shut. Another fucking seal. What's this? Naruto Uchiha. A genin with a record like this? There's no way that's possible. Wait a minute. He looks like the Namika's scum, except he wears a mask. Clever, but not clever enough. Looks like I have my target in the exams. I kill him and I'll get a pair of Sharingan eyes to bring with me to Iowa once the Tsuchikage accepts me back into the village. Now, I have to wait for foreign ninja to arrive and take one of their places. The person said and quickly left. Thanks a lot, dad. You just had to kill an entire Iowa army by yourself. Naruto thought and went to Hiruzen's office, Hokage office, I'm back with information on both of the spies, old man. Naruto said, already? I wasn't really expecting you to find anything. Hiruzen said, that's insulting to my stealth skills. Anyway, I've never seen either of them in the village before, but one of them had on a Kanoha headband. Naruto said, I see. What was he after? Hiruzen asked, he was specifically looking into Sasuke and my records. He doesn't believe my record and none of my skills were listed on my file. Naruto said, well, your record isn't a lie. As for your skills not being there. You never really showed much of your skills for anybody to put in there. Hiruzen said, oh yeah. Anyway, I was able to get a good read on this guy's chakra, so if he's ever around I can point him out. Naruto said, that's good. What about the other one? Hiruzen asked, he's definitely from Iowa, but he's a rogue ninja. He figured out I'm the son of the fourth and he's going to impersonate somebody in the exams to come after me. Naruto said, what about Natsumi? Hiruzen asked, he never looked at her file. He figured out my identity and left. Naruto said, if I were to show you the Iwa section of the bingo book, would you be able to identify him? Hiruzen asked and pulled out a bingo book, yeah. I got a pretty good look at him. This is him. Naruto said and pointed at the picture of an Iwa ninja, the Waji of the Three Stone Brothers. Two of them were killed off by a squad of ours a few years ago. Seems like his skills haven't changed much over the years. Prefers close-range fighting and he appeared to be skating on the ground, but that's due to his earth chakra nature. Hiruzen said, what rank is he? Naruto asked, he's listed in the B rank section with a kill on side order and a bounty of 150,000 yen. Hiruzen said, he decided to come to Kanoha of all places. What a dumbass. Naruto said and Hiruzen chuckled, yes indeed. What about the other one? Hiruzen asked, he has ash gray hair and black rim circular glasses. I didn't get a good look at him, but I know his chakra signature. He's not in the village since he used a shadow clone. Naruto said, I see. I'll look into this with Anko and Ibiki. I won't close this mission yet since we still have one unidentifiable spy. Hiruzen said, I'll see you later, old man. I'm starting my training with Kakashi tomorrow. Naruto said and vanished, you can come out now, Jiraiya and don't think he didn't know you were there. Hiruzen said, that's Naruto. He looks like a mini Kakashi. Jiraiya said, blame Sayuri for that one. She didn't want anyone to think he was Minato's son when he couldn't defend himself. Hiruzen said, what about Natsumi? Jiraiya asked, the younger but more brash version of Kashina. When will you reveal yourself to them? Hiruzen asked, I'm trying to uncover something about Orochimaru, but if everything goes well, then I'll meet them during or after the exams. Jiraiya said, will you train them? Hiruzen asked, I'll see what I can do. I know the Toads already want Natsumi to sign the contract. I'll have to figure something out for Naruto, since everything I'll be training Natsumi has to do with the Toads. 
Jiraiya said, have you changed your mind about training her with the Nine Tails Chakra? Hiruzen asked, no. From what you've told me, she can already use some of it, so I've decided to change my approach on training her. Jiraiya said, I understand. Have you had any luck locating Tsunade? Hiruzen asked, afraid not. She's good at staying off the grid, but I have my spy network looking for her, and they'll inform me when she's located. Jiraiya said, let me know when she's found. It would be nice to see my other student after over 20 years. Hiruzen said, why am I looking for her in the first place? Jiraiya asked, it's because Naruto wanted to talk to her about the disease his mother died from. It's been six years since she died and our doctors are stumped. They haven't made any progress in figuring out what was wrong with her. Naruto even took up studying medical ninjutsu ever since she died, and although he could use a bit more practice, I'd say he's pretty good at it. Hiruzen said, all the potential he has, and he decided to become a medical ninja. Jiraiya said, he's not a medical ninja. He has skills in every aspect of being a ninja. Hiruzen said, what's his specialty? Jiraiya asked, he doesn't have one. It's why I made him an elite genin rather than a special genin. Hiruzen said, what about Natsumi? Jiraiya asked, from what I've seen during their bell test, she'll be very good at tojutsu, and thanks to her chakra reserves due to the nine tails, she'll be an injutsu specialist. However, she wields the kubakirabacho now, so add to that. Hiruzen said, the kubakirabacho? How'd she manage that? Jiraiya asked, apparently Zabuza gave her the sword before he died. From what I saw, she can carry the sword with no problem, since she forgot she was carrying it. Hiruzen said, she forgot that she was carrying around a sword that's taller than her talk about being Kashina's twin. Jiraiya said, yes, but I should recommend her to get started on ninjutsu since she doesn't know many. Hiruzen said, you do that. I think I'll go see how they're doing before I head out. Jiraiya said and banished, I should have warned him about Natsumi's traps in her apartment. Hiruzen said, Naruto. As Naruto was walking around Konoha, he felt the same chakra signature from Hiruzen's office following him. He started to cut through alleyways, take the roofs and even used a hinge to try and fool this person, but whoever it was, stayed on his trail. After a while, Naruto decided to end this little game and went to a secluded area in the forest. You can come out now. Naruto said and Jiraiya appeared in front of him. So, you're Naruto. Jiraiya said, cut the bullshit. What do you want? Naruto asked, right. I was just checking out the new generation of shinobi and you caught my attention. Jiraiya said, you're a horrible liar. You must be a pedophile since you followed me to a secluded spot in the forest. Naruto said, you led me here. Jiraiya said, no. I was going for an evening walk you decided to follow me here. Now, tell me what you want or I'll go running into the village screaming that you're after me. I know the men may not harm you due to your books you write for them, but the women in this village hate pedophiles and perverts. Especially perverts like you, Jiraiya the. Naruto said, tricked by a 13-year-old. This is embarrassing. Jiraiya thought, so, you know who I am. Jiraiya stated, your face is in history books along with your other two teammates. That and you trained my father. Now, what do you want? Naruto asked, okay. You caught me. I just wanted to see how the son of my late student has been. Hiruzen told me about you a bit and I wanted to see for myself. Jiraiya said, you want to fight? Naruto asked, no. Jiraiya said, good. I don't feel like getting my ass kicked right now. Naruto said and Jiraiya sweat dropped, at least you're honest about your skills. However, I was really checking to see how you were. I was going to check on your sister as well, but I couldn't find her. Jiraiya said, she's having a sleepover with Ino and some other gen in Kinoichi. If you try to peek at my sister I swear I'll cut your nuts off and shove them down your throat before handing you over to Anko. Naruto said and Jiraiya paled, I wouldn't do that. She's only a kid. Jiraiya said, with your reputation, I wouldn't put it past you. Naruto said and then threw a kunai up into a tree, causing a blank mask to fall out before it went up in flames. Nice shot. Jiraiya said, I've been dealing with Danzo and his roots for six years. I've been fighting them off, honing my skills and protecting Natsumi until she graduated from the ninja academy. Naruto said, this is how you've gotten this good already? Jiraiya asked, yeah. The root helped me gain fighting experience thanks to them constantly attacking me or trying to go after Natsumi. Naruto said, does Natsumi know about this? Jiraiya asked, sort of. She knows I've been protecting her from ninja and civilians since the day we met, but she doesn't know that it's an illegally run division after her. She needs to train harder before I tell her. Naruto said and Jiraiya nodded, from what I can tell, you've done a good job protecting her. Jiraiya said, she's the only family I have left. I'll protect her even when she doesn't want or need my help. Naruto said, your parents would be proud of you. Jiraiya said, you don't know that. Naruto said, I do know that. The one thing both of your parents cherished more than anything in life was family. Jiraiya said, I've started to kill people at the age of seven though. Wouldn't they be kind of disappointed? Naruto asked, no. 
Your father was 10 when he had his first kill, and if I'm not mistaken, your mother was 8 when she had her first kill. I think they would understand why you had to kill at such a young age. Jiraiya said, I felt like a bad person every time I had to kill somebody. Naruto said, trust me, kid. You're not a bad person. Jiraiya said, how do you know? Naruto asked, Sirutobi sensei told me about how your mother died and what you're doing. Studying medical ninjutsu to try and find a cure so somebody else with that disease won't suffer the same fate isn't something a bad person would do. Even going as far as sending a messenger to find Sanadi to help with this disease is also a good thing. Jiraiya said, a messenger was killed before he even left the village. Cat found his body in an alleyway with the message still attached to him. Naruto said, the old man forgot to tell me that, but it's probably why he's been on me even more to find Sanadi and bring her here. Jiraiya said, are you close to finding her? Naruto asked, not really, but give me a couple of months and I should be able to track her down. Jiraiya said, when you find her, I want to come with you. Naruto said, why? Jiraiya asked, because there's a chance that she might not return to the village if you find her. I want to go just so I can give her a copy of everything we found out about the disease and its symptoms. That's all I want to do. After that, I leave and go back to the village to leave you alone. Naruto said, I'll talk to the old man about it. Keep watching your sister for me. Jiraiya said and vanished, what does that mean? Naruto asked himself, he didn't dwell on it too long since he went home and got prepared for his training with Kakashi tomorrow. All Naruto knew was that he needed to get stronger to protect his loved ones. Before he went to sleep, he summoned Tatsu and gave her a letter to deliver. Chapter 6. Chunin Exams. Three and a half months have gone by and it is now time for the exams. Naruto's training has really paid off even though it was tough with him and Kakashi, each having their own missions to do, but it was worth it. Even though Naruto originally wanted help with just his lightning, they actually worked on everything. He was now as strong as a low jonin, thanks to Kakashi and his tough training regime. While Naruto was training with Kakashi, Natsumi was also doing her own training, and the results were astounding to say the least. Her training got serious when she met Yugao who trained her to use the Kubakirabacho, and when she asked Kakashi with some private help. Of course she went to Naruto as well for the occasional spar, and he was impressed. She was a low tune in Kanoichi with skills in ninjutsu and tojutsu. Her tojutsu was so good that she could now go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sasuke and managed to beat him half the time when Kakashi had them spar during team training. She was the perfect counter for Naruto's ninjutsu since she had wind, water and earth chakra natures, as well as the wood which caused Hiruzen to have a heart attack when he found out. She didn't understand the big deal about it until Naruto explained to her that she had the rare Hashirama Senju and that it was extremely powerful. Sasuke was so busy being angry at Natsumi and Naruto's growth that he actually hindered himself during training. He spied on them during his training to see if he could copy any from them and nearly killed himself when he copied the shadow clone from Natsumi. The result of that was him staying in the hospital for nearly two weeks thanks to the strain on his chakra reserves. Of course Akura was right by his side every day he was there since she still didn't train as much, but she was about to get a wake-up call very soon. Sakura, Natsumi, Naruto and Sasuke were all waiting for Kakashi to arrive at training ground 7, and they were all getting annoyed except for Naruto who sent a shadow clone in his place. While he was sleeping, Sasuke and Natsumi were glaring at each other, and you could feel the hatred coming from both of them. They've been like this since the wave mission. Sakura thought, and then Kakashi showed up, hello there. Good morning. Kakashi said, you're late. Sakura yelled, yeah. Even Naruto was on time. Natsumi yelled and pointed at Naruto who was sleeping in the tree, they don't know that it's a shadow clone. Kakashi thought, so, what are we doing today, Cyclops sensei? Natsumi asked, Cyclops. Anyway, we have some D-rank missions to complete and then you have the rest of the day to yourselves. Kakashi said and they groaned, another stupid D-rank mission come on. Give us something exciting to do. Natsumi said, the quicker we get this done, the quicker you can enjoy your day. Kakashi said, few hours later, seriously, Natsumi. You're hopeless. I think you've set the record for most times getting injured on D-rank missions. It's pathetic really. Sakura said as they were walking around the village, you wanna go, Pinky keep testing me, and I'll give you another knot on that big ass forehead of yours. Natsumi said, bring it, tomato. I'll finish you off myself. Sakura said, oh yeah then let's go. Natsumi said, and then a catfight started between the two of them, I guess we're not making a lot of progress on the teamwork thing, huh? Kakashi asked, that's right. Our teamwork is all messed up because of Sakura and Sasuke. She's useless and Sasuke thinks he's better than everyone else. Natsumi said, as she had Sakura in a headlock, not everyone. Just you. I'm better and stronger than you are. Sasuke said, if I remember correctly, I kicked your ass so many times over these past three and a half months that it's not even funny, duck but. Natsumi said and Sasuke grit his teeth before walking away, I am not useless. 
Sakura said and bit Natsumi. Ow. That's it. Natsumi said and they started to argue. Alright, guys. Let's call it a day. You can beat each other to a pulp some other time. Anyway, I have to file my report on this mission. Kakashi said and went up in smoke. Now that he's gone, I don't have to hold back. You're dead, Pinky. Natsumi said. Bring it, tomato. Wait, what's that? Sakura asked as she saw a box on the ground with holes in it. I don't know. Natsumi said and ran around a few times with the box following her until she had enough. That's the worst disguise I've ever seen. Get your ass out here. Natsumi said. You saw through my camouflage again. You're slick, boss. Just what I'd expect from my greatest rival. A kid boy said and the box went up in smoke. Konohimaru, Yudin, Mogi. What do you want? I have to train. Natsumi said. You promised that you would play ninja with us today. Come on. Konohimaru said. Oh, did I say that? Natsumi asked. A ninja playing ninja. That is so lame. Sakura said. Shut up, Pinky. Natsumi said. Hey, boss. Who's this girl? Why is her forehead so big? Konohimaru asked and Natsumi sighed. I'd run if I were you, Konohimaru. Natsumi said, and when Konohimaru looked at Sakura, he took off running until he bumped into somebody. Do you need something? The boy asked and lifted Konohimaru up by his scarf. Konohimaru. Natsumi said. So, does this hurt, punk? The boy asked as he started to choke Konohimaru. Put him down, Kankuro. You know you'll pay for it later. Tamari said. You better take your hands off him right now. Natsumi said. So these are the Leaf Village's genin. They don't look like much compared to Naruto. Kankuro thought. We've got a few minutes before he gets here. Let's mess with these punks. Kankuro said. Let go of me you jerk. Konohimaru said and started to kick at Kankuro. You're feisty, but not for long. Kankuro said. Put him down. Natsumi said and ran at Kankuro, but something tripped her. Your leaf genin too. Looks like your village is full of wimps, except for that kid Naruto I met a few months back. Kankuro said. Do you know him? Natsumi asked. Yeah. He was in our village during a sandstorm and he stayed with us. Tamari said and then Konohimaru disappeared from Kankuro's hand. What the? Kankuro asked. He's gone. Natsumi thought. What just happened? Sakura thought. You're not even here that long and you're already starting problems, Kankuro. Picking on children. Have you no shame? Naruto asked. Naruto. I wasn't going to do anything that bad to him. Kankuro said and chuckled. As annoying as the little boy is, he's the grandson of the and he has a squad following him every day. One bad move and then we would have had to send you back to Suna in a body bag. Naruto said and then caught a rock aimed for Kankuro. Who threw that? Natsumi asked. Nice of you to join us, Sasuke. Same for you, Gara. Naruto said and looked up into the trees. Does he not see me standing here? Tamari thought and started to pout. Sasuke. Sakura said. Thanks for the save, Naruto. Konohimaru said. How was he able to sense me? I know I had my chakra hidden. Sasuke thought. Kankuro, back off. You're an embarrassment to our village. Gara said. Uh. Hey Gara. Kankuro said. This is the guy Naruto detected. He said he was here and I'm just now seeing him. Sasuke thought. Have you forgotten the reason we came all the way here? Gara asked. Something is wrong. Gara is not calm or anything, but he should be. Naruto thought. I know. They started it though. Kankuro said. Shut up or I'll kill you. Gara said. Right. I was totally out of line. Sorry Gara. Kankuro said. I'm sorry for any trouble he's caused. Gara said and vanished into sand. He has the same evil look in his eye as Sasuke. Natsumi thought. Let's go. We didn't come here to play games. Gara said. Hold on. Sakura said. What? Tamari asked. I can tell from your headband that you come from the village hidden in the sand. Of course we're allies, but no shinobi can enter another's village without permission. So state your purpose. Sakura said. Really? Is this your team, Naruto? Tamari asked. Something like that. Naruto said. Have they been living under a rock? They don't seem to know what's going on here. For your information, we have permission. We are hidden sand genin and we're here for the exams. Get the picture. Tamari asked. Exams? Oh yeah, that's right. I thought we had a bit more time. Natsumi said. We do. They don't start until next week. I'm already registered for the exam since I have to take them alone. Naruto said. Why? Natsumi asked. Because the maximum number of people you can have on a team is three. Let's face it, I can take on all three of you single-handedly, so it makes sense that I take them alone. Naruto said. We'll see you later at the exams. Especially you, handsome. Tamari said and gave Naruto a kiss on the cheek before leaving. What was that? Hey, blondie. Keep your lips off my brother. I'll kick your fucking ass you hussy. He already has a girlfriend. Natsumi said. I've told you this plenty of times, Natsumi. She's not my girlfriend. Naruto said. Still, blondie here can't go around kissing you. She even pulled your mask down a bit. Natsumi said. Well, she's already seen me without the mask. 
This is the girl I went out on a date with back in Suna. We've been in contact ever since. Naruto said, yup and you owe me a date. I'll be waiting outside the Golden Leaf Hotel at about 7. Don't be late. Tamari said and they walked away. Naruto. Sakura said, what's up? Naruto asked, how come she gets to see what you look like under the mask? Sakura asked, we were on a date and it would have been rude to eat with it on. Naruto said, well, can I see what you look like? Sakura asked, why is it so important to see what I look like under the mask? Naruto asked, because her, Ino and a bunch of other girls have a bet going to see who can catch you with your mask off first. Mitsumi said, what does the winner get? Naruto asked, the winner has first dibs on your first kiss. Mitsumi said, seriously? Well, that's not going to happen. Naruto said, don't worry. I'll protect you from the fangirls. Mitsumi said and they all walked away. Next day, he's late again. He sets the time and we have to wait hours for him. What about my feelings? I rushed here so fast that I didn't even have time to blow dry my hair. Sakura said, I didn't even have enough time to brush my teeth or put on a clean bra. Mitsumi said, you didn't. That's really gross and unladylike, Mitsumi. Sakura said, at least I can wear a bra, flat chest. Mitsumi said and they started to argue. It's the first thing in the morning and they're already driving me crazy. Sasuke thought and then Kakashi appeared. Hey. Good morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late. I got lost on the path of life. Kakashi said. You liar. Mitsumi and Sakura yelled, but then Naruto showed up. What's your excuse for being late? Mitsumi asked. I had to help an old lady carry her bags home and she stayed on the other side of the village. I wasn't paying attention and I got lost after I took the wrong turn. Naruto said. You liar. Sakura yelled. Actually, I kind of believe that one. I've seen him take wrong turns quite a bit because he wasn't paying attention. Mitsumi said and Kakashi could tell Naruto was smirking behind his mask. He's even better at making excuses than me. Kakashi thought. I know this is a bit sudden, but I recommend you all for the exams. All four of you. Naruto already signed up to take them solo. These are the application forms. Kakashi said and held out three applications. Application forms? Sakura asked. This is all voluntary. It's up to each of you. If you don't feel ready, you can wait until next year. Kakashi said, well it's about damn time. Mitsumi yelled and snatched her application. Whoever wants to take the exams, sign the application and come to room 301 at the academy. It's 3 p.m. five days from now. That's it. Kakashi said and left. Junin exams. One step closer to becoming I'll be up against a lot of wicked ninja. Mitsumi said and started to giggle like a maniac. I better get the chance to fight that guy Gara and Naruto. Sasuke thought and glanced at Naruto. This is hopeless. I can't keep up with Sasuke, and I can't even keep up with Mitsumi. Naruto's a tough challenge, but I think he holds out on me when we spar, and he still wipes the floor with me. I'll never pass these exams. Sakura thought. Hey Naruto. Mitsumi said. Hmm. Naruto answered. How awesome would it be if we fought in the exams? Mitsumi asked. It wouldn't change much. You'd still lose, but I'll give you a fighting chance. Naruto said. I can totally beat you. Mitsumi said, I can counter everything you do ninjutsu wise, to jutsu wise and wise. Jinjutsu you don't stand a chance against, and let's just say that my training the past three and a half months will make what you do for training look like child's play. Naruto said, I'll find a way to beat you and when I do, you have to raise my hand and kiss my feet while you tell me how awesome I am. Mitsumi said, is that a challenge? Naruto asked, you damn right it is. We're tied at 24 and this is the tiebreaker. Mitsumi said, you say that every time we're tied. Naruto said, you two still do your crazy challenges? Sakura asked, you and Ino still fight over Sasuke? Naruto asked, that's different. Sakura said, it's pathetic. Fighting over a boy who isn't all that and doesn't even want you. Mitsumi said, he is all that and I'll make him want me. Sakura said, if he's all that, then why can't he beat me or Naruto? He has the Sharingan which he claims is the ultimate, but he's lost to me while using it, and he lost to Naruto while using it. Naruto doesn't even use his Sharingan when he spars with us. He's just overhyped because his clan was killed. Nothing he does really stands out that makes people go wow. Mitsumi said. How about I show you what you're messing with, loser? Sasuke asked and activated his Sharingan. Save it for the exams, Sasuke. Naruto said. Shut up. You don't tell me what to do, pathetic half-breed. Sasuke said. Calling me a half-breed isn't much of an insult. Let me ask you something, Sasuke. What is the most important thing to you in life? Naruto asked. Power. Power is all that matters to me and nothing else. Sasuke said, I see. I'll see you all at the exams. Naruto said and walked away. Most important thing in life. Sakura thought as she watched Naruto walk away. I'm gonna head home. Sakura said and walked away. Me too. Mitsumi said as she left Sasuke alone. Okage office. Yo, old man. 
Naruto said, as he walked into the office. What can I help you with, Naruto? Hiruzen asked. Both of the spies are in the village. Naruto said. I'll place an ambu watch on them. Hiruzen said. No, don't. We don't know if they're sensor type ninja, and let's be honest, in this village other than Niko sucks. They couldn't even find Natsumi for an entire year after she was kicked out of the orphanage. Naruto said and Hiruzen sighed. I'm sorry Naruto. I have to do this. Hiruzen said. No. You don't get it. The unidentifiable spy came in with another person who I can tell is a cage level shinobi. Whoever it is will be able to sense it with ease. Naruto said and Hiruzen was shocked. The cage level shinobi. Why would a cage level shinobi be in the exams? I look into it. Hiruzen said. I know I'm going solo in the exams, but protecting Natsumi is my main priority. Naruto said. I understand, but I want you to protect yourself as well. I don't care if you have to blow something up, get away from whoever it is if you can. Hiruzen said. I will. So, can you tell me the parts of the exams? Naruto asked and Hiruzen chuckled. I'm afraid not, Naruto. That would be cheating. Hiruzen said. So? Naruto said and Hiruzen just looked at him. Although he's like Minato at times, he has a tendency to act like Sayuri as well. Hiruzen thought. Just get ready. You still have five days to prepare. Hiruzen said. Yeah yeah. So, were you serious about me blowing something up? Naruto asked. Yes. Hiruzen said. Good. I'll have to get Natsumi's help with that. Naruto said and when he walked away, Hiruzen saw a ghostly figure of Sayuri and Kishina grinning. What did I just do? Hiruzen thought. Lord, the council is waiting for you. His secretary said. I'll be there shortly. Hiruzen said. Of course. The secretary said. Five days later Chunin exams. The time for the exams was finally here and everyone was getting ready. Natsumi joined Naruto at the memorial stone early in the morning after she learned her parents' names were there. They stood there for three hours in silence before they made it to the academy where Sasuke and Sakura were both waiting for them. Took you too long enough. You're both late. Sakura said. We got a bit distracted. Natsumi said and just kept walking. What's gotten into her? She seems different. Sasuke thought. Are you both ready? Naruto asked. HN. Sasuke said and walked away. Us? What about you? You're taking it by yourself. Sakura said. I'll be fine. I've been training pretty hard these past few months. Naruto said, as they entered the academy. I know. I've heard you were training with Kakashi-sensei a bit. Sakura said. I was. How about you? Did you train? Naruto asked and he already had a good idea of her answer. No, but it's not because I didn't want to. It's just that everything I tried didn't seem to fit me. I mean, thanks to our spars I can break out of some, but being a ninjutsu and tojutsu specialist doesn't seem to work for me. Maybe I should give up after the exams. The only person I might be able to beat is Ino, and that's not really saying anything since she's just like me. Sakura said. Read this. Naruto said and gave her a book. What is it? Sakura asked. It's a beginner's medical ninjutsu book by Tsunade Senju. I had the old man give this to me a while back, and I've been done with it for like four years. Naruto said. Medical ninjutsu? I'll give it a try. Maybe I'll shadow somebody at the hospital if this fits me. Sakura said. I'll stop you right there. The people at the hospital suck. It's a reason why our fatality rate is so high. This book was written by the world's best medical ninja, so I think you'll be fine. It mainly has to do with cleaning wounds and bandaging them, as well as how to identify the basic poisons. Naruto said. Thank you Naruto. Sakura said. No problem. Naruto said and pulled down his mask giving her a smile, causing her jaw to drop. He's hotter than Sasuke. Sakura thought and blushed. W we should catch up to Sasuke and Natsumi. Sakura said and walked quicker. Works every time. Naruto said as they caught up to Sasuke and Natsumi. What's going on here? Sakura asked. I don't know. Two people are blocking the door. Natsumi said, as they saw a bowl cut haired boy get knocked to the ground. You're taking the exams, but you can't even get past us. Why don't you just give up now before you get hurt? One of the boys said. Yeah. I think I hear your mommy calling you. The other said. Wait a minute. Is that Izumo and Katetsu in a hinge? I wonder what they're doing here. Naruto thought. Please, that's harsh. A random genin said. Did you say harsh? Don't kid yourself. We're being nice by comparison. The exams are gonna make this look like a picnic. Katetsu said. Some of you won't survive the exam, others will be wrecked for life, and some of you may go crazy. Izumo said. For it's always life and death. You think it's a joke? Chunin are qualified to lead missions. The life of your teammates is in your hands, so you better be tough enough to take the heat. Delicate little girls don't belong here. Katetsu said. We're just thinning out the herd. You won't pass anyway, so go home and play with your dolls. Izumo said and then Team 7 walked over to them. Very nice speech. Now, both of you step aside and let me through. While you're at it, drop them. We can see through your illusion anyway. We're going to the third floor and this is only the second. 
Sasuke said. Well, well. Katetsu said. So, you noticed them, huh? Izumo asked. Tell them, Sakura. I'm sure you saw it before anyone else did. You have the sharpest eyes and best analytical skills on our team. You must have seen this coming a mile away. Sasuke said. You also have the Sharingan. Or did you forget, dipshit? It's obvious they're doing this to get rid of the weaker competition, but Nuo, Sir Dumbas here had to go and ruin it. Unbelievable. Sometimes I wonder if you're dumber than Kiba. Natsumi said. I mean. She has a point. Tenten, you can stop acting now. Naruto said. How'd you know? Tenten asked. I've seen you plenty of times and witnessed your training. There's no way you're this weak. Naruto said. Fine. I guess our plan is over with guys. Wait a minute. That sword on your back, where did you get it? Tenten asked. From your father's shop. I was able to pull it out. Naruto said. Can I have it? Tenten asked. No, and if you think my sword is special, just wait until Natsumi uses her sword. Naruto said, and then her teammate walked up to Sakura. What happened to the bruises he had before? They're gone. Sasuke thought. My name is Rock Lee. You're Sakura, right? Rock Lee asked. Huh? Sakura asked. Please be my girlfriend. I will protect you with my life. Rock Lee said. Definitely not. Sakura said and Lee suddenly lost confidence. Why? Rock Lee asked. Because you're a weirdo. Sakura said and Lee hung his head in shame. Come on, Pinky. It's not like many guys will ask you out anyway. Natsumi said. Quiet you. I don't see anybody asking you out either. Sakura said. Hey you. Over here. What's your name? The other boy on Tenten's team asked looking at Sasuke. You should give your own name before asking for someone else's. Sasuke said. You're a rookie, aren't you? How old are you anyway? The boy asked. He's 13 and if you want to date him you have a long line of fangirls to get behind. Natsumi said. What was that? The boy asked. What? You can't fucking hear. You heard what I said. Natsumi said, but then she was picked up and placed over Naruto's shoulder. Alright. That's enough from you. Let's go guys. Naruto said. Hey. Put me down. Natsumi whined. Nope. Naruto said. I'm wearing a blouse. I can't be like this. Natsumi said. You're wearing pants underneath. You'll be fine. Naruto said. What if the pale-eyed boy peeks on me? Natsumi whined. Then I'll kick his ass during the exams. Naruto said and she gave up. Fine. Natsumi said and pouted as Naruto carried her away. They're funny. What's the matter, Niji? Tenten asked. Who was that boy with the mask? Niji asked. That's Naruto Uchiha. From what I heard he's taking the exams as a solo since the most you can have on a team is three. Tenten said. Naruto Uchiha. He's the one guy sensei told us about. Lee said. That's right. He's an elite genin and turned down a field promotion a few months back since he wants to become a with Natsumi. Tenten said. So, how strong do you think he is? Niji asked. I don't know. He's definitely level at least. I've heard my dad refer to him as the most balanced shinobi since he's skilled in every aspect of being a ninja. Ninjutsu, tojutsu, medical ninjutsu, you name it. Apparently he has speed along with power to match it from what little information Guy sensei was able to gather. Tenten said. Naruto of the Achiha clan. Niji thought. Are you gonna challenge him? Tenten asked. HN. Niji said as he walked away with Tenten and Lee. Room 301. After leaving the mess on the second floor, Naruto, Sakura, Natsumi and Sasuke finally made it to the exam room, but Sasuke had a few scratches on him. Rock Lee tracked them down and challenged both Sasuke and Naruto to a fight which Naruto declined, but Sasuke accepted the challenge. Needless to say that even with the Sharingan, Sasuke was no match for him. Glad you all came, especially you, Sakura. Now you can all formally take the exams. Kakashi said, as he was waiting for them, what do you mean? Sakura asked, in order for you to take the exams, every member of the team must be here to enter. That's how it is this year. Usually only teams of three would be able to enter, but due to our unique situation, we had to change the rules a bit. Kakashi said, but you said the decision to take the exam was up to the individual. Sakura said, that's right. I did. Kakashi said, enough already. Can you move and let us in, Cyclops and Sainitsumi asked, as she started to get angry. I'm with her on this one. I don't really feel like hearing a speech or anything right now. Naruto said. Fine. Sakura, Naruto, Sasuke and Itsumi. I'm proud of you. I couldn't ask for a better team. Good luck. Kakashi said and moved from in front of the doors. We won't let you down, Kakashi sensei. Natsumi said as they walked into the room. I guess we're not alone. Sakura said, as every genin in the room was looking at them, I had no idea that there would be so much competition. If being scary looking was one of the tests, they've got me beat. Sakura thought. Sasuke, where have you been? Ino asked as she jumped on his back. Hey Ino. Natsumi said. Hey girl. Boy, Sasuke. You have no idea how much you'd show up here. I've missed those brooding good looks of yours. Ino said. Hey, you porker. 
Back off. He's mine. Sakura said. This forehead. They let you in? Still go those big frown lines between your billboard brow, I see. Ino said. Leave my forehead out of it. Sakura said and growled at Ino. They do this every time. Let's see, other than me and Natsumi, Gara, Tamari, Kankuro and six others, everyone has basic chakra levels. Three of them are that team with a music note on their headband. I haven't heard of that village before. Two of them are the spies and the other one. I don't know who this person is, but they've got cage level reserves, and their chakra is sinister. I'll have to be on guard at all times. Naruto thought and he was brought out of his thoughts when a voice spoke up. H hi, and Naruto. I am glad you made it here. Hinata said. Hmm? Oh, hey. It's Hinata, right? Naruto asked and Hinata deflated. It's Hinata. Kiba said. Whatever. I was close enough. Naruto said. Naruto, care for some treats. Ino asked. Come on. Take the bait. Ino thought. No thank you. I already ate. Naruto sighed and Sakura smirked. Hey Ino. Guess what? Sakura said. What? Forehead. Ino asked. I saw Naruto without his mask on. Sakura said. What? Ino yelled. Yeah. He showed me before we came into the exams. Sakura said. That's not fair. Now you get to have his first kiss. Ino said. Nah. I don't want it. Sakura said. Is he ugly? Because I'm not kissing an ugly boy. Ino said. Actually, he's not. H he's hotter than Sasuke actually. Sakura said. What? There's no way he's hotter than Sasuke. Natsumi, is that true? Ino asked. Uh, I don't go around checking out my brother. That's weird. Natsumi said. Hey, you guys might want to keep it down a little. I mean, no offense, but you're the ten rookies, right? Fresh out of the academy? I wouldn't go making a spectacle of yourselves. Just cool it. This isn't a class field trip. A boy with glasses said. So, this is the other spy. Naruto thought. Well, who asked you, four eyes? Better yet, what's your damn name? Natsumi asked. I'm Kabuto Yakushi. Kabuto said. Kabuto Yakushi, huh? Naruto thought. See those guys right there? They're from the Rain Village. Very touchy. They all are. This exam makes everyone tense, and you don't want to rub them the wrong way right now. You can't help it. I mean how could you know how things work? You're just rookies. You remind me of myself a while back. Kabuto said. This isn't the first time you've taken the exam? Sakura asked. Obviously not. I mean look at him. He's obviously got to be at least 19 or 20. From what I gathered, the exams happen twice a year every six months. That would mean you've failed the exams nearly 14 times. Natsumi said. Actually, this is my seventh try. Kabuto said. Well, you only suck half as much as I originally thought. Natsumi said. Wow, a veteran. You must be an expert by now. Sakura said. I don't know. I mean something doesn't seem right about this. Natsumi said. Huh? What do you mean? Ino asked. I mean if he failed the exam so many times, why bother to keep trying? Every year he gains experience from these things and missions, but he still can't pass. Natsumi said. She doesn't know how right she is at this moment. Naruto thought. Don't listen to her. She's not the brightest in the bunch. Sakura said. I'll have you know that our academic grades were basically identical. If I'm not the brightest in the brunch, then neither are you. Natsumi said. Listen, since you're an expert here, do you think you could give us some tips? Choji asked. Sure. I can help you kids out a little with my ninja info cards. Kabuto said. What are those? Sakura asked. It's hard to explain, but these cards have been chakra encoded with everything I've learned over the past four years. I've got more than 200 of them. So you see, I haven't been completely wasting my time. Kabuto said. Obviously you have if you never passed the exams. Natsumi said. Natsumi, be quiet. Continue, Kabuto. You've piqued my interest with those cards of yours. Naruto said, and then Natsumi looked at him. What's he planning? Something like this wouldn't interest him in the slightest. Actually, I don't even think he'd need any help given how strong he is. Natsumi thought. They may not look like much to the naked eye. In fact, they appear blank. Don't want just anyone seeing this stuff. Kabuto said and then Sasuke stepped forward. Do those cards of yours have any information on the other candidates, individually? Sasuke asked. If he does, then it won't be from anybody that's taking the exams for the first time. Naruto said. Do you have someone special in mind? Kabuto asked and glanced at Naruto. I might. Sasuke said. I can't promise my information is complete or perfect, but I've got something on just about everyone, including you guys of course. Kabuto said and bells went off in Naruto's head. How do you have information on us and this is our first time taking the exams? Naruto asked. I do my research extremely thoroughly. Kabuto said. I'm not buying it. The only way you could get information from us is if you talk to us personally or talk to our instructor. I can tell you now that none of them talk to you, since I'm close with two of the three sensei, and the third one is the leader of Team 7. Now, who did you really get the information from? 
Naruto asked. All right. You caught me. They gave me the information after I asked. Kabuto said. The, uh, huh. Looks like I'll have to have a little chat with him. Naruto said. Wait a minute. There's no way the old man would give out that kind of information. Especially to a random genin at that. What the hell is going on? Natsumi thought as she looked at Naruto who shook his head a bit. You don't have to do that. I was barely able to get a meeting with him since he's so busy. Kabuto said. I'll take my chances. Naruto said. I'll have to eliminate him during the second part or he'll ruin everything. Kabuto thought. So, Sasuke. Who do you have in mind? Tell me anything you know about them. A description, where they're from, whatever. Anything at all. Kabuto said. Ara of the desert, Rock Lee of the Leaf Village and Naruto Uchiha as well. Sasuke said. Why do you want to know about Naruto? He's our teammate. Sakura said. He's not the only one. I mean, nobody really knows much about his skills. Ino said. That's no fun. You even know their names. First up is Rock Lee. He's a year older than you. Has completed 11 C rank missions and 20 D tank missions. His team sensei is Might Guy, and in the last 12 months his Tajutsu has grown exponentially. His other skills are shaky. Last year he chose to not take the exams. His teammates are Niji Hayuga and Tenten. He said, a Tajutsu specialist. No wonder he kicked your ass Asuke. Mitsumi said, now for Gara. He has completed 8 C ranks and got this a B rank mission while not even being touched on a single mission. He said, shocking all the genin except Naruto. Now, tell me about Naruto. Sasuke said and Kabuto looked at Naruto. Go ahead. Tell him about my file. Naruto said. Naruto Uchiha. He's done 0 D rank, 17 C rank, 8 B rank, 2 A rank and 4 S rank missions. His skills aren't even listed on here, but most say he's already more skilled than seasoned. Like Gara, he's never been injured or touched on a mission. Kabuto said and the room went quiet as everyone looked at Naruto. W what? That has to be a lie. Ino said. I'm afraid not. Kabuto said. Loser, when did you get another A rank mission and 4 S ranks? Sasuke asked angrily. Don't worry about it, side branch members. Naruto said. Kabuto just unintentionally solidified himself as a spy. He shouldn't have mission records or skills for that matter, those were all confidential to the Hokage and Sensei. Especially his 4 S rank missions. One was for teaching them how to defeat paperwork, capturing Mizuki after he stole the Forbidden Scroll, watching over Natsumi until he graduated, and the ongoing one was capturing Kabuto who was a spy. He looked and saw Kabuto get attacked by the sound ninja that he saw in the room. He noticed Kabuto sensed they were coming, but didn't bother to dodge them. Must be to keep any suspicions off of them. Naruto thought and then the proctor came into the room. Alright that's enough no fighting or I will kick you out my name is Ibiki and I am the proctor for this stage now grab a number sit down. Ibiki yelled and everybody ran to their seats after getting a number. Now the first part of the exams is a written test. You have 45 minutes to answer 9 questions. The final 10th question will be asked after time is up if you're caught cheating 5 times your team is eliminated and will be sent out. Now begin. Ibiki said. 45 minutes later. All right pencils down, it's time for the 10th question. Are you done playing with your puppet? He asked Kankuro who looked scared at having been caught. How do you know? Kankuro thought. Now you have the option to take the 10th question, however if one person from a team refuses you all fail. It doesn't matter if you get all 9 questions correct if you choose to not take the 10th question you will get a 0. But if you choose to take the question and get it wrong, you will never be able to take the exams ever again. Ibiki said. What kind of rule is that? There are plenty of people who have taken this exam before. Kiba yelled and Ibiki gave a hollowed laugh before answering. Well you must be unlucky because I wasn't making the rules before, but I am now. Of course if you don't want to take it you don't have to. There's always exams next year. Those who don't wish to take it raise your hand. Your number will be recorded and you may leave. Ibiki said and some people started to leave until Natsumi spoke up. Don't underestimate me. I don't quit and I don't run. You don't scare me you scarred face piece of chicken shit. Even if I am a genin for the rest of my life, I will become Hokage. You can take your rules and shove them up your ass. Natsumi yelled. She's got guts. Ibiki thought. This decision is one that could change your life. If for any reason you would rather quit, now's your last chance. Ibiki said. Fuck that quitting shit. I never go back on my word. Natsumi said. 79 people left, that's more than I expected, however none of them show signs of giving up. I guess this is it. Ibiki thought. You tell him girl. Ino thought. Way to go, Natsumi. Sakura thought. Now for all of you remaining, you all passed the first exam. Ibiki said and everyone was stunned. Hold on, what just happened? What kind of rules are those? What do you mean we passed? Where is the 10th question? Sakura asked. There never was a 10th question, well not a written one. Your decision to stay was the answer to the 10th question. Ibiki said. Huh? Sakura asked. Hold on so the other 9 questions were just a waste of time? 
Tamari asked. Not exactly. The nine questions served an important purpose on how to gather information without getting caught. Why do you think I put so much emphasis on getting caught? If you're going to be a ninja you need stealth and to know how to gather information quickly while in a hostile area. My objective was to test you not as individuals, but as a team and how well you function as a part of that team. That's why the test was scored on a team basis, so you'd know that everything you did or failed to do would directly affect your teammates. I wanted to see how you'd handle the pressure. The first nine questions on the test were difficult. In fact, as you may have realized, they were too difficult for any genin to be expected to solve. I imagine most of you quickly came to that conclusion that you'd have to cheat if you had any chance of passing. This test was designed for you to cheat and you couldn't cheat unless you had people to cheat from. I had two people disguised around the room who already knew the answers and had them sit with you. Ibiki said, well, I didn't even bother to do my test. However, I think you'll appreciate what I wrote here. Naruto thought, those who were caught, failed. It's better not to cheat than to cheat clumsily. Information. It can be the most valuable weapon in battle. How well you gather intelligence can determine whether a mission is a failure or a success. There'll be times you'll have to risk your life to get it. Ibiki said, as he removed his headband to reveal his head that was covered in cuts, burn marks and puncture wounds, oh shit. I wonder what he went through. Natsumi thought, of course, you must always consider the source of your information. Intelligence gathered from an enemy is not necessarily accurate. Always bear this in mind. Disinformation can be worse than no information at all. It can lead to the death of comrades or the loss of a village. That's why I put you in the position where you had to gather accurate intelligence. Cheat in order to survive, and that's why those who weren't good enough at it were weeded out leaving the rest of you. Ibiki said, I still don't understand the tenth question. Tamari said, the tenth question was the main point of the whole exam. Surely, you see that. Ibiki said, sure, but can you explain it anyway? Sakura asked, it's simple. The tenth question was if we wanted to stay. This was a psychological exam and we all passed. Some of us passed because of our own mental toughness, some passed because of Natsumi's speech, and some passed because they saw their teammate's strong will to continue. Naruto said, he's correct. The final question gave you two difficult choices. You could choose to skip the question, though it means that both you and your teammates would fail. Then you could try and answer it, but knowing if you got it wrong, you could lose your chances of ever being. It was a no-win situation. For example, let me give you a hypothetical mission. The steal a document from an enemy stronghold. You have no idea how many ninja the enemy has or how heavily armed they are. You also have reason to believe that the enemy expects you that you might very well be walking blindly into a trap. Ibiki said, this sounds like a mission I did two months ago. Naruto thought, now, do you have the option of taking a pass on this mission or say my comrades and I would rather live to fight another day? Can you choose to avoid danger? No. There will be many missions that will seem almost suicidal if you think about it, but you don't think about it. You only think of achieving the goal through courage and discipline. These are the qualities required of a squad leader. Those who choose the safer of two paths, those whose determination falters in the face of adversity, those who would put their comrades' lives in jeopardy by worrying about their own, those who would save their own necks at the price of sacred honor, will never be able to call themselves as long as I'm here. Ibiki said and then Sasuke had to open his mouth, if my teammates can't protect themselves then they have no business being a ninja. They're weak and deserve to die. I would only select the most powerful members on my team. Mental weakness should be evaluated before anybody becomes a ninja to prohibit such things. Sasuke said, then if that's the case, you would be the first person to not become a ninja. You're the weakest person here mentally. If somebody even mentions your brother's name you snap. Despite what he did, Itachi from what I heard never put his comrades in trouble while on a mission. Compared to him you're a joke and I bet your parents are rolling over in their graves because of your behavior. Congratulations Dumbus, you just solidified your chances of not becoming a dipshit. Naruto said, watch what you say about my parents. Sasuke said and glared at him with his Sharingan, what are you going to do, fight me? We both know how that will end. You on the ground unconscious looking even more pathetic than you already do. Naruto said, enough. You can fight later. I hereby declare this part of the exams completed. There's nothing left for me to do, but wish you all good luck. Ibiki said, alright. We did it. First part is down. Woohoo. Natsumi yelled, she's a lively one, that's for sure. Ibiki thought as he and Naruto looked at the window, great. She's the proctor. I have a good guess as to where the second part is being held. Naruto thought as the glass was broken through and a banner was revealed through the smoke, a sexy and happily taken Anko Midarashi. Alright boys and girls, no time for celebrating. My name is Anko Midarashi, and I am the proctor of the second part of the exams. Anko proudly exclaimed, and everyone just looked at her while Naruto shook his head. You're early again. Ibiki said and Anko deflated, great. A screaming nutcase. 
She's kind of like Natsumi. Sakura thought. How many are there? Ibiki, you let all these guys pass. Your test was too easy. You must be getting soft. Anko said. Or it could be a stronger crop of candidates this year. Ibiki said. Um. They sure don't look like it. Trust me, before I'm done with them, more than half will be eliminated. Anko said. More than half. Really? Sakura asked. This is going to be fun. All right, you maggots have had it easy so far, but things are going to be different starting first thing in the morning. I let your squad leaders know where to meet me. Dismissed. Except for you, my little masked maelstrom. Anko said and everyone left except Naruto. Can you stop calling me that? Naruto asked as he went up to her and gave her a hug. Nope. So, how have you been? Haven't seen much of you. Anko said. And good. Doing a lot of training and missions. Naruto said. Uh-huh. Now, why did the old man tell me to come see you? Anko asked. Well, we have a few uninvited guests in this year's exams. Kabuto Yakushi is a spy, there's somebody here that is easily a cage level shinobi, and somebody from Iwa is in disguise here after me. Naruto said. Kabuto Yakushi. Hasn't he taken these exams like a dozen times? Anko asked. Yeah. I look into his file along with his genin team. I've noticed that their clothes are oddly similar to those of that sound team. Ibiki said and Anko grabbed her neck in pain. What's wrong? Naruto asked. It's my curse mark. Anko said and Naruto's eyes went wide. It's Rachimaru. Naruto said. He's here. Ibiki said. The question is why though. Naruto said as he used some medical ninjutsu to release some pain on Anko's neck. Itsumi is the nine tails. Maybe he's after her. Anko said. I doubt it. He's not dumb enough to risk releasing the nine tails. I don't even think it would work putting the curse mark on Itsumi if he even tried. The nine tails would detect if something foreign was put in her body and would immediately get rid of it. He's after something else, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to complete the second part quickly and then go back into the forest of death since she's technically one of my teammates. Naruto said. How do you know that's where the second part is? Ibiki asked. It's Anko that's in charge. It would be stupid of me to not know where the second part is. Anyway, you can go let the old man know what's going on and tell him not to act on it. He'll choke again if he has to kill Orochimaru like last time and we need to know what he's after. Naruto said. I let him know. Ibiki said and vanished. What about you, Anko? Naruto asked. I'm going to Kuranize. We're supposed to have girl time I guess or something. Wanna join? Anko asked. No. I have something else to do. Naruto said. Somebody's got a date. Anko said and grinned. So? I had to cancel the first one for a last minute mission. Naruto said. When will I get to meet this Tamari chick? Anko asked. I don't know. I need to go. I'm already late according to her time. Naruto said and vanished. Golden Leaf Hotel. I'm here. Naruto said. Yeah. With two seconds to spare. Tamari said. Whatever. Why don't you have your fan with you? Naruto asked. I figured I didn't need it. I'm sure you're strong enough to protect the both of us. Tamari said and gave him a smile. I guess you're right. I wouldn't want anything hurting that beautiful face of yours. Naruto said and made her blush as he caressed her cheek. Stop it. Tamari said. How about this? Naruto asked and pulled his mask down to give her a kiss. He that's not making it better. Tamari said as she turned bright red. You'll be fine. Naruto said. So, where are we going? Tamari asked as she stopped blushing. I figured I'd take you to the weapon shop for something I know you like, grab some food, and then take a walk to my favorite spot. Naruto said. Let's go then. Tamari said and looped her arm around Naruto's big rashi ninja store. Is this the place? Looks kind of small. Tamari said. Don't worry. It's bigger on the inside. Naruto said. Lead the way. Tamari said and Naruto opened the door for her. After you, Princess Tamari. Naruto said. Why thank you. Tamari said as she walked in the store. Yo. Old Mad Sado. I'm here. Naruto said. Sado. Tamari asked. He's the owner of the shop. Naruto said. Naruto my boy. How's it going? Sado asked. I'm good. This is Tamari. I brought her here to look around. Naruto said. Pleasure to meet you. Tamari said and bowed. Likewise. Make sure you keep him out of trouble. Sato said. I only get in trouble when Itsumi is involved. Naruto said. Right. Well, I need to get an order ready, so just bring up to the counter and ring the bell when you're ready to check out. Sato said and went to the back. So, what is this awesome thing you think I like? Tamari asked. These. Naruto said and showed her some smaller folding fans. We have these in Suna. Tamari said and pulled out one of hers. Yes, but pick up one of these and feel the difference between the two. Naruto said and gave her one. Wow. It's really light compared to ours. What is this made of? Tamari asked. Chakra conducts carbon fiber. It's lighter than metal, but stronger and is way better at channeling chakra through them so it'll last longer. 
Naruto said, as Tamari gave it a try and created a small gust of wind. It's a lot easier to use and the control over my wind is better. I need a bigger one the size of my fan. Tamari said, you can ask old man Sato to custom make you one. Naruto said and pulled out a kunai. Is that made of the same material? Tamari asked, yup. All of my ninja equipment comes from him. People go to the bigger ninja shop because they can get more for less money, but Sato has way better quality. Naruto said, how much would the custom order cost? I didn't bring much money with me. Tamari said, I'll pay for it. I've been coming here before I became a ninja, so I have a credit here. You can design the fan any way you want and he'll get it done for you. Since it's only one thing, he might be able to get it done in a month. Naruto said, he's that good. The fan I have now was custom made and it took the shop and soon in nearly three months to make. Tamari said, well, he used to be a ninja, so he uses a few shadow clones to help him and sometimes his daughter will help, but he only lets her make basic things while he does the custom orders. Naruto said, well, then that gives me one more excuse to come back to Konoha more often. Tamari said, as she looked up into Naruto's eyes, oh? What was the other reason? Naruto asked, a dark-haired, dark blue-eyed boy that caught my attention in Suna a few months ago. Tamari said, lucky guy. Naruto said, you have no idea how right you are. Tamari said and started to swing her fan around, I see you're having fun. Naruto said, yeah. It's just so light. Does he have any wind ninjutsu? Tamari asked, he should. I know he gets a new shipment every other month. Naruto said and took her to the ninjutsu section of the store, I think I'm in love. Tamari said, as she looked at all of the ninjutsu scrolls, I mean it's only our second date, but love has no timetable. Naruto said and she blushed, I, I was talking about the scrolls. Tamari said, I know. I'm just messing with you. See anything you like? Naruto asked, a few, yeah. Tamari said and grabbed about 10 scrolls, you know these things aren't cheap right? Naruto asked, I thought you had a credit. Tamari said, I do, but how do you know I didn't need it for something special? Naruto asked, please. You're the son of the fourth and from what you told me in our letters through Tatsu, you're technically the head of the Ichiha clan. I don't think you need to worry about money. Tamari said, I mean yeah, but I haven't even touched that money yet. Naruto said, don't think I didn't hear about your mission record. An S rank mission itself in Konoha is worth at least 100000 yen from what I've heard. You've done four of them and you mean to tell me you're complaining about money. Tamari asked, I guess you're right. I'll just add another 500,000 yen to my credit. Naruto said and her jaw dropped, I should really kick your ass right now. Tamari said, now that wouldn't be nice. Naruto said, whatever. Aren't you going to get anything? Tamari asked, nah. I'm up to date with everything I need so far. I'll probably have to stock up again in a few months. Naruto said, as they went up to the counter and saw Sato standing there with a box, I hope you found everything you needed. Sato said, I did. I've never seen these wind ninjutsu scrolls before and I'm from the land of wind. Tamari said, you just have to know the right places to look and people to talk to. Sato said, I see. Naruto said you can make me a fan within a month. Is that true? Tamari asked, it sure is. Just give me a design of the fan with its measurements and I'll get to work on it. Sato said, it's a giant war fan, but I want it made with the same materials as your small fans here. Tamari said, a choice. Any specific designs for it? Like symbols or anything? Sato asked, yeah. On the fan I usually have three moons indicating how strong my wind will be. Can you add those on there? Tamari asked and drew what she wanted it to look like, that's easy. Sato said and wrote her name on top of the paper, easy? It's a giant war fan. Tamari said, I've made every weapon in this shop along with my daughter. A giant war fan is nothing. Sato said, trust him. He knows what he's doing. Naruto said, yes and Naruto your order will be ready for you in two more months. Sato said, take your time, old man. I'm not in a rush. Naruto said, I understand. You love them once you see them. Now, I should get started on Tamari's order. Sato said, see you later. Naruto said, thank you. Tamari said and bowed before they left. Naruto and Tamari, see. That wasn't so bad. Naruto said, as they were walking around Kanoha to get some food, right? So, what's the deal with our proctor for the second part of the exams? Tamari asked, oh, that's Anko. She's playful, funny and sadistic all at the same time. It's actually kind of hard to describe her. Naruto said, the same Anko that basically raised you? Tamari asked, yup. Naruto said, as he paid for her stuff, then how did you not turn out like her? Tamari asked, well, I had Kurinai to make sure I didn't. Plus I was seven when they really started to raise me. I've grown numb to her antics over the years and nothing she does really surprises me. Naruto said, I feel bad for her. She'll never get a boyfriend as long as she's like that. Tamari said, actually she has a boyfriend. Naruto said, really no way. Tamari said, I'm serious. 
her boyfriend is the complete opposite of her and believe it or not, she's actually calmed down a bit compared to how she was before. Naruto said. How the hell did that happen? Tamari asked. Well, from what she told me, she took him home and rode him till sunrise. Naruto said and Tamari blushed. W what? Tamari asked. I'm not repeating myself. It's bad enough that I know that information. Naruto said. Why would she tell you that though? Tamari asked, as they stopped walking. After you gave me a kiss the first time we met, I didn't know what it meant. Don't get me wrong, I know about relationships and everything, but that was the first time a girl has ever kissed me, and then you ran away. They told me that you were just scared since you didn't kiss me before since we spent every day together. Naruto said. Me being scared was an understatement. You're the first boy I liked and I was a nervous wreck. I didn't know what to do after that so I just ran away. Tamari said. Well, it's in the past now. We've gotten pretty close since that day. Naruto said. I guess you're right. So, where are we? Tamari asked. This is Ichiraku Raymond. Not the best place to go on a first date, but I figured I'd keep this nice and simple. Naruto said. Actually it's okay. I've heard quite a few people talking about this place and wanted to try it. Tamari said. Then prepare to be amazed. Naruto said. Lead the way. Tamari said and they went into the shop. Yo. Old man Tucci. I'm back. Naruto said. Naruto my boy. Good to see you again. Oh. Who's this? Tucci asked. This is Tamari. She's my date. Naruto said. You're what? AM yelled from the back. Who was that? Tamari asked. Ah, she works here as well. Naruto said. I can't believe you. AM said. What did I do? Naruto asked. You brought another girl here. I was supposed to be your first date. AM said. Huh? Since when? Naruto asked and Tamari just watched this play out. Well, Natsumi. I'm gonna stop you right there. Let me guess, she made a bet with you, and your prize was a date with me? Naruto asked. How do you know? AM asked. When Itsumi is involved it's expected. Naruto said. The girl with the red hair that makes her look like a tomato. Tamari asked. Yes and please don't call her that. I'm getting tired of stopping her rampaging and then cleaning up her mess. Naruto said. I'm sure it's not that bad. Tamari said. She was suspended from the academy for three months when she was nine for breaking the arms, jaws and legs of four teachers because they teased her about her hair and called her tomato head. Naruto said and Tamari's jaw dropped. You're kidding, right? Tamari asked. Nope. Naruto said. All right. What can I get you two? AM asked. I'll take two medium miso pork ramen. Tamari said. Good choice. AM said. I'll have my usual. Naruto said. Okay. We have two medium pork ramen and four large miso beef ramen with extra vegetables and beef. AM said. Thanks AM. Naruto said. No problem. I'll be back shortly. AM said. I should be surprised about four large with extra beef and vegetables, but I remembered you ate that barbecue camel with no problem in Suna. Tamari said. I've got a big appetite. Naruto said. Clearly. So, how have things been for you? Tamari asked. Same old same old. Missions, training and relaxing. Oh and running away from fangirls trying to remove my mask. Naruto said. Fangirls. I haven't seen any. Tamari said. Trust me. They're here. They've been silently following us around the entire village. I just hope they keep their mouths shut and then the council finds out. Naruto said. Why? Tamari asked. Because then Konoha and Suna will try to force us into an arranged marriage. Naruto said. You say it like it's a bad thing. Tamari said. It is. Don't get me wrong, I do like and everything, but who's to say we even last? I can't predict the future and if that happens, I'd rather not be stuck in a marriage that was forced on me and there's no love involved. Naruto said. I guess that makes sense. Tamari said. How have things been with you? Naruto asked. Weird. Tamari said. Weird how? Naruto asked. I can't say it out in public. Tamari said. Okay. Can we get our orders to go, AM? Naruto asked. Sure thing. I'll just have to charge you extra for a late order change. AM said. That's fine. Put it on Natsumi's tab. Naruto said, okay. Here you two go. Have a good day. AM said, we will. Naruto said, where are you taking me? Tamari asked, my place. Naruto said, Naruto's apartment. So, what's going on? Naruto asked, I don't know. I can't really explain it. My dad suddenly changed over the past few months. Before he was okay with Gara sleeping in the room and now he refuses to let Gara sleep. I don't know what happened. He's just different. His chakra is even different and he doesn't even bother to show up whenever Gara releases the Shukaku. Tamari said. That is weird. I was wondering why Gara seems so angry. Hold on. What do you mean his chakra changed? Naruto asked. I mean just that. His chakra became dark and sinister one day he came back from an envoy to meet with a nearby village leader. I know it's weird and he's not really around, but I know what his chakra should feel like and that's not it. Something must have happened to him on his way back and he doesn't realize it. 
Tamari said. Want me to tell them and see if he can look into it? Naruto asked. No. Suna is already in shambles because of the wind daimyo cutting our budget and sending missions to Konoha. Keep this between us. This is technically treason in my village. Tamari said as she started to eat a ramen. I won't tell anybody. Naruto said as he removed his mask and she blushed again. I know this isn't my first time seeing you with your mask off, but I can't help it when I blush. Tamari said. It's going to get worse when I actually remove it. Naruto said. Oh yeah. When are you going to remove it? Tamari asked. During the exam finals when all of the important people are here. Daimyos, noble families, rich families. The old man wants to make some big announcement with me and my sister. Naruto said. So, who exactly are you related to? You don't look like any of the people you mentioned. Tamari said. You'll find out in the finals. Naruto said and she yawned. Sorry, but it's been a long day. Tamari said. I know. Want me to walk you back to your hotel? Naruto asked. Thanks, but I think for both our sakes that I should go alone. I had fun though. Tamari said and gave him a huge smile. Me too. Want me to have Tatsu watch over you while you're walking? Naruto asked. Can she do that? Tamari asked. Yeah. She's not usually a fighter, but apparently she can zap somebody and leave them paralyzed for an hour. Naruto said and summoned Tatsu. Naruto. Tamari. Why am I here? I don't have any messages and you're both together. Tatsu said. I have a mission for you, Tatsu. Naruto said. I've always wanted to go on a mission. What is it? Killing a snake. Torturing a snake. Tatsu asked. She's small and violent. I like her. Tamari thought. It's an escort mission. I want you to watch over Tamari as she goes to her hotel. You have my permission to zap anybody that attacks her. Naruto said. Sir yes sir. Tatsu said and turned invisible. What the? Where did she go? Tamari asked. I'm on your head. Your hair smells nice. Anyway, when I'm like this I can't be detected and they won't see me coming if I zap them. Tatsu said. Nice. Bye Naruto. I'll see you tomorrow. Tamari said and gave him a kiss on the cheek. I'll see you tomorrow. Good luck. Naruto said. Thank you. Tamari said and left. You can come out now, Kurinai. Naruto said and then the wall next to the door shimmered revealing Kurinai. How'd you know I was there? Kurinai asked. Really? Somebody who trained me to detect without my Sharingan asked me how I found her. On top of that, I'm a sensor as well. Naruto said. Smartest. So, how was the date? I only caught the tail end of it. Kurinai said. It was good. Went to old Sado's shop to get her some stuff, got takeout from Ichirikus, and then we came here. Naruto said. Not bad for a first date. I just came to check up on you. Good luck tomorrow. Kurinai said and left. After Kurinai left, Naruto took a shower and went to bed. Tatsu came back and let him know Tamari made it back to the hotel safe and nobody tried to harm her. His final thoughts were on the rest of the exams, what was going on with Tamari's dickhead of a father, and why Orochimaru himself snuck into the exams. Little did he or anybody else know, the Kazakiage had been murdered. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. If you want the next part of this video. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.